Hi, welcome back guys. This is your sensei, back with another fanfiction. This is the first part of, What if Naruto got Harim with Cinder? Now before starting, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. Now let's get into the fanfic. Cinder stirred slowly. Shards of glacial pain stabbed through her good eye as she blinked away the cobwebs shrouding her vision, to no avail. She may as well have been wading through water for all it mattered. Try as she might her strength failed her, leaving her world swimming in and out of focus despite her best efforts to master herself. A slow blink sent a jagged spike of pain through her temple and elicited a raw gasp from the wounded maiden. Damn it. Everything. Hurt. Even the merest act of breathing threatened to send her body spiraling down into paroxysms of fresh agony, and leave her paralyzed where she lay. The same could not be said for her surroundings. In hindsight, the room in which she found herself couldn't call the room anything but primitive. Four thatch walls topped by a straw roof and a rickety wooden frame. Even the floor itself was dirt. This wasn't a house. It wasn't even a cottage at that. This was some sort of shack, and her nose curled at the sight of it. Were it not for warmth of a small fire pit in the center of the room, she would have thought it a hovel. As things stood the furring firelight cast an eerie glow across their room, playing tricks with the shadows, sending fingers of darkness trailing across the soul sheet shielding her bare skin. Wait, 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 wait a minute. What the hell is this she yelped why am I naked? With a snarl, the fall maiden jerked upright, flailing in her fury. Only then did her memories finally return, she almost wished that they hadn't. Cinder remembered now, because she had been beaten. Badly, a flood of recognition came rushing back, bringing with it the bitter pang of humiliation. Yes, there it was. That's right. She remembered. Raven. She'd made the mistake of goading her into a fight, once she wasn't prepared to win. Indeed, Cinder'd chosen her fight poorly and promptly paid the price for her folly. For all her might, she still tasted defeat. Near the end of their duel Raven had broken one of her leg and blasted a hole in her stomach, frozen her, then thrown her down a chasm. If it hadn't been for the water, she might have died. Even then she'd been on death's door. Somehow, she had clung on long enough to wake find an exit and haul herself back out into daylight. Her last memory consisted of dragging her broken body across the road in the rain before the blackness claimed her. Now she was lying here in a stranger's bed, trapped in some infernal hut in Gotskuware. For a fleeting instant she thought one of her allies had retrieved her. Someone had certainly gone to great length to bandage her wounds. When she glanced down she saw her broken leg sheathed in a cast, while much of her wide stomach and were likewise wrapped in a sheath of fresh white bandages. With her aura at an all-time low, this rudimentary treatment would have to suffice for the time being. Still, who had done this emerald and mercury didn't know about medicine? Haze Eleven less so. In her eyes, that one was a brute good for little more than destruction. Which brought Cinder to her next line of inquiry, who the devil did this? Inhaling a second time now brought with it a faint aroma, one she vaguely recognized as stew, which in turn caused her recovering stomach to offer a plaintive growl. She scowled at it, to no avail. Traitor. It only growled louder still. Sure enough her gaze alighted upon a pot at the edge of the strange hearth, filled to the brim with vegetables and assorted meat. At least, Cinder hoped there was meat. The dim flames afforded precious little in the way of light at the moment, leading her to believe the hour was late. Her stomach protested once more, muscles threatening to clamp down as she tried to stand. Worse, her bad leg protested viciously when she attempted to put her weight on it, leaving her at something of an impasse. Still, she did have her arms. She was just considering stealing it when someone spoke. Been a while since I've seen someone with an arm like that. A man's dry, cracked voice arose from the dark. You're a strange one. All at once Cinder realized she wasn't alone. Instinctively, she arched her back and searched for a weapon. Nothing came. Now, now, the voice soothed. There's no need for violence. I come in peace. You'll leave in peace as Cinder snarled, weakened or a flaring. Braver souls have tried. At first she hadn't seen her host, if only because he stood with his back to her and his clothes blended with the blackness. But she heard him now. She certainly heard him when he tossed another log into the fire. The faint scratch of a mortal and pestle captured her attention for a moment before its owner finally laid his tools to rest and turned to face her. Shadow and flame seemed to dance across his quiet countenance, briefly hiding it from view before he stepped into the light. Still, it's good to see you're awake. The barest beginnings of a smile tugged at his face as he glided to her side. I was beginning to think you wouldn't wake up. A waspish retort leaped to her lips, only to a die a withering death when she beheld her host's countenance. The first thing she noticed were the eyes, while the left stood blue as the ocean depths, the right shone an eerie rimmed shade of unholy violet. She found herself gazing at a young man at least, he appeared young behind that absurdly long beard of his. Filthy, too. Matted golden hair framed whiskered cheeks alongside a face smudged with dirt and ash, before tapering down his back in a jagged spiky mane even more untamed than the wilds in which she found herself. Clad in little more than a dirty black cloak, she glimpsed faded traveling leathers beneath, their color leached away by time and use. They might have been orange, once. Still, those mismatching eyes were bright and sharp and they followed her when she attempted to sit up. Where am I she challenged, clutching the sheet to her. Who are you? You're in my home, girl. His mouth quirked in a small smile. I'll thank you to show an old man some respect. As to Howell, 
Slim shoulders rolled in a half-hearted shrug. I tend go by doctor these days. Old man, or quack when one of my patients gets rowdy. I'd prefer a name. Cinder pursed her lips. He tilted his head. And I'd prefer you sit back down. You'll open your wound. Reluctantly, she did as she'd been bade, though not without hesitation. Something about his words stuck with her, though. Old. He called himself old this blonde buffoon didn't look a day over twenty at best. His face was unlined and tanned, not a single wrinkle to be seen. If it weren't for the hair and that long, dragging beard of his, she might have dismissed his words outright. But his eyes told another story, one she was almost afraid to hear. What manner of fool called themselves old when they clearly were not was he made insane? Perhaps he certainly had the mad hermit look going for him and her stomach chose that moment to growl again. Hungry, are we the doctor favored her with a laugh. All right, then. He turned his back to her without a second thought, dismissing her as no threat. I found you on the road and tended to your wounds. He strode back to the fire and began to ladle a fresh helping of stew into a wooden bowl from a nearby pot, a few waning shadows furring from the fire over his back. I brought you here for treatment. That washed three days ago five you've been out for quite some time, I'm afraid. Was it her imagination, or right I seemed to burn just a bit brighter as he spoke surely not? You talk in your sleep, you know. A lone blue eye gazed at her over his shoulder. Might want to do something about that. Heat rose to Cinder's cheeks but she banished it with a snarl. I take it you expect payment she scoffed softly. He merely offered her the bowl and a spoon. Kindness is its own reward. Here, Cinder snatched them out of his grasp, swept the spoon through the broth, and jammed it into her mouth. For his part, the doctor didn't look offended by her rudeness. He only favored her with a small smile and turned to fetch a bowl for himself. The fall maiden paid him no more mind than she would an annoying aunt. Instead she turned her focus to the foot in front of her and pushed all thoughts of him from her mind. Why should she he may have tended her wounds, but she felt she didn't know him in the slightest. He only breathed at this very moment because she was feeling merciful. And, well hungry. It's Naruto, by the way. Cinder felt her ears perk up. Just a touch. What that's your name ha she actually laughed at him for it. All things considered, the stew was rather good if a tad too warm for her liking. Without thinking, Cinder moved to cool it with her maiden powers. Nothing came. Annoyed by her weakness, she tried again. Once more, she failed in this simple task. Her lone eye widened. Wait. A pit of dread opened in Cinder's stomach, gaping wide to swallow up all she'd ever known. When she tried to reach for her strength again, for the power of the Fall Maiden, her power, the power she'd fought so hard to claim, she found nothing. Only the faintest embers of her former might and her semblance, smoldering quietly. At first, she felt only confusion. That didn't make any sense. Her powers weren't merely depleted, they were gone entirely. Vanished. In place of that all-consuming might, Cinder felt nothing but an empty void when she reached for them. Worse than that, the bowl tumbled out of her hands and clattered to the floor, appending its contents into the dirt. Where's my power? She barely choked the words out. What happened to my power? Gone, I'm afraid. The blonde answered. You were quite dead when I found you. Her gaze snapped back to the hermit with laser-like focus. What were you talking about? Did I stutter having finished his meal? The blonde doctor had turned his back her and begun to work on another concoction of some sort, grinding the mortar against the pestle as he spoke with firm, precise movements in spite of hysteria. You know, I had a rather difficult time reviving you at all. You should be grateful. Cinder scarcely heard him. No, 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 this couldn't it. No, 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 her hands, human and grim alike, tore at her hair as she shook her head. This isn't happening, this can't be happening. And yet it was. No matter how she tried, her strength never came. Only her semblance and her own aura remained. Those would recover in time. But the power of the fall maiden was gone. Forever. Merely thinking of it was enough to send her back into a spiral of despair. Her heart skipped a beat, then another. Another still. Panic overtook her as she looked this way and that, frantically seeking an escape from what she knew to be the truth. Stop try to think don't panic you can get it back. But it was so very easy to panic. Salem would never forgive her for this. Not only had she failed to secure the relic, but she'd lost her power. Without it, they couldn't access the relic at Beacon. Assuming it was ever found, she felt small without her maiden powers. Tiny, weak, just as she'd been before. It made her want to tuck her knees against her and curl into a... In a rare moment of weakness, he did just that. No, she wasn't weak. She still had her arm, her skills, her training, her semblance. She wasn't weak. No, not weak. Never weak. Not again. If the power wasn't here, wasn't with her, that meant it sought out someone else. Her last thoughts hadn't been of Raven. For all the pain and humiliation the Spring Maiden had inflicted upon her, she still hadn't been in Cinder's final thoughts. No, her last spiteful recollection had been off that girl. That damned girl. Little Red. Ruby Rose. Something broke deep inside of Cinder. It was known that a maiden's power went to those she held in her final thoughts. Salem had all but drilled the knowledge into her, it had been a pivotal point in acquiring them from Amber in the first place. But now she had been defeated, she'd even died for a period of time, if Naruto was to be believed. One only person was in her final thoughts. The power had likely gone to her. Ruby. Freaking. Rose. Ever since her ignominious defeat at Beacon, that insipid little girl was always, always, always lurking at the forefront of Cinder's mind. Which meant which meant no. That was impossible. Destiny couldn't possibly be so cruel as to do this to her. 
But it was, and it had. Her hands went limp at her sides as this awful realization dawned. Then her entire world went red as she pictured the huntress's insufferable face, imagined her smiling at Herno, laughing at her, that blasted girl, that damn brat. Fear and wrath writhed inside her like twin snakes, threatening to swallow her whole. And, something, quite simply, broke. Someone was screaming, it took Cinder several seconds to realize it was her. She was still screaming when five firm fingers knifed into the side of her neck and knocked her out. And there, from that single solitary moment, her entire world began to change. But for good or ill, who could say? Ruby Rose was on fire. Quite literally at that, she'd woken from a dream in the middle of the night and found herself engulfed in flames. Still half asleep, the pajamac led girl didn't realize what was going on. Not at first. Her first assumption was just that, I'm still dreaming, right this should be a dream. Yeah, gotta be a dream. Nothing else made sense. She only knew that her body didn't hurt anymore, if anything, the flames felt downright pleasant. Like gentle hands wrapping around her sore muscles, bringing with them untold warm. As if she were hugging a long-lost friend. Or were the flames hugging her she wasn't sure. Her head was still foggy from the battle at Haven, yet she'd never felt lighter. But it felt so very nah, so Ruby didn't really care. Alas, the same could not be said for her sheets, nor her bed, or the rest of her room. When the scent of smoke finally reached Ruby's nose, reality was only half of a step behind. Which is to say it slapped her right upside the head and then some, pulling her out of her daze like an angry nevermore on the hunt. Smoke was bad. Fire also bad. Very bad. She didn't feel any of it, and the fire was leaving her pajamas alone for some reason, but everything else. Then came the panic. Weiss, Weiss she cried, flailing spectacularly. Help my hands are on fire my room is on fire. Ruby a muffled cry greeted her. What in the world? She'd barely gotten the words out before frantic footsteps resounded from the other room, followed by the door to said room crashing open. To her credit, her partner looked about as lively as she felt, which is to say she was clad in little more than a white shift and looked like death warmed over. Though her hair did look really pretty with it being down and all no bad ruby focus fire bad she must have been in a right state too, because Weiss looked about ready to faint. Her eyes bulged as she beheld the elemental maelstrom. What did you do? Hotha thought well, not hot, but still what's going on make it stop. Hey you ruby how are you even doing this? I don't know who ruby whined. She wanted it to cool off. She didn't want to burn her room down everyone was going to wake up at this rate, and that meant everyone would stare and no 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 no. Remarkably, Ruby's newfound powers responded to her emotions. A wave of biting cold jutted from her open hands, causing the temperature to plunge it perhaps a bit too rapidly. Sure enough the fire gutted out, but in its absence, ice proved just as quick to sprout. Unfortunately, her emotions were also running a touch too high to be controlled sure enough, one of those icy blocks nailed Weiss right in the gut. Ruby had half of a heartbeat to wince in pity for her partner's plight. Then the poor girl flew out of the doorway like she'd been shot out of a slingshot and collided with an onlogist new Irving John. The impact knocked them straight through a wall as if it were made of wet cardboard. Woo-ho, sorry ye, they'd be alright wouldn't they? Just like that, the storm guttered out in her grasp, leaving the girl to gop at the mess she'd made. Ruby Rose could have died of embarrassment at that very moment. She wanted to, but at least her room wasn't on fire anymore. That was good, right everything was alright, she just had to calm down and think in complete sentences my hands here sparking was that thunder she heard outside oh god. Her panic surged in the golden glow and her palms only intensified, hearkening to her panic as she began to hyperventilate. And then Ospin was simply there. At least, Ruby assumed it was Ospin in control. Oscar's eyes simply didn't glow gold like that, even on a good day. Ruby tried to speak, tried to warn him to stay back he'd get hurt but the wind swallowed her words. It didn't matter. As she looked on in quiet terror he strode to her side, reached out and took hold of her hands. Gloved fingers closed on hers, curling around her trembling palms. His serene expression wove a tiny thread of hope back into her heart. Slowly, carefully as not to spook her, the young man knelt before her. Breathe, Miss Rose. He instructed her calmly, somehow making himself heard over the storm. Find your center. I don't know how she wailed. Yes, he said, you do. Ruby did. Inhaling slowly, the huntress scrunched up her brow, wrinkled her nose, and willed herself to focus. Right, center. Happy thoughts. Young, mum, dad, Weiss, Blake. Much to her delight, that was all the catalyst she needed to find her center. In due time the faint tingling sensation vanished from her hands and her twitching fingers came under her control once more. A small, tentative smile touched her mouth when she looked up. She found the rest of her friends waiting for her in the ruins of her rom. Well, most of them. John and Weiss were still somewhat absent. Because reasons. Why was Uncle Kuro looking at her like she'd grown a second head or three Rabbi Aureto's powers? What powers Ruby hiccuped spectacularly, bouncing from foot to foot? I don't know what's going on. Ospin favored her with a small, strange smile. I believe we've found ourselves a new fall maiden. Everyone squawked. Ruby simply squeaked. Wait, 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 wait. Cinder held the powers of the fall maiden. Everyone knew this. If they'd gone to hurt it, that means Cinder was dead weight. She knew that. They all did. They'd assumed her dead days ago during the Battle of Haven. 
What if the power just came to her no the proverbial light bulb all but snapped into existence over her head? Which meant Cinder had only died recently. Which also meant she'd survived, been alive, and Ruby had been in her final thoughts. That kinda made sense. A twisted, awful sort of sense, but sense nonetheless. Blake blinked, scrubbing at her eyes with the back of a hand. Is she going to be alright? Hey, young Barry looked up. My baby sis is tough. I'm more worried about Weiss. Wait. The faunus's ears twitched in mild concern. Has anyone seen her? A distant crash drew a wince from all parties present and absent. Ruby rose your head as may he on. Tiro palmed his face. I need a drink. Ruby yawned sheepishly. Whoops. This man was absolutely insufferable. Cinder came to this inimitable conclusion only a week into her stay, seven days after she caught a fever and screamed herself hoarse yet again. Thankfully her vocal cords were quick to snap back from this mishap in short order. Her body was not. Every day spent in bed served as a harsh reminder of just how frail she'd become, of how she had to depend on others to survive while her aura struggled to restore her ruined body to its terrifying prime. Losing her maiden powers hadn't merely exhausted Cinder, it had hurt her. She was weaker now than she'd ever been. Even her semblance felt smaller somehow, reduced to a mere shadow of its former self. To make matters worse, her host treated her as one would a sickly child. Every act, no matter how kind, shredded her pride to pieces. She could have killed him. She should have. She wasn't that weak. Not yet. There were times when her temper slipped its leash, when she found that she couldn't walk without aid. Couldn't even move more than a few stumbling steps by herself. When she tried she had fallen spectacularly and tore open the stitches in her stomach. The pain had been agonizing and led to another bout of healing and herbs alongside other foul-tasting medicine. It taught her a touch of humility. Humility that burned her more than any flame. Despite all her pride and rage, Cinder Fall simply could not force her body to recover faster. Thus, for the first time in many years, she found herself forced to rely on a stranger once again. One who forced her to eat all manner of ghastly things, one who waited on her, hand and foot, all without a single complaint. And so she observed him. At first it was solely out of boredom, though Naruto had given her a book or two to read as she convalesced, Cinder had quickly consumed his limited collection. Soon enough she demanded more and to her initial surprise, her host provided. Cold comfort at best, but she'd take it. Her body might atrophy a bit as she healed, but she refused to let her mind wither. When she wasn't reading, she was watching. Judging his every step, every bit of movement he made, noting his comings and goings whenever she could. She learned much. For starters, they weren't as isolated as she'd initially believed them to be. Nor was Naruto the mere doctor he claimed to be. He was more than that. Much more. She soon discovered they were in something of a rural village of a sort, not quite a slum, but not a town either. Not a day went by when someone didn't come begging to the doctor's door. Be it for a simple salve, healing, or even a meager bit of advice, he was always there to provide something to someone who needed it. Once he even lent a child the very cloak off his back. Cinder was uncertain how to feel about these inexplicably displays of kindness. Naruto gained nothing from them, beyond the goodwill of his patience. Goodwill did not fill one's coffers. Goodwill did not fill a hungry belly, no matter how many you helped. And by the gods did these people need everything. Insipid fools. Were they even capable of fending for themselves how did he attend to so many tasks at once and not fall apart how did he function with so many people relying on him? Cinder soon had her answer, because very next evening he performed magic before her very eyes. At least, she assumed it to be magic. What else could it be? How else could one duplicate oneself? Or breathe fire? At first she mistook it for a semblance of some sort but no, this was too complex. Arriving in a plume of smoke the duplicate he'd created snapped off a snarky salute as it received its orders. The command given, it then snatched up a bow, darted out of the house, and returned not five minutes later with a dead buck slung over its shoulder like a sack of flour. Not an hour after that, and they had it for supper. A meal that was somewhat expedited by him breathing fire to cook the damned deer in the first place. Oh no, a no huntsman. He answered when she tried to grill him over their hearty dinner of venison and potatoes. Just a bit different. Different. Cinder snorted as she cut into her meat with ruthless efficacy and began to chew it. That hardly describes you. Fair point to the lady in red. The doctor yielded with a sigh to ward off her suspicion. Very different, then. They chose to eat in stoic silence a moment more, neither willing to speak for a time, lest they broach the subject further. The fire pit crackled quietly in the center of the room, casting dancing shadows across their faces in roguish glow. Cinder took the opportunity to observe him again. His violet eye seemed to shimmer like the stars in the dark, while the blue remained just as calm and placid as ever. He was hiding something. She knew it just not what. Uncertainty gnawed at her like a nest of maggots as she ate. Not for the first time, she was glad to have procured new clothes for herself. Granted, the simple red tunic and breeches she wore wouldn't have been her first choice, but it at least allowed her to hide her scars and preserve her modesty, if not her sanity. Finally, she couldn't take it anymore. You're not a necromancer or something, are you? She asked at last. Hardly. You're healing well, in any case. Naruto retorted, deflecting further questioning with all the bluntness of Inersa. I should be able to take the stitches out soon and get rid of that cast. You might even be ready to go outside tomorrow. As she looked on, the faintest green glow coated his right hand, gone almost before she could truly hope to glimpse it. 
She wasn't entirely certain what he meant by that, but if it meant her freedom and expedited her recovery, she was more than willing to give it a try. A thought occurred to her, then. If you can heal me quickly, why didn't you do so earlier? She snapped. A blonde brow rose again. You weren't ready. You still might not be. Your body's part grimmant won't react well. Me not ready. Cinder slammed her fists against the table with a snarl. Who decided that I decide such things and I say I'm ready? You're incredibly stubborn, I hope you know that, the blonde continued as he polished off the last of his meal. Most would be better than by the injuries you sustained. Yet here you are, up and about, telling me to hurry and cure you. I'm not sure if that's amazing or damn foolish. With those words her temper cooled, if only a touch. Of course, she scoffed, I'm a survivor. It'll take more than this to kill me. So it would seem, Naruto dabbed at his bearded face, only to frown at some minor irritation. To CH, maybe I should shave. Cinder couldn't help but preen a bit at his praise, backhanded though it was. After taking such a brutal bruising, her ego was eager for compliments. Starving for recognition, she wanted to prove her worth to someone, anyone really. To show that she was above the common rabble. Remind herself that she had purpose. Worth her she would, once she ripped back her powers from that girl's corpse that brat was probably even now training, learning to control her gifts. Stolen gifts once she retrieved her powers no one would dare question her again. Sensing her negative thoughts, her grim arm spasmed. She clutched at it angrily and willed it to be still. Say, does that make you a zombie now that I've revived you? Then Naruto queried suddenly. Her wooden plate now empty sailed across the table at his face. To his credit, the sage didn't bat an eyelash. Instead he nimbly caught the dish and whisked it back onto the table where she'd first snatched it. Yet again she found her opinion of him called into question. Naruto claimed not to be a huntsman, yet he possessed absurd reflexes and a host of other unnatural abilities. Not to mention the fact that he'd quite literally brought her back to life. Normal people didn't do that. Huntsman couldn't do that. Hell, she wasn't even sure Salem could bring back the dead. Could she? Right, then. Naruto declared, sensing the sudden shift in her mood. Time for bed, I think. Cinder drew back. I'll get there myself. I don't need your help this time. No, you really can't. Came the retort. You know that. Her lone eye narrowed. Naruto, I will end you. Body scoffed. Empty threats. Cinder tried to shrink back when he stood up and circled around to her side of the table, knowing full well what was coming next. As always she found herself powerless to prevent it much less escape. Lashing out with her semblance did no good anymore, she'd given up after the first day of that. In short order he swept his arms beneath her legs, pulled her into his, and carried her back to her cot. By all rights, he carried Cinder like a princess. That was the problem this was an excruciating humiliating. Fear me, damn it. Gentle laughter rumbled in his. Right now you're about as terrifying as wet kitten. Cinder certainly hissed like one. Oh for the love off stop carrying me I'm not going to die if I take a few steps. No, that's not what concerns me at the moment. Naruto hummed as he laid her back down on the cot. Foolishly, Cinder took the bait hook line and sinker. In a fit of pique she twisted her hips and kicked out at him with all her might. Her cast cracked him upside the head. Again, she may as well have kicked a Beowulf for all the damage she did. Her host only arched an eyebrow and she found herself forced to slump in defeat. Fine. The words escaped her in low growl. What the devil's bothering you, then? Too late, she realized she'd given him an opportunity. Bastard even started to count on his fingers. Your attitude, anger, and your. That does it out. Her pillow sailed right at his head like a cruise missile and promptly found itself snared to be placed beneath her cast. He straddled the bed beside and began to check her bandages, leaving her to cross both arms before her bosom and sulk impotently. She thought about killing him. It should have been easy. He was certainly close enough. All she had to do was reach out with her grim arm and snap his neck. She knew it wouldn't work this time, just as it hadn't before. She'd already broken his neck before. Any wound she inflicted on him healed instantly. Any aggression on her part would be simply result in laughter and yet another round of drinks. Would you like your eye back? At first, the question floored Cinder, if only because it came out of nowhere. Instinctively, her hand flew to the ruined side of her face to cup it as she turned away from him. Her hair still hid the scar, but the marks there served as a constant reminder of her wound. She didn't like to think about it, about her wounds, or what she'd been forced to become. His inquiry threatened to stir up old memories. One's best left forgotten. Bullshit. She spat the word as though it were poison. What are you playing at why offer me this now? Because you look miserable. Blast him that explained absolutely nothing infuriating man. She forced a smile. I see. Do you expect me to repay you with my body is that it? He yanked the pillow out from under her leg and smacked her upside the head. Much to Cinder's surprise, it hurt more than any slap. What was that for? For being an idiot. Naruto snapped without any preamble. Do you want my help or not? She did. More than anything. She'd never admit it aloud. Her traitorous heart had leaped at the idea of being restored to some semblance of her former glory. To admit as much would be the same as placing herself in his power. He wanted something from her. He had to. Everyone wanted something. The alternative terrified her. If there truly was someone in this rotten world who only sought to help others, who sought no reward or means of payment, then what did that make her she'd lived by her creed, trampling others underfoot to get what she wanted? This man was the opposite of her in every way shape and form, a being who contradicted her and all but challenged her on every level. She couldn't take it, couldn't admit it, could barely even speak. 
In the end she managed a stiff nod. Then grit your teeth. This is going to hurt. With that, he laid his right hand on her ruined eye. Cinder had just enough time to glimpse his marked palm before her world went white. I don't feel anything he he eyeing. Her voice betrayed her. Aruta would later explain that it wasn't simply a matter of healing her, that he'd been essentially forced to revitalize dead skin her scars make her to circulate in an area long since dead. He'd actively regrown her eye in its socket and Thather body didn't know any other way to respond to this marvel beyond base instinct. He hadn't been joking. This pain went beyond what she'd experienced at Beacon, if only because it focused on a single locus, a singular point. There was no escape from it, and so she screamed, over and over again, until her voice finally failed. At first, it tried to reject what it viewed as a foreign object, which in turn ratcheted the pain tenfold. Who could say how much time passed seconds, minutes, hours? Quite suddenly, the pain vanished. And she could see. Cinder blinked. Where? A shadow shifted in her peripherals. Welcome back. Naruto's gruff voice greeted her. Again, she glimpsed him at the foot of her bed, changing her bandages. She rose, slowly at first, struggling to make her body respond the way she wanted to. Everything hurt. Dimly, she realized must have blacked out at some point, because the gentle light of day filtered through the roof, leaving her to squint against it as nocturnal predator might its own shadow. She felt like death. No, worse than death. Her skin set in stale sweat, her throat burned itself hoarse. But she could see. With both eyes, she didn't realize it at first, all the world felt wrong. After viewing it through a single lens for so long, she almost couldn't quantify it. Why was her face wet oh, gods? She wasn't crying, was she no? Absolutely not. She hated such weakness. The man tending to her was anything but, and her curiosity would no longer be denied. Who are you, really? Naruto twitched. Just a touch. As I've said, I'm just a humble doctor, no one important. Cinder latched onto him like a starving woman with their meal. No, she swept her grim arm at him in a fit of pique. No excuses, tell me. An eye is a small matter. Her doctor deflected. It's something I've done before. You should rest. And you should tell me the truth. Now, she clawed at his face, though the words tasted ashen in her mouth. Look at you, she jabbed a bandaged finger against his. You have all this power, yet you refuse to use it. You can heal wounds, recover from any injury. Bring back the dead. You could rule this world, yet here you hide in a hut. Helping people. Helping me. Why? Sometimes the best action is in action. Came the reply. He wouldn't look at her. I chose the latter. Wise. He was taking action by helping her and the people of this village. That wasn't an action in the least. Then you're a fool, Naruto Yuzumaki. Cinder growled back aside. Power is meant to be used, not hoarded away. So you've told me. He rebuffed her with a gentle sigh. We've been over this. You do not want the gifts I have to offer. Of course I do you think hoarding power means you'll have it forever. Her restored sight regarded him venomously as he continued to change her bandages with his quiet, limpid sincerity. But it just makes the rest of us hungrier. And I refuse to starve. A muscle jumped in his jaw. Stop being melodramatic and let me do my job. Why you do have any idea what it's like to never be good enough he didn't answer her. So she pressed on, words scorching her throat. To be used and abused every moment of your life every second of his silence stabbed her like a blade, bringing her further and further to the edge. To be thrown out into the street and told that you're no one nothing I fought my way out of that hell. I earned that power I did things you couldn't possibly imagine to obtain it I made a deal with the devil herself. Still, he refused to look at her. Damn him damn him to hell for all of this. And when I finally gained that power when I finally claimed that which was so rightfully mine it was taken from me enraged, she reached out and grabbed him by the chin, forcing him to look at her. I sacrificed, I bled, I cried, I did everything I could not to lay down and die, but I still did, and now it's gone. Who are you to ridicule me? You know nothing about me. I fought you. You just hide like the coward you are. You just described a quarter of my life. His stoic gaze regarded her silently. To a T by all means, continue. Your life couldn't have been that bad. My dear, you have no idea. Cinder spat at his feet in mild derision, but didn't refuse him when he began to wrap a fresh poultice around her waist. Her lone eye never left him, watching every moment until he finally completed his task. The moment he did she tried to jerk away from him, only for him to seize her human hand in his. For a moment, just a moment, the tan flesh of his palm gleamed a ghastly white. She didn't have time to regret her decision. You think you know power you think you could bear my burden and survive. You know nothing. The words escaped him in a low snarl as his fingers tightened around her heel. Salem Grim don't make me laugh. Look at me. White eyes regarded her with the weight of a thousand worlds, and still, he didn't relent when she tried to squirm away. Look at me his voice rose, crashed like thunder, rattling heaven and earth alike. Are you afraid you should be? I could crush your master and lock her away in an instant, seal her in a place so cold and dark that she'd never see the light of day. Imagine what I could do to you. Her expression must have been telling, because he released her. Do you understand now I could use this power? But I'd unleash something far worse on this world. Just like that, Naruto stepped back fro her, the ghastly pallor fading from his visage like a bad dream, a faint memory. We all have our demons, Cinder. We all have our secrets. Mine are simply more tangible than most. When she opened her mouth reply, he staved her off with a raised hand. And you don't give yourself enough credit these days. You do have people who care about you. For instance, Cinder. As if waiting for that very moment, the door leading to the hut crashed open, spilling daylight into the darkened room. 
Cinder raised her arm to ward off the sudden surge of light, to no avail. Not a heartbeat later, a teary green anton blur shot across the room to cannon into her. She recognized her supposed attack almost immediately, even as her body struggled between fight or flight. Emerald but this what when where why when the sage favored her with a dry look that spoke volumes, she wanted to burn him alive. But where had the girl come from this didn't make of sense. In the end, his smile answered her. I never said you were my only patient. The sage hummed. I'll leave the two of you alone, for now. Without so much as another word, he sketched a bow and departed the way she'd come. Cinder took back everything she'd thought of him. All of it. Every bit. This man was impossible. She couldn't understand him. While that brief display of power had certainly rattled her, it was his words that clung on, muddying the mire of her thoughts. He claimed to know the pain she felt, to know what she'd been through. It could be a trick. A ploy used to gain power over her. He held incredible power, but rather than use it as was his right kept himself sheltered away, eking out a living through these small, tiny acts of kindness. And he claimed to be content no, she couldn't comprehend his motives. And yet now she almost wanted to, not for pride or power, but as a kindred spirit. More than that, she frowned, heart twisting quietly. No, surely not. It couldn't be. The very notion was absurd. And yet it still lingered. She'd been had. Cinder realized that the moment she finally managed to pry Emerald off her, it didn't take long to put two and two together while she held the delighted girl at bay. Less so to see Mercury and Hazel poking their heads through the door her minion flung open. Naruto's satisfied smile only served to sanction her suspicions. All this time thought herself alone, abandoned by her allies. One look at Emerald's bandaged forehead told her all she needed to know. They'd taken injuries of their own. Yet she hadn't seen them for days, which in turn begged the question, where were you hiding them? As I said, you're not my only patient. Naruto jerked a thumb over his shoulder as the men sauntered in. The burly one brought those two in for treatment shortly after I found you. Metal legs over here sustained broken ribs. Little Emerald here wasn't even able to walk until recently. When she thought you died, she overtaxed her semblance and nearly killed herself. His mismatching eyes narrowed upon her minion. Come to think of it, I believe I told her to stay in bed. Perhaps she misheard me. Merc. The mintired girl wilted. Sorry, sir. A pause and then, thank you for giving Cinder back her eye. Sir, I told you already. Don't go calling me that. The doctor drawled as he glided towards the door. I'm not that old. Oi, gorilla. He said, addressing Hazel. We're going hunting. Then I need more than a deer to feed this many mouths tonight. I have a name. The larger man sighed. Much to Cinder's dismay, he still capitulated and followed him out. So you do. Naruto laughed. Maybe I'll use it one day if you behave yourself. Now get over here. Cinder should have used their absence to escape. It was the most logical thing to do, really. Instead she processed the exchange numbly, her mind a whirl for entirely other reasons. Someone had nearly died for her emerald nearly died for her why she wasn't worth dying for. It was a foreign feeling. She wasn't sure if she was proud, touched, or furious. Proud to inspire such raw loyalty in those beneath her, touched that there was someone in this world who nearly threw their life away out of grief for her, or furious that so useful a tool of hers would allow themselves to be overcome by emotions. The girl's unique semblance was one a kind, the sort that only came about once in a lifetime. Losing her would have proven to be a major setback to her future plans. Not that they mattered now. Salem wouldn't let them return until they redeemed themselves. Of course, her own emotions chose that moment to burn all treaties and go to war in Cinder's head. For a terrifying moment, she couldn't bring herself to move. Still, such selfless devotion deserved praise, and only to ensure further loyalty. She wasn't proud of the girl, she lied to herself. She wasn't. No, not at all. This was simply necessary. Her gaze snapped to Emerald and perhaps expecting punishment of some sort for what she not out viewed as a failure, the poor thing drooped even further. She felt like she'd just kicked an earnest puppy. Something in Cinder flinched, something that wouldn't have before. Stop. Don't look at me like I'm the center of your world. It was a weakness, softness, kindness. She had no need of either. Cinder knew this, Salem should have long since ground any such soft sentiment out of her. Yet she couldn't bring herself to quash this. She should chastise her, condemn her for breaking down in a moment of crisis and failing to secure the relic punish her, at the very least. But the hope in the girl's eyes was almost too painful to behold. Emerald, she bade, the word of purr, come here. The girl did what she was bade. Ma'am, is what he said true she demanded. Did you risk yourself for my sake instead of the relic? Mercury whistled somewhere in the background. Who, boy, she looks pissed. Emerald had never looked so small and tiny as she did in this moment when she nodded. Well, that settled things, didn't it? Her failure was complete. With her semblance, she could have stolen back the relic from those damn brats, or at the very least made things difficult for them in the face of her defeat. Instead she'd broken down, lost herself in her trauma, and flung her semblance at everyone with such force that she'd nearly killed herself. Nearly thrown her life away. Stupid girl. There could be only one answer for her foolishness. No matter what Naruto might say to her. Her hand descended. Emerald flinched aside with a wince, expecting a slap or worse. It never came. Bandaged fingers de her scalp gently, caressing the minty tresses of her hair as a mother would her child. Without thinking the younger girl leaned into her touch. Just this once, Cinder allowed it. You did well, but never do that again. The words came out far softer than she intended. 
Don't throw your life away for me. She forced herself to smile. Good girl. Cinder realized her mistake instantly, because rather than accept this precious piece of praise for what it was, Emerald reacted to it. Overreacted. She knew it by widening of her eyes, the way her minion went suddenly and terribly still under her hand. Let it not be said that Cinder didn't know the girl's tells, after all, they'd been working together for some years now. She wouldn't be much of a villain if she couldn't control or manipulate those beneath her, much less read them. And everything her newly restored sight told her nothing good. No, Emerald, wouldn't, she couldn't, she didn't dare. She would, and she did. Cinder, a tan blue of green and brow cannoned into the former maidens with enough force to physically flatten her back against the bed, pillows and all. It didn't so much hurt as it did startle her. Because Emerald never did this never ever she knew better now her wounds hissed angrily as did Cinder when the girl wrapped both arms around her and buried her head into her still healing collarbone shoulder. To make matters worse, she started sobbing, weeping into her shoulder like some newborn babe. Ugh sentiment it burned. I thought you were dead. She babbled into her shoulder, shaking her head to and fro. We all did how did you survive? Cinder did not like being touched. Hugged, even less so. She said as much. Get off. Emerald did so immediately, and Cinder stubbornly quashed another pang of guilt. Taking a moment to gather the shattered shards of her pride, the Blaquette forced herself to sit up and straighten. Yes, she reminded herself. She was in control here. She set the pace. While that blonde buffoon was out she could plot, she could plan, and find a way to get back into Salem's good graces. She might not have her maiden powers anymore, but she still held her wit and her skills. Her mind and her body remained her greatest weapons. They had served her in her weakest days, and it would serve her now. Her, not this quack of a doctor. Mercury, Emerald. Her voice was still recovering, but it was enough to make her cohort stand at attention. This man is a means to an end. She lied. Nothing more. Of course she lied. Do you understand why was she still lying do not get attached? No, no problem. Mercury shrugged. Don't much like the guy. Emerald almost look at air she say conflicted yes ma'am. I understand. Whip. Mercury swiped at the air and made a cracking sound with his tongue. Emerald launched a pair of pillows at him from the bed, but the assassin nimbly dodged aside with taciturn ease. Enough, both of you. Cinder's voice may as well have been a whip the way it cracked at them. Did your semblance work on him? No, the green-haired girl confessed, realizing the question had been meant for her. He just laughed and told me to try harder next time. He is. She flushed and turned aside, suddenly hesitant to speak. Well, what is it out with it, girl? He's been teaching me. The words tumbled out, startling her. Training, really. He said I have potential. Well, this was an unexpected development, but not an unfavorable one. Did he now? What are we going to do, Mercury inquired. Should I? Continue. For now. His earlier scare aside, she wasn't willing to test Naruto's patience. Not yet. Not when he displayed a power well above her own. Earlier she might have been willing to throw Hazel and her allies she might be able to take him down. If she had her maiden powers she was sure she could have put up a fight. But now one glace at the duo and that hope was dashed against the rocky shores of reality. He'd subverted them somehow, weakened their will to the cause, or perhaps he'd simply given them what they wanted. He had them wrapped around his finger. Just as he did her. Oh, and we're back. Just like that the door to the hut crashed open. Mercury returned. Huh, that was awfully quick. How did you thetis a big fish? Cinder's gaze snapped away from her cohorts to see what Mercury was gibbering at this time. She soon had her answer as a large shape was hauled through. Oh, my, that was a rather large specimen. How had he caught? Something like that so swiftly gods. Why did Hazel have an entire armful of the blasted things had they simply dove into the river to catch them they weren't even wet fishing? No, it hadn't been long enough. More of Naruto's so-called magic at work to catch ten fish longer than her arm and as many minute as that was absurd. To make matters worse, they weren't alone. There was a kitten following them. What the actual hell? What is that? It was a tawny dirty little thing with bright green eyes, trotting after the two men without so much as a care in the world, which was precisely why Cinder noticed it in the first place. There was not so much as a hint of fear in its posture. If anything it looked perfectly at home here in the hut. Baffling. Animals were meant to fear humans. Yet this one pawed at Naruto's leg and mewled pitifully as he began to prepare their meal. Hazel and the rest were able to ignore it with ease, but her gaze still lingered all the same. She'd seen one just like it as a child. She remembered feeding it scraps. She wanted to pet it. And the cat following her gaze, Naruto fed a bit of fish at the tiny beast while he worked. It's just the village stray. Harmless. When it saw her, the little beast mewled and padded over to the foot of her bed. Kitty Cinder's heart gave a painful girlish lurch at the sight, and her human hand reached out to pet it without thinking. She clamped down on it with her grim arm until the pain cleared her head. Naruto noticed immediately if the impish gleam in his eyes gave any indication. Of course he did something about it. How could he not in a plume of smoke one that noticeably didn't make any of her allies jump he left the meal prep to a doppelganger and stepped in to scoop the small feline up. Then he offered it to her. Here you go, he said. Cinder bristled. No, get it away. He read her bluff. You were trying to pet it just now. Was I Cinder's voice turned coy. Whatever do you mean? A rare flash of anger crossed Naruto's visage. You're being difficult. As if to second this statement, the kitten made a pitiful meow in his grasp. Cinder's resolve began to tremble. It looked so small and helpless no stay strong. 
cease this foolishness. She rallied herself and looked away spat. I don't want to touch it. Naruto arched an eyebrow. All right, then. I'm sure you wouldn't mind if I gave her to Emerald then. Mind, Cinder's human arm betrayed her just as her voice did, sweeping forward to snatch the little hellion up before he or her minion could lay claim it. In a heartbeat she pulled it into her lap, curling her natural limb around it. Another had her stroking its coat. To make matters worse, the little creature started purring. Well, that tore it. She was lost. Blast it all. When had she come undone in that moment she wanted nothing more than to bury her head in a pillow and pretend this never happened. Someone's scroll Mercury said in the background, immortalizing the moment forever, and her temper blazed. How dare he? This meant war. Emerald. Her word was a hiss. Ma'am the younger girl stood rigid at attention. Aim for the head. It was a command, not a request. And she did. Mercury's terror was sweet music to her ears. And now hold on a second. Doctor or no, Naruto hadn't sworn any oaths. He stood idly by when Emerald flew at the assassin in a whirl of motion and summarily beat the tar out of him. Nor did he bat an eyelash when the wily woman snatched up his scroll in the chaos. Noticeably, she didn't break it. And if Cinder failed to notice, who was he to say anything he had other plans? And if Cinder just so happened to be distracted by a kitten in the midst of it well, he wasn't about to say anything. Now then, he raised his voice to make himself heard. Did you want to continue with your lessons while we wait? Emerald. The girl perked up, pausing just long enough to glance at Cinder for acknowledgement. Make yourself useful and fetch some firewood, Hazel. She instructed the larger man. Dinner will be ready when you return. Damn him and his knowing smile. How much? Naruto rolled his eyes. As much as those beefy arms can carry. Off with you now, Shu. Hazel grunted, but noticed what the girl failed to. For all her earlier objections and plots, she was eager to sit down. Eager to listen. The girl was even taking notes as Naruto explained new uses for her semblance. Hazel listened as well. Some of those uses were rather creative in scope. Not particularly destructive or violent, mind you, but creative. Hmm, this might be good for her. Emerald was many things, but her world and views revolved around Cinder and by definition, shaped her as a person. Even he knew this was unhealthy. Girl needed some support in her life. So he lingered, allowing a Nobru's Mercury to bustle past him. And he listened. Hazel heard her giggle as he left the hut behind. Good, indeed. Right, Naruto continued under Cinder's watchful eye. We'll continue where we left off last time. You are the only limit to your semblance. He paused, brow quirking as the girl listened raptly. Your semblance is a part of you as much as you are it. Think of it as a muscle, when you need to strengthen. You define where it ends, you define what it affects, and you expend your stamina to maintain it. Unlike a Jinjutsu, you don't need seals or any. Jinjutsu. Slip of the tongue, the blonde muttered. Ignore it. Cinder didn't. She filed the word away for later. Another piece of the puzzle. Now then, have you ever considered playing a prank on your metal-legged friend Naruto inquired? I've never thought about using it that way. Emerald shook her head slowly. It's hard to keep up in combat, and if I use it on more than one person. Yes, yes, the headaches. The whiskered warrior thumbed his chin. I believe that's merely a matter of stamina. Easily addressed, that. You just needed the right person to train you. When he thumbed a lone digit at his, it was all she could do not to roll her eyes. With the right motivation while a pale hand rose to scratch the back of his head. Let's just say your potential's kinda scary. Even for me. If you think of it as a field, you could even expand it from your body. Another laugh. Like I said, you're scary. Emerald preened at the ill-hidden praise. Scary, he'd said. She liked that. You think so? Naruto barked a laugh. Why my girl, you could be a prank queen. Cinder observed them patiently as the minutes dragged on into an hour, then two. Three. Four. All the while the sun sank lower in the sky, all the while she tried to ascertain his purpose and failed. Utterly. What it had gained from training Emerald like this her loyalty Emerald would not be so easily swayed was what she wanted to tell herself. But the girl's eyes were bright and keen on Naruto as he continued his lecture. Blast it. She didn't like this. Where were Hazel and Mercury were they dragging their feet had the authorities found them something was wrong here. Her shoulders tightened with tension, a thread of doubt weaving itself into her heart. I had the pleasure of meeting the Spring Maiden, once. Naruto said suddenly, jarring her from her reverie. Someone like you might have been enough to make her change her ways. Cinder snorted. Of course you'd know that woman. Why am I not surprised? No, not Raven, though she is a bit of a regular. The blonde waved her words away in the alarm that came with them. I'm talking about the last incarnation. Poor girl. She stumbled upon my clinic in the dead of night. I told her not to go looking for those bandits. She didn't listen and we both know how that wound up, don't we? Cinder silently seethed at the reminder, but she made no effort to release the purring kitten nestled in her lap. Naruto arched an eyebrow. Would you look at that seems that Sir Pounce has taken a liking to you. You are not calling our cat that. Weakness, blasted and he seized it, too. Our, you say his right eye gleamed. I wasn't aware you liked cats. Her cheeks turned red. Of course I don't idiot shut up. And the world shook. It wasn't so much a tremor as it was an explosion of noise and sound. One moment Cinder had been sitting of her bed, scowling at her host as her good leg swung lazily over the side. She was well, not content, but neither could she call herself angry. In the next a vicious blast of something shattered her world, tore off the roof, and sent her tumbling to the floor. By some instinct, she'd managed to clutch the kitten to her and protect it, her aura did the rest. 
It didn't make her landing any less pleasant or humiliating. Emerald bolted upright. What in the world? Screams rippled outside, waves of fear and anger, the scent of fire and flames reaching Cinder's nose. She didn't need to see them to know the cause, just as she didn't need her former power to know what was about to transpire. Her darkened arm had already begun to ache long before she found her footing. She knew what it meant long before someone slammed through the door and started shouting for Naruto's presence. Grim, of course it would be them. It explained Mercury and Hazel's absence, as if things weren't bad enough. Did the gods hate her as she lost Salem's protection she couldn't fight properly? Not with a bad leg, not with. Well, a familiar voice croaked, we were overdue for an attack anyway. Time to put those lessons into practice, Emerald. Naruto stood, catching her eye. Without thinking she grabbed at him. Where are you going? This matching eyes pulsed back at her. Thought that would be obvious. I'm going to work. Her minion hesitated, suddenly caught between the two of them. But Cinder will be. Fine. The blonde interjected. She's more than capable of killing whatever comes through this door. Without so much as a backward glance, he sauntered outside into the night. A moment passed. Then another. Somehow, despite all she'd seen and heard thus far, Cinder was still surprised when it was the Grim who began screaming. Are you ready? Ruby rose and hailed deeply. Then she exhaled thrice as hard. Trembling fingers raised crescent rose. Silver eyes squinted against hazy moonlight. All right. She could do this. Crazy maiden powers. How bad could it be she'd been training for days now, careful to keep her new tricks under wraps. Ospin had been adamant on that. It wouldn't do for Salem to discover that she'd lost so useful a pawn, or so he claimed. For once Ruby Wasless then pleased with his advice. She didn't like being cooped up like this, treated like glass. Staying in Haven would give her some much needed time to master her new abilities before they set out. And maybe not Zap Weiss, no matter how funny that might have been the first time. All right, breathe, concentrate. Oh gods, her eyes are glowing again young cried in faux despair. Duck and cover. Ruby made a keening noise. Stop it. That distraction cost her dearly as Osmond's cane swooped at her face. She yelped and parried out of instinct if nothing else, only to find her side's edge coated itself in red flame. Oops, when she tried to parry again her body betrayed her and lightning leaped from her fingers to strike her opponent in the... Ruby didn't cackle. Villains cackled. But she did giggle as Oscar's body tumbled backwards. It felt good to finally hit him for once, even if it had been an accident. This power was well. Try as she might, she didn't have a word for it, save that it felt alive. Alive, and eager for action. But still victory. Ah, she crowed, pumping a fist. Got it this time. Well done, Miss Rose. Supreme beneath Ospin he stood too straight to be Oscar and his gentle praise. Now, I believe you were interested in the practical applications of flight. Ruby squealed. Yes, please. Hero tipped his flask to his lips and bit back a sigh. As if she wasn't dangerous enough. He knew that maiden powers were a good thing, he just wished his niece wasn't the vessel for them. Damn it. Why did it have to be Ruby if she wasn't a target before, she'd be one now. Salem would come howling for her head once she understood just how thoroughly she'd been played. Did Ruby realize that probably? Should he rain on her parade and wipe that smile from her face? Absolutely not. Hero was many things, but Cruel wasn't one of them. She had her team. She had JNPR. She had him and Ospin. She'd be safe. He'd make certain of it. He wouldn't couldn't break his promise to Summer, even it cost him his life. Gods, he missed her. Somewhere in the distance, he thought he heard a Beowulf howl. Wait was that a Beowulf Grim didn't laugh. Meh, someone was having a good time. Naruto howled out a laugh as he ripped through another Grim. Gods this felt good. Wind in his face, pulse pounding in his ears, all the world a vivid whirl of color as the broken bodies of countless Grim writhed and twisted around him. It made Naruto feel young again. Here and now, in the thrill of the moment, all his sins were forgotten, all his misdeeds and mistakes pushed to the wayside. He didn't have to think, didn't need to restrain himself. Grim were mindless beasts, wholly devoid of logic or reason. There could be no bargaining with them, no talking them down from a fright, no sparing them. So he didn't. Instead, laughter leaped from his lips laughter that didn't belong to him as he pounced upon a greater Ursa and viciously divested the beast of its head before turning to hurl its dissolving body into a pack of immature deathstalkers some yards away. Caught unprepared by the unorthodox missile, most of the gangly creatures were flattened beneath its bulk. Just as well, he fed a pair of clones toward the stragglers and didn't spare the rest so much as a passing glance as he turned back to the fray. It was a fine night for a hunt. Strength surged back into his weary body as he fought on through the horde and rallied the people to him, never in front of him, but behind him. Always behind him and out of harm's way, forcing the Grim to focus on him and him alone. This village was no stranger to their kind. They'd fought them before and knew they would fight them again. he taught them well in his time among them. He wouldn't teach them about chakra, no, never chakra, but nearly every man. Woman and child had their aura unlocked. Of that group, every adult knew how to fight. They had to, this far from Haven. Beset by bandits and grim alike, they'd learned to survive long ago. Somebody get me my Y weapon. He barked the words into the chaos and sure enough, an axe sailed through the air to meet his waiting palm. A strange hybridization of a cleaver and saw alike, it was a weapon meant for one purpose and one alone, with a long handle and a curved blade that bent around said handle to make better use of centrifugal force. 
the staple of those who weren't quite huntsmen, but weren't civilians either. This was a crude and ugly tool meant for one purpose, rip and tear. The name he'd said instrument was apt, to say the least. Devil's rut. That tainted saw, coated in corrosive chakra, swung down neatly to bisect a Beowulf and slashed through a larger Borbatusk skull when it rolled at him. Naruto grunted in satisfaction and chambered the switch at the base of the handle, causing the long edge to snap outward as he wielded it like a club. Grim died in droves to its pointed teeth, felled by low cuts and hard blows. Those that didn't fell to his fists or his clones. Still, for every ten he slew, more spilled from the trees in the sky to take their place. He tried to hold back, to avoid using chakra over much, lest it agitate his body and his tenant within. Once upon a time, Naruto might have wondered what could have stirred so many Grim up in such numbers, but he'd long since shed that foolish brick-headed ignorance. Now he knew the answer, just as his body knew the threat before him and responded accordingly. Instinctively, call it the legacy of a misspent youth. Now, he tore another Beowulf in half and found an ashen-faced Mercury waiting for him on the other side. Well, good to know the little punk was still alive. They must have been drawn back by the fighting. Hazel likely wasn't far behind, judging by the furious roar somewhere behind him. But still, the silver-haired teen continued to gape at him. What the hell are you he rasped. Naruto blew out a breath. Complicated, he thought. Instead, he laid a hand on Mercury's shoulder. Are you all right? An angry Beowulf lunged at them and he eviscerated its jaw with his free hand. I'm fine. Stop that. You're not my old man. The teen growled and shook his other arm off. I don't need anything from you. The ancient shinobi bit back the urge to roll his eyes. Good lord, the Grim were attacking and the boy was trying to be edgy. Sasuke would have laughed at him. Still, he could see the problem readily enough, his altered eye told him all he needed to know about the boy. Or it was the soul, and this boy had his all but ripped away when his semblance was sealed. Not stolen. Sealed. It was still there. He could sense, see that tiny ember beating in the boys. It had always been there. Really, the remedy was obvious. He just had to wake it up again. He'd done it once before, it would be the work of moments and perhaps a way to push the boy back onto the right path. Oh so he let a slow, sleepy smile dawn on his whiskered cheeks. Then I take it you wouldn't want your semblance back. Mercury's jaw said shut in childish defiance. Bullshit. You can't do that. No one can. Was that a challenge Naruto seized him before he could protest. For it is in time that we find our meaning. One hand alighted on the boy's forehead and the other touched his as a faint silver glow suffused. His form. Through healing that we preserve others. Through words we save the world. He intoned the words rapidly as the world burned around them. Through kindness we preserve the bonds we hold dear. Mercury black. For a fleeting instant, his eyes burned white. I awaken your soul once more and by my words unshackle thee. He released him and the assassin jerked back as if he'd been slapped, gaping at his hands as though he'd grown extra fingers. Hey Aoha what did you just do? I gave you back your semblance. Naruto prodded his with a finger. You never lost it. It was just asleep. I woke it up again. I know. The boy balked at him, eyes flitting to his palms. I can feel it. It's there. My old man never stole it. Naruto shrugged awkwardly. Doesn't seem like it. For a fleeting instant, the boy looked lost. What do I do now? Oh for the love of he was asking that question here now he pushed him forward. Fight. You know what a small, sly grin tugged at the corner of Mercury's mouth. I take it back. Best dad ever. Naruto clutched his black heart and nearly keeled backward. Sticks and stones could break a man's bones, but those words critical damage. Dad irk. He'd never been called that before. For all his poking and prodding of Salem's minions, he hadn't expected one of them to crumble this fast, least of all to call him that. And didn't that just make him feel old as dirt even if he didn't look it? Still, it was not an unpleasant feeling. So he slapped his shoulder and sent him on his way. Go get him, kid. To his credit the assassin recovered quickly from his brief lapse and spun back into the melee with a smirk. Naruto almost pitied the Beowulf he fell upon. Mercury's semblance was a powerful piece of work. The more hits he landed on an opponent, the more damage he did. Fitting for one who knew his trade. Naruto let him fight, content in the knowledge that he could look after himself. Good kid. Bit it up in the head and all, nothing he couldn't fix given time. But now was the time for fighting, not fixing. Still, an amusing thought niggled at him. Did I just adopt a criminal he wondered. Huh, feels kinda nice. He punted a Borbatus that tried to barrel into him and waited in where the grim were the thickest. Yet no matter how many he hacked and slashed, more kept coming, drawn to him like a beacon. It was always like this. Grim would inevitably focus on him to the exclusion of all else. His Basenger guaranteed that. Even sealed, Kaguya was a blight upon him. Her very presence radiated negativity, more so when he fought. Still, it was a bit unusual for so large a swarm to strike in the dead off oops. Something slapped against his back and he plucked a nevermore from his shoulder. Sloppy work. Really he asked of the squawking bird as it flailed in his grasp. What did you think this would accomplish? It shot a nasty call at him and he broke the creature's neck without a second thought. A shadow fell over him a heartbeat later, blotting out the moonlight. The smatching eyes of sapphire and violet rose to meet mindless red ones. Despite himself, despite knowing it was futile, Naruto still smiled. I don't suppose we could talk about this. Twin fists descended on his skull, only to stop short against the biting edge of Devil's Rot. 
Beringel were not quiet creatures. He'd heard the ape coming ages ago, nor was grim flesh a match for the chakra of a tainted god. Tan fingers fed out before the beast could try pound him to paste between its meaty fists again. Devil's rot slipped between its legs and the grim's legs buckled, leaving it to crumple with a whimper. His weapon took it high and hard in the throat, cutting its yelp into a pitiful hiss. See, that's not very nice. Naruto hummed over its tortured shrieks. You're gonna make me angry at this rate. His gaze narrowed. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Yet another Ursa lunged at him while he dispatched it. One of his clones must have missed it among the others. He snagged its paw in passing with his free hand and tore it free. In that same movement he took that great burly limb and ruthlessly rammed it through the belly of the beast. It didn't even have a chance to feel the pain. His right hand slammed forward and smashed a racing him through its skull. It was still dissolving when a large Beowulf bounded through its remains to tackle him in a shadowy blur. On a whim, he decided to pit his strength against the beast. Less so the rest of the pack that dogpiled onto him. Persistent bastards. In another life, he would have been crushed under their weight. Now he merely snorted and raised a hand. Almighty push. A rolling wave of concussive force exploded from Naruto's palm to dash the grim against one another, grinding them to sullen dust. Somehow, one of the larger ones managed to survive. Annoyed, he climbed to his feet and reached out again, yanking it towards him with a divine pull. To its credit, the beast actually managed to bite him before he grabbed it, slavering jaws crunched down on his, tearing through flesh and bone. A human would have died. Naruto had no heart left to pierce, no lungs to sunder, and so only set his tongue in mild admonishment of himself as much as the beast as he snatched it up by the throat, prying it jaws free from his, uncaring of the holes left behind. Its confused gurgle was sweet, sweet music to his ears. Their confusion never got old. Something dark in him fed on their fear. He thought he heard Emerald gasp somewhere behind him, but he paid her no mind. Unused to being overpowered, the Beowulf went wild in his grasp, limbs flailing to tear great white furrows in his face and throat. Stained white claws red, but he barely felt the wounds. Pain was an old friend these days. They'd already closed by the time the beast reared for a second strike. He never gave it a chance to finish what it started. Bad dog, Naruto admonished, tightening his grip on the Grimm's jugular. You should know better. It slashed weakly at him again. That mighty roar withered to a whine then a whimper as he crushed its windpipe. Red eyes bulged in abject horror as he tossed it into the air and caught it by the leg, hefting all seven feet of it like a crude flail. This time, Naruto wasn't able to keep the smile from his face. He was losing control, sliding down a slippery slope from which there might be no coming back. He knew it, but in that moment he couldn't bring himself to care. His was up. So much anger. So much fear. Come on. Then the words tore out of him in a roar. Who wants some? A pack of Beringel accepted his challenge and barreled towards him. For all its intelligence, his captive Beowulf couldn't do anything more than squeak when he bashed it against them. Naruto cackled again and smashed it against another Grim, flattening an unlucky Ursa beneath its bulk as if it were no more than a cub, beating one bastard with another bastard. Huh. He was sure there was a pun to be had there somewhere, but he couldn't think of one. He was too busy laughing, didn't even realize that his impromptu weapon had expired until he realized he was fighting with his hands again. Casting its crumbing corpse aside, he snatched up his weapon and bounded back into the fray. Violence was sound civilized, but he recognized it as a necessary evil. After all, he couldn't barter with the Grim. But as much as he might loathe it, someone savored the shed. Even now he could hear Kaguya singing in the back of his head, cackling at the carnage as he crushed every Grim before him. One managed to swat his weapon out of his hand, leaving him to fight on with his fists. All the while, the rabbit goddess laughed at him. At herself. At everyone. She wasn't even sane anymore, just a writhing mass of power, of hateful envy, sloth, greed, and lust every sin made manifest. Of course she enjoyed this. Her presence made him nearly indestructible and she fed off every life he took. Naruto missed a step as a spike of red-hot agony shoved itself through his temple. Damn it. Not now. Yes, now her silken voice cried in the back of his head. Hack and slash rip and tear kill them kill them all kill. Her childish enthusiasm for the slaughter sickened him and his thoughts turned inward as he fought on, even as a brutish beringial burst when he flung a race and sure I can add it. Not enough. He wanted to tear them apart now. Calm thoughts. He couldn't afford to rile her up over much, lest he lose control of himself. Even now he was nearly drunk on her chakra. It burned through his veins, hot and heady, demanding a release so he did the next best thing. If she wanted a chance to vent, he'd give her one just not in the way she intended. A simple crossing of his hands flooded the village with more shadow clones. They appeared everywhere, some alighted atop buildings, others in the trees, still more crouched with weapons in hand. For a fleeting instant everything froze, even the Grim themselves, startled by the sudden influx of bodies. Hundreds of them. Naruto felt his smile twist into something monstrous as everyone gaped at him, human and monster alike. Even his allies. Ants. They were all ants to be crushed and no. He stubbornly tamped it down and blew out an angry breath. He wouldn't lose control. He refused. Time wrapped things up. Boys his voice boomed at the lot of them. He'll protect the people. With that simple act, the battle was all but won. He fought on, tracking any strays that tried to break away from the flood of death he'd just unleashed. It was all he could do. He'd come to this world to hide, not to hurt. To seal himself away, and when that had failed, eke out a humble existence on his own. 
Even healing came as a whim, he'd used his talents to help someone on death's door, just once, and word spread. People found him. Soon enough, this village sprang up around him over time as supplicants came to him, when he found himself tasked with protecting. It was and always would be a far cry from Hawkage, but living here made him happy. And now he rained death on those that would harm his precious piece of paradise. Mercury and Hazel gaped at him as a rampaging herd of Goliath went down with an anguished wail, mighty trunks flailing as their bodies were swarmed by a raging river of doppelgangers. Emerald poked her head out just in time to see flocks of manticores die in droves as a hail fire sent them tumbling from the sky. Cinder was given the express pleasure of watching the forest come to life around her, of seeing giant griffins crash to the ground as the very earth betrayed them, roots leaping up to snag the beasts from the sky and drag them screaming into the mud, never to be seen again. And just like that, the world went silent. It took Naruto a handful of seconds to realize that the grim incursion had been stymied, that the battle was done and people were looking to him for guidance. Guidance. Ha bitterness bubbled up inside of him as he felt his fingers twitch traitorously at his sides. One hand descended on his scalp, pushing down the horns he'd felt growing for the better part of five minutes now. Kaguya's horns. Those ghastly red things resisted him despite his best attempts, so he snapped them off in a fit of pique. More Kaguya cried in his head. No, it was time to stop. And more than this and he really would lose control. Blowing out a breath, he bled his tension away and forced himself to face his people. There were bodies, of course. There were always bodies. It didn't matter. He wouldn't let them die of anything less than natural causes, and if someone did, he'd correct their mistake. They knew that. They trusted him. Death held no meaning to any of these people. Why should it people because they didn't comprehend the cost? With every soul he snatched back from death, he felt a little more of himself slip away. Didn't matter. Their lives mattered more than his. He was content to fade away if it meant dragging Kaguya to the void alongside him. You all fought well. He congratulated each of them. Bring the wounded to me, and I'll. You're hurt. Emerald's words and her hands on his arm when had she gotten that close brought him up short. Shit. Mercury hissed, and just like that, the blonde found himself cornered. That doesn't look good. Trust me, I'd know. Frowning at their pointed concern as much as his own irritation, the ancient shinobi glanced past those concerned eyes and stole a glance at his ruined coat. Saw the still mending wounds in his torso. Oh, no wonder they were concerned. That looked grisly. Even now he could hints of white bone of his ribs peeking through the muscle. Hmm, must have expended more energy than he thought if he hadn't recovered yet. The thought brought with it in feeling, an almost childish pang of concern. Nonsense. He would recover. He always healed. He always did. It was his curse. It doesn't matter. And it didn't, not in the grand scheme of things. He turned away from her. As I said, bring the wounded. Emerald recoiled, incredulously. You're the one who's wounded, how are you still standing? Because I must. Naruto frowned at her. If not him, who would? He expected them to simply back down, that this would be the end of their argument. It wasn't. Sure enough, the two teenagers pursed their lips and stepped away, but even as they did so, Naruto heard an all-too-familiar snarl sunder the air behind him. A lifetime ago, he would have given a groan and palmed his face. Now he merely rolled his eyes when an arm of darkest shadows closed around his left wrist to reel him in. He could have removed said arm in any number of ways, could have killed its owner in an instant. He chose not to, and weathered the tirade that followed with stoic patience. You absolute buffoon. Cinder. He sighed, turning to stare into angry amber eyes. You shouldn't be out of bed. She really shouldn't be, but when had common sense prevailed her before still, she stood before him. Even then she looked as though she might topple over at the slightest breeze. Her lovely visage was pale and said with sweat and though she'd managed to find her red dress and climb back into it, it couldn't disguise the way she held herself. Her gait was clearly off, body poised awkwardly on her good leg, and she all but clung to him for balance, yet her gaze blazed in singular fury. Enough what is wrong with you how can you be so broken inside? Broken the words stabbed at him, drawing a scowl to whiskered cheeks. If my sacrifice saves others, then I'm more than willing to take a few wounds. Her human hand cracked across Naruto's face in a devastating slap, jerking his head to the side. Anger blazed. Anger he tried to stifle as he raised a tan palm to his throbbing cheek. The blow didn't hurt. Didn't even sting really, but the gesture behind it all but smacked of contempt. It surprised him, but also made him proud. Such a strange emotion. Pride in someone else. Unfortunately it was overshadowed by Kaguya's unyielding rage. It took all he had to restrain himself. Why did you just slap me? You idiot. The words were a hiss. Are you trying to die? I cannot die. He'd meant to state it as a fact, but her expression turned thunderous. There's no need to concern yourself with my safety. She tried to slap him again, this time he caught her wrist. Stop that. He warned, the words pitching into a growl. I'm not just going to stand there and take it. You save so many lives, then say that your own is worth nothing her grim hand stabbed into his, pushing him back half a pace. All with that damn smile on your face. Had he upset her somehow gods, women baffled him. What's wrong with smiling? Everything. It was the worst thing he could have said, because Cinder reared back with a hiss. He let her go, releasing her wrist. She stumbled, nearly fell before she caught herself. His hand nearly reached out for hers, but she stood on her own two legs, ignoring the pain even now lancing through her leg. She was strong. Even here at her weakest, he suspected she'd sooner spit than accept his help. 
Why was she so riled up in his mind? He hadn't done anything wrong. Cinder clearly believed he had. You exist, she jabbed him again, drawing a scowl a blink when her finger thrust itself against his nose. You have meaning worth look at you now your cry for those you've slain. Crying, Naruto squinted and touched a hand to his face again, realizing his eyes were in fact damp. He wasn't crying. That was all Kaguya, despiteful. Damn her. Damn them. Something ugly reared inside his heart once more, slipping through his grasp before he could control it. Who was she to judge him he'd taken her and her cohorts in without a second thought, tended their wounds and nursed them back to health. And she dared to question his methods to berate him and her fallacy did she think he'd wanted this Kaguya any of this. No, Cinder felt the pressure a heartbeat before it hit, and that she managed to steady herself in time. It didn't help. She knew she'd made a mistake, but she was too angry to care. You little fool, Naruto swore softly, shaking his head fro side to side, hair swaying in the wind. Something in his voice made her flinch. It sounded different. Colder, older, I won't shed any tears for the grim. Not them, never them, they're not worth it. It's just sometimes I forget what I used to be. A small, bitter chuckle tumbled out of his lips. Who I used to be. It's funny, you know as she looked on, he palmed his face. I try to bury myself in my work. Help people, heal them. But sometimes I remember, and knowing once I was not not this. Not what she challenged, anger still seething in her veins. A fool. White eyes regarded her and she recoiled. This ink thing suddenly he was in her face, snarling at her, veins throbbing in his eyes. This monster. Look at me. I said look at me. He grabbed her chin when she turned away from him, forcing her to do meet his gaze. I used to be a man, Cinder. I used to be alive. Who are you to question me and my methods where would you be without me while well, she opened her mouth to snap at him and his fury ignited tenfold. Cold dead forgotten I shaved away a piece of my soul to bring you back, not of you act like. He expected anger. Defiance at the least. Not the gasp. You did what? Damn it all. He hadn't meant to say that. Her reaction drained the anger right out of him as surely as a broken sieve, he stepped backward, ashamed of his outburst. She tried to follow him, but her leg finally buckled and in a moment of weakness Naruto found himself moving in to catch her. She fought him like a hellcat, writhing and thrashing in his grasp the moment his hands touched hers. Let go of me, blast you. Sorry. He grumbled, tearing his gaze from hers. It was a slip. Don't worry. It won't happen again. Bumbling oaf Cinder was spitting sparks when he finally released his hold on her. Hey you arg, what am I do to with you? The he teased, falling back on their old routine. Deny, deny, deny. Don't speak of anything else. It was the one thing he knew she'd never do. Her human hand snapped up to seize a fistful of his hair and he realized what Cinder was about to do. She was well and truly furious with him now, her still up from the attack. She wasn't thinking rationally. Neither was he. Perhaps, had Naruto been in his right mind, he would have anticipated her ambush and reacted accordingly. He'd underestimated her. With a low hiss that sounded entirely too much like a snake, Cinder pushed herself up on her good leg and rammed her mouth against his even as she dragged his face down to hers. It was quick, rough, forceful. She bit his lower lip with enough force to draw, her tongue ruthlessly plundering his mouth like a sunken galleon before jerking away thrice as fast. Before he could even think to speak she released him. Eyes of molten gold glowered defiantly up at him. Then her hands came up on his and cannoned out with impressive force. Oomph. It was a very good push all things considered. It struck him dead in the ribs and knocked him right on his arse with a startled squawk. He allowed it, too stunned to do anything else. Emerald squeaked. Mercury made an irritated noise that sounded vaguely a luntal a shite-eating grin spread across his face. Naruto knew it all too well, if only because he'd worn the same smile in his youth during his pranks. No, surely he wouldn't. Oh, who was he kidding? Of course he would. He had an inkling of what the young assassin was about to say and made no effort to stop him. Yup, that settled it. Favorite kid. Aw, mommy and daddy finally made up. Emerald went red. Cinder choked. What? Hazel actually chuckled. Naruto wasn't far behind him, though his laughter proved louder and more raucous by far. Women. He'd never understand them. Though she didn't answer, her silence lifted a weight from him. Her sullen squawking and sputtering were all the response he needed. It lifted his spirits in a way he hadn't thought possible. Oh gods, he'd needed this. Never had he needed something so badly and never known until he received it. Try as he might, he couldn't hold himself back, nor did he make any effort to rise. It left him shaking and cackling in the dirt, all his anger forgotten. Off and die, the lot of you cinder spat at them. See if I care HMMPH. Without another word, she marched back to her hut. Bastards and brats, all of them damned them all. Salem was many things. Calculating. Charismatic. Cold. But she was also patient. Terribly patient. When the deck was stacked against her, when she found herself in an unfavorable situation she, she often chose to wait. Outlast her enemies. Time was her ally in all things. When you were immortal, eternal, everlasting, years ceased to have any meaning for one such as her. A day was but the blink of an eye. A year mild in convenience. She'd once waited decades before making her move. She'd had countless minions over the years, but her grim there were always more to be had. She could see through every creature she created, it was both a blessing and a curse, albeit one she rarely used. Fai she but willed that she could have eyes in any one of the four kingdoms, but only in one hemisphere at any given time. 
For instance, she couldn't see through an Ursa in vacua while gazing through the eyes of a Nevermore somewhere in Mistral. Her powers were many, her skills great, but her focus could not be in two places at once, no matter how much she might wish it otherwise. And speaking of wishes, she just happened to glance a most familiar figure just now. Now whatever was her sweet little cinder doing in a rundown village like that? Who can bring back the dead? His savior tilted their head. Must you be so loud? John Ark wasn't sure if he was having a good night or not. On one hand, he might call this the worst singular evening of his life. He died. A lucky grim had gotten through his guard and torn open his stomach. Even now he could still sear the tears in his hoodie, the black fabric rent apart by Beowulf claws to expose the healthy skin beneath. Only moments ago, he'd been holding his entrails. Dying was a bad thing. John knew that. He'd nearly died countless times in the last month alone. Sooner or later it was bound to stick. But the news he'd just been given in his second life threatened to dash all of the misery he'd endured against the sandy sores of paradise. It was meant to be a simple patrol beyond the walls of Haven with Ren and Nora, an excuse to stretch his legs and get away from the stuffiness of the academy for a bit. His hair was still singed from Ruby's last explosion, poor thing. Osman hadn't been against the excursion, why would he value the safety of Team RWBY far over that of Team JNR? Not that John faulted him for his opinion. Ruby was important people oh. She was the Fall Maiden. She had to master her powers before they set out again or so Osman said. He was sure there was a story to be had there, but Osman wasn't telling it. Unfortunately for them, their patrol encountered Grimm. Lots of Grimm. They tried to retreat back the way they came, to no avail. He blundered into this mess, gotten separated from his team, and been forced to fight for his life. If not for this strange man standing over him, he would have surely perished. Which was rather ironic, given that John had tried to save him in the first place. What kind of man came howling out of the night after a pack of Beowulf armed with nothing more than an axe a complete and utter madman? That's who. Without thinking, John had thrown himself between the man and the Grimm. His heroism cost him his life, until it didn't, and as a reward for his kindness, the whiskered warrior had shown him a secret. That is indeed what I said, Mr. Ark. Naruto's shadow clone nudged the last dissolving grim with his foot, sending its fading ashes fluttering into the air. You're lucky. This isn't something I do lightly. I'm just a copy, no one would mourn my passing. You shouldn't have thrown your life away like that. Copy he didn't understand what this man was getting at. A life was a life, after all. But you saved me. Yes, I did. And if everyone knew I could bring back their loved ones, I'd be swarmed. Those mismatching eyes narrowed upon him, burning in the moonlight. I'll have to ask you to refrain from speaking of this. Odd. With the way he spoke, this guy almost reminded him of Ospin Butelder. Stranger. There was something ancient and unknowable in those gleaming blue eyes, as if standing in his presence would somehow impart the secrets to the universe or some such. John didn't care about that. He would latched onto the, those last few words with all the tenacity of Inersa. Their Udo's arm more so. He'd thought they'd met by chance, that this was some random encounter in the dark but this eyes must be fate what else could it be a man who could bring back the dead? Oh, um, sure. But the words sprang to his lips. Could you do it again? I could do, certainly. But why he tilted his head as another Beowulf howled in the distance. I don't know you. My means aren't perfect, nor is my eye. A long finger rose to elucidate him when he protested. You died in front of me, you weren't even dead for a minute before I dragged you out of the abyss. If you want me to bring back some that's been long dead, I'd need a sacrifice. A sacrifice John wilted when those eerie orbs found his. I is this a test or something it had to be. He refused to falter here. No, use me. It should be me. No, I think not. The sage sniffed, causing the blonde to stumble. Though if there were a test, you just passed it. Do you have anything of theirs a piece of cloth, perhaps anything with their DNA? Two don't know his hand brushed the red cloth on his waist and he scuffed a boot against the ground. I think I could find something. Would you be willing to sacrifice someone? John choked. Do I have two? Tan Han seized his cheeks and pinched, drawing a wine from the young man. Yes, the sage snapped at him, stretching his face back and forth like an angry rubber band. Find a criminal or something. S of the earth. Someone who won't be missed. They need to be alive if you want this to work. Ah, oh, but I digress. He released him and laid a tan hand on his shoulder. Your friends are just up ahead to the north, looking for you. Don't give me that look. His cheeks twitched in mild anger, they're quite alright. See your way to them, son. How will I find you a thorn of hesitation held him back from fleeing outright? You won't. The sage fed his forehead. I'll find you. John hesitated again. How? It was almost too good to be true. This felt like fate. Destiny. And yet he found himself afraid. With hope came fear. So much fear. What if the old man was lying to him all right? He wasn't old but he acted like it who was to say he'd ever see him again he might vanish into the ether after this for all he knew. Maybe this was all some fever dream and he really was dying. Ugh. The sage fed him in the forehead again, drawing a wine from his fellow blonde. Stop that. I can sense your negativity from here. A tan palm swept out towards him. Give me your hand. John complied. Oh. Pain snarled through his arm and he jerked it away thrice as fast, hissing in pain. Against his better judgment, he stole a glance at his scorched palm. It didn't so much sting as it did burn, nor did he comprehend the odd symbol that had been left behind there. He was pretty sure it was a word of some sort, but he couldn't figure out just what it was. 
You have my mark, Naruto explained as the young man baked at it. When you're ready, find someplace secluded, push a bit of aura into that palm and keep it there for nine seconds. I'll know if you're not alone. Now, one last question, then you can be on your way. Who are you trying to save? My friend, Too Mean John flailed his arms on the words when those hawk-like eyes found his. Her name is Piran Nikos. Shuddied. A while ago, a woman named Cinder killed her. Naruto went very still. Cinder, you say continue. Why did he have a bad feeling about this look? I really don't think I should. Is it so Naruto growled? Maybe I shouldn't have saved your life, then. Teep. Talking. John didn't mean to spill the beans, but his mouth betrayed him and the words spilled out like a flood, flowing from his lips before he could think to stop them. He told the man everything he knew about Pira. Her likes, dislikes, her feats and fears, her ignoble death atop that terrible tower. He wasn't sure how much time passed. Seconds, minutes, hours when he finally finished his eyes were burning all over again. Had he been crying hastily, he scrubbed at his face with the back of his hand. Gods, what an embarrassment. Will you do it? Against my better judgment, yes. The sage grumbled, palming his whiskered face. I'm just a sucker for sob stories it seems. Thank you John latched onto him like a limpet. Thank you, thank you, thank you you won't regret this. Hour the sage writhed in his grasp. I don't do hugs, boy off. Wait, what now, boy? John flinched. I just wanted to know your name. Naruto. The sage blew out a breath. There, happy now get. Thanks, old man he shook his hand firmly and bolted before he could take the words back. I won't forget this. I'm not that old, and my Naruto watched him go with a sigh. Bye, young love. I'll never understand the like. This better not come back to bite me in the ass. With a long-suffering sigh, the clone waited until it was certain John was long gone. Only then did it dispel itself in a rush of pale smoke. Emerald Sustri wasn't a good person. She knew this. Oh, by the brother gods, she knew this. She'd done terrible, horrible things in her lifetime. She'd killed, lied, cheated and stole from rich and poor alike. She had murdered innocents and brought the powerful low, she'd played a key part in burning beacon to the ground. Her sins were many, her redeeming qualities few, and her misdeeds more numerous than the stars in the sky. All for her savior, the one woman whom she loved more than anything in this world. The one person who took her off the streets and made something of her. Some might even call that woman a monster. Emerald knew better. Cinderfall wasn't a monster. She was complicated. Cinder had taken her off the streets. Cinder had saved her from an awful life. Cinder had given her power. To be fair, Emerald feared Cinder as much as she loved her. Cinder was powerful. Cinder had taken more lives than she could count. Cinder had schemes within schemes, within schemes that laid even the mighty Ospin low. Then came the defeats. Cinder, the woman whom she'd thought eternal, invincible, undang lost. Twice, first to Ruby Rose, then months later to Raven Branwen. She'd survived the first defeat, not so the second. Emerald remembered full well the pain and shock and horror she'd felt in that first moment when she'd learned her mentor had perished. Only then did she learn that there were bigger monsters in this world than Cinder. Raven was one such monster. Compared to Naruto she was a guppy. The man was a shark. Anyone capable of raising the dead was not someone to be trifled with. And yet the next morning, Emerald found herself approaching Naruto's tent once again. All around her she had the distant sounds of people making repairs. They were a hardy folk, she'd give them that. It was only to be expected of course, they couldn't leave things as they were. Not after that attack. It only made sense that they'd build their walls taller and stronger. Another incursion like that would break this place. If not for Naruto and his clones, it would have. Good lord, she couldn't count them all. They'd already repaired half the damage overnight. She suspected the wall would be yet higher by the time the day was done. And so, as she crept closer, she listened. You can revive the dead. Not you too Naruto's voice rose in dismay. I swear, no good deed goes unpunished. Emerald hesitated just outside the tent flap. That wasn't Cinder arguing with him. Was she not in Mercury might have dragged her off somewhere, but... Rayarg. A distant scream followed by an explosion drew a wince from the dark-skinned girl. Well, that answered her question. She was using the assassin to get back into fighting shape. Emboldened by their absence she peeked in and saw Hazel's towering form within, looming large over their host as he sat at a table. Naruto didn't even deign to look at him. He was too focused on his desk, hunched over a book of some sort. She strained her senses and caught the faint scratch of a quill against the paper. He was writing something in. But what he spoke again and she focused on the sound of his voice. I can. Naruto didn't look up from his desk. What of it? Is there any limit to that ability the giant asked in return? The faint rustling of paper followed. There is not. But there is a cost. I will pay it. Emerald hunkered down, unwilling to enter lest she be seen. Hazel might not be immune to her semblance, but Naruto certainly was. He'd see her if she tried to enter now. It was relatively common knowledge that Hazel had lost his sister before she could become a huntress. It was one of the reasons he loathed Ospin so and why he had joined Salem. Emerald didn't much understand the logic behind that, if his sister had died to Grimm, why join the one who commanded them hatred made for a sour bedfellow? Will you? Now a blue eye peeked over his shoulder and Emerald flinched back when it saw her. He smiled and paid her her no mind. Can you condemn an innocent to die for someone else? Hazel stepped back. Not an innocent. A criminal. A pause followed. How did you know I would ask? I know many things, Hazel Reinhardt. A keen eye gleamed at him. More than any man, woman or child. Don't act like that parasite. 
The giant's voice rose in a growl that made the very floor shake beneath their feet. You're not him. Am I not Naruto steepled his fingers and laid his head atop them? I don't send anyone to their deaths, that much holds true. Quite the opposite. I bring people back, so long as they're willing. He gestured grandly at something she couldn't see. Over and over again, until their soul chips away. Until nothing remains. And each time I lose a tiny piece of myself to the monster lurking inside my own. A small shudder shook his shoulders before he mastered himself. How many more times can to this before she consumes me a dozen less this is not something I do lightly. Cinder was an exception. Let the dead rest, Hazel. Broad shoulders stiffened in defiance. I cannot. She means too much to me. Yes, I can see that. Naruto granted him the ghost of a smile. Will you refuse me, then? Naruto didn't mutter something in a foreign language Emerald didn't understand. She recognized the tone all too well however, heard the bite of anger behind it. He wasn't happy. His irritation had a weight to it, though it wasn't focused upon her. Emerald flinched away from it all the same. She almost missed what followed within. Almost. Hazel knelt. If you do this, I would pledge my loyalty to you. Stop it. Naruto jolted upright. On your feet none of that nonsense. Hazel made no effort to rise and Emerald sucked in a sharp, soft breath of betrayal. Something said in the back of her head as the final piece of the puzzle slotted into place. A coop. This was a coop. She couldn't think of any other word for it. Hazel's loyalties were in question. Mercury's loyalties were in question. They weren't just being swayed, they were actively being turned. Naruto had already given the assassin back his semblance, and now he was actively working to subvert Hazel. Oh, he put up a front for the sake of it, but she could see that he'd all but agreed to meet the man's request. You're not going to budge on this, Naruto blew out an angry sigh. Are you? Hazel didn't move. I'll need something with her DNA on it. The whiskered warrior deflated, shoulders slumping in defeat. A hairbrush, clothing, anything will do umph. Hazel burst into motion with frightful speed. The sage was still shaking his head when giant arms wrapped around him and hoisted him from the floor. It was brief brotherly embrace, one that lasted all of a moment before the stoic giant released him. It left Emerald's mouth hanging open. Huh. Hazel was a hugger. Who knew? I've kept a few of her things at home. Was that a note of joy in his voice just now it was I will retrieve them. As you said, she's been dead for some time. Naruto croaked out a breath as he popped his spine back into place. It's not merely a matter of bringing her back. I'll need a sacrifice to tie her soul to this world. A living one at that. From there I can use my eye to reincarnate her body entirely. You did not need one for Cinder. No, I didn't. A rare note of anger flitted through the blonde's voice. When I found her, she was freshly dead. You lot weren't much better off when you crawled into my camp, if I recall. Hazel made a noise that sounded like an apology. That's better. Naruto hummed. And before you think it, don't touch my people. Snatch the scurviest piece of shit you can find. Raid a jail or a bar or something. So long as it's not an innocent. Emerald saw him make a shooing gesture with his off hand, effectively ending their conversation. I'm not your minder, but I will warn you. Your sister may not like the man you've become. A lone finger poked the man's broad. If you want her back so badly, you should be prepared to accept the consequences. I will live with them. How long will it take? Moments, came the immediate retort. How long will you be gone as your home far from here? Days. Hazel all but groaned the word back at him, his frustration palpable. Will you be here when I return? Naruto batted his concern away with a bitter laugh. I keep my promises. I'll be here. I need to head into town, but that's it. Then we have an accord. Emerald dared to peek back into the tent again, just in time to see Hazel extended a beefy arm. Naruto's palm was swallowed in it. They shook. That settled it. Hazel was compromised. Without a doubt. Emerald knew she should report this. She needed to report this. She didn't. Greed stayed her hand. If she thought of Cinder as a mother, then Naruto undoubtedly filled the role of a father for her. He fed her. Helped her. Praised her. Taught her new things. When she made a mistake he corrected it gently, not through force or harsh words, but simple kind instruction. She wanted to be loyal to Cinder, yet in the same vein, she wanted to cling on to Naruto's teachings. He'd taught her so much about her semblance, and his presence did wonders for Cinder's mood. Emerald didn't want to choose between them. She wanted both of them. Emerald was a thief, after all. She liked to be greedy. By the time Hazel emerged from the tent, she'd stepped well back. He passed her with a grunt. Where are you going? She asked him, already knowing the answer. On a journey. He lied. I'll return in a few days. Cinder won't like that. HRRM. Hazel actually smiled smiled at her in response. Something tells me she'll be too distracted to care. Emerald let him go and didn't challenge him further than that. She didn't dare. Hazel could crush her with one arm tied behind his back. If he weren't such a peaceful person so long as Osbin wasn't involved she would have been terrified of him. Part of her still was. Mercury had made his choice. Hazel had clearly made his. That just left her and Cinder and one painful question. What did she want? You can come in now, Emerald. Naruto's voice called to her from within the tent. I know you're out there. She scuffed a foot against the ground. No, I'm not. You just answered me. Get in here. She slipped into the hut. Naruto turned to meet her, book still in hand. Emerald jolted when she saw his face, saw that his long hair had been cut back into a familiar spiky mane. 
and that long drooping beard had been hacked away as well, leaving a faint stubble to frame his chin alongside the whiskers tripling his cheeks. It made him look decades younger, were it not for the crow's feet creeping at the corner of his mismatched eyes or the weight of eternity lurking within said orb she might have mistaken him for someone else. How much of that did you hear he asked? She should lie. Naruto was worse than Hazel. Naruto didn't need to touch her to kill her. If he considered her a threat, if he took it into his head to end her no one would be able to stop him. Mercury might even fight her if it came to that. She didn't even want to think about Hazel or Cinder. Cinder, who had become almost kind to her in the last few days. Yes, that's right. She was doing this for Cinder as much as herself. In the end, fear loosened Emerald's lips. All of it, naughty girl. He said his tongue in mild reproach, nothing more. Whatever am I going to do with you? Emerald dithered, hands into fists at her sides. He didn't look at her. Didn't need to. The weight of his regard was suffocating all the same. Like a towering wave looming over her head, ready to come crashing down at the slightest provocation. Perhaps that was just her imagination. She couldn't take it. All or nothing, then. If it had come this, whatever you're doing to Cinder keep doing it. Naruto didn't look up from his book. Why, whatever do you mean? Emerald turned scarlet. You know she smiles now hugs me treats me like. Like a daughter he turned the page without so much as batting an eyelash. Good, she should. Much to his amusement, the teenager slapped a palm to her forehead. By the gods, you can be such a dad. A peal of bemused laughter startled her and caused her hands to clamp down over her mouth. Too late. She couldn't take the words back. Bemused eyes rose as the wily doctor took his hand from the pages of his journal to favor her with a dry look. Emerald opened her mouth to refute him and it said shut thrice as fast. Huh. He'd fed her, clothed her, tended to her wounds, and listened to her words. Just now he could have killed her thrice over for eavesdropping and he hadn't. Didn't parents do that she'd already thought of him as such once or twice, but to actually say it aloud. Hug Naruto chuckled, not moving his arms an inch. Ugh, no Emerald shuddered. You're old. You're being a very bad daughter. N-A-R-U-T-O. In a fit of pique, the thief snatched up a book and lobbed it at his face. Naruto toppled backwards out of his chair and crashed to the floor with a peal of raucous laughter. Emerald snatched up another heavy tome, poised to pelt him with it if he embarrassed her any further. He should have been able to dodge that. He hadn't. He deliberately swayed just so she could hit him. How a delighted peal of joy greeted her as he lay sprawled on the floor. Is this what it's like to have children? I think I like it. Should I start giving you an allowance? Emerald discarded the book and pelted him with a pillow instead. He only laughed harder. It took her a moment to realize that she'd joined him. The realization brought with it a pang of dread. For all her talk of loyalty and following Cinder, she was compromised too, perhaps even more than the boys. By the brothers, she was doomed. When had she come and done only a few weeks ago, she knew where her loyalties lay. Now she couldn't choose between him and Cinder. She couldn't. She wanted them both. But she couldn't have them both. Sooner or later, she would have to choose. And oh gods, Salem. He must have seen her dread too, because the laughter stopped. Those mismatching eyes of rimmed violet and hooded cerulean narrowed upon her. You're hyperventilating. Was she a small, hysteric giggle burst out of her? Shut up, dad. This is all your fault. He rolled over, smile falling to the wayside. It is, isn't it for what it's worth, I'm sorry about that. Emerald rounded on him with a hiss. You don't sound sorry. You can't die. You're not the one at risk here. There's nothing wrong with being happy, you know. Naruto offered. I'd say you deserve that. You lot look like you've had hard lives. I'm not happy she keened. I'm terrified. Her mind arose slowly, arms raised to show he didn't mean her any harm. At first, Emerald feared he might try to attack her. No, not that. Anything but that. She'd break if he did something like that now. Shatter like so much glass. Her body went tense, ready to bolt the moment he tried to move. She thought herself prepared for any such trickery he might try. She was not. Naruto stepped into her and wrapped both arms around her back. I don't normally do hugs. He apologized over her shoulder. Then again, I'm not used to being a parent, either. Sorry if this is awkward. When he pulled her into his arms, something in Emerald fractured and she sniffled. Hiccuped, traitorous tears welled up in the corners of her eyes. She shouldn't be overwhelmed by such a simple action. Yet she was. Sad as it might sound, no one had ever hugged her before. Not like this. Even her brief and recent embraces with Cinder couldn't hold a candle to this. His arms were gentle around her, like a warm yet rough blanket enfolding all her being. She wrinkled her nose as the faint stubble of his beard tickled her cheek. Stupid papa. Emerald grit her teeth and stomped down on his foot. It felt like kicking a rock and her words lacked any spite. I hate you. Huh. She felt him tilt his head. This must be what teenage rebellion feels like. Wonder if I was this bad at your age. I can't choose. The words tumbled out of her all at once. If it's between you and Cinder I can't. Naruto frowned. Then don't. That tore it, the fractured dam of her heat broke. Emerald buried her head into his started bawling like a newborn, great heaving gasps rattling her frame. Her arms, once still as stone, flew up to latch onto his coat and hold tight to him. Naruto stiffened, then relaxed. One arm rose to ruffle her hair. Without thinking, Emerald leaned her head into it. There, there. The ancient shinobi soothed. You're gonna be alright little gem. Naruto rocked her back and forth gently. You're gonna be alright. H-R-R-N-G-H. That will be all, Mercury. A muffled groan greeted Cinder as the smoldering assassin toppled to the ground. She felt a traitorous fur of pity and stubbornly squashed it. Bah. 
He'd live, mostly. She hadn't burned too badly and she had the bruises to show for it. No one could take hits quite like Mercury and he'd served his purpose well. Gods, you are such a queen, thank you very much. Cinder preened. She was too pleased with herself to hurt him any more than she already had. Lay there and rest for a while, would you kindly? The absolute scoundrel scowled at her. I'm telling dad. Warm lips on hers, a soft sound of surprise. Cinder turned incandescent at the memory and lobbed a shard of superheated glass at the little shit. Mercury made himself scarce, leaving her to consider the latest scorch mark she'd left behind. This far from civilization, there hadn't been any real risk of setting fire to the forest. She'd been careful to control herself and extinguish any blazes before they got out of hand. Brett. She turned her head and spat on the ground, frowning only slightly as dark tresses tickled her nose from the motion. Her hair was growing out at an alarming rate, no surprise there. Nearly a month had passed since her defeat at Raven's hands. Perhaps she might keep it at this length. With her eye restored, her clothes mended, and her scars healed, she had nothing left to hide. Her grim arm twitched sullenly, causing her to clutch at it. Well, not much, Cinder admonished herself. Why hide her power only fools feared it. Did that make her a fool too for hiding away so long with a sullen huff? She turned and stormed back to the village. Sparring had proven illuminating for Cinder. Her strength hadn't yet returned to its prime, but her semblance still served her as it ever had. Better, even. Fire remained her ally and heat her friend. She took some pride in that at least. She could no longer use it to fly about, and it wasn't as mighty as it might have been without her maiden powers there to bolster it, but the fact remained. It was good to know she wasn't some helpless vixen without it. Perhaps her semblance had simply absorbed some of the fall maiden's essence. Yes, she rather liked that theory. She was nearly recovered now, were it not for her bad leg, she would. But what a tiny, traitorous thought nearly made her miss a step. She'd leave, put this place behind her and never look back. Wouldn't she? And what was wrong with that, she thought, hastening her stride. Nothing, nothing at all she'd always known this to be a temporary arrangement at best. She had a purpose, a destiny, one that did not involve whittling away her life in some backwater town off the map. There was nothing for her here, nothing but a tiny little kitten, a sad smile, and a man whom she'd come to realize was even more broken than her. Shut up she hissed at her weakness, handsing into fists. I don't need them or him. Part of her wanted to recruit Naruto to her side, though she knew it was impossible. He claimed to be stronger than Salem, something told her that wasn't an idle boast. You see, at the end of the day Cinder was a very selfish woman. She liked her creature comforts. Insufferable though Naruto might be at times, there was no denying that he had his uses. He had strength. Power. Rim couldn't touch him. She suspected it would take a concentrated effort to bring him down if such a thing were even possible. She'd even toyed with the idea of letting him restore her arm safe for the implications that might bring about. Salem wouldn't take him kindly to such a thing and might view it as a betrayal. No, perhaps it was best to let her grim limb be. It wasn't as if there were any risk to it. Salem would have warned her if there was, surely. A quiet purr claimed her attention and she nearly tripped over her own two feet before she ground herself to a halt. You again. Cinder didn't want to look down, if only because she knew what she would find there, rubbing against her legs. She did so anyway, full lips quirking into a dark scowl as she confirmed her suspicion. It was that damn kitten from last night. Blasted cat must have followed her again. She'd fed it once. Once now the damn thing seemed to think it owned her no one owned Cinder fall. The little beast mewing pitifully and pawing at her leg ate otherwise. I hate you. Cinder looked left. Cinder looked right. Cinder sighed. Good. No one to see her, then. Only a few men and women could be seen on the outskirts of the village, and even those seemed more occupied with making repairs to their homes and tending their crops than one wandering woman. Excellent. Cinder fall was many things, but she would never kick a kitten. So she scooped Sir Pounce into her arms and bolted in the direction of her hut, cursing her bad leg with every step. Oh, she could run just fine but the blasted thing hurt. Perhaps it was time she had a word with Naruto on that. She still felt weak, fatigued, as if something were actively sapping her strength. But what try as she might, Cinder couldn't understand it. She was in her prime, a bit out of practice perhaps, but still, Naruto hadn't done anything to her beyond restore her eye. Aha there you are a familiar voice cried. We were looking for you. You should probably slow down. She didn't expect to run headlong into the man himself. Say what you would about him, but Naruto was solid. Slamming into his was akin to running into a brick wall at mock speed. It hurt. Cinder bounced right off and skidded back half a pace before she caught herself on a torn wall. Even then her bad leg was less than reliable, forcing her to lay her weight on the other to compensate. You all right there a blonde brow quirked at her and she noticed he wasn't quite as scruffy as she remembered. Without that drooping beard and the long flowing hair she barely recognized him. He'd even shed the ratty robe in favor of dark leathers and a cloak that flowed from his shoulders. He looked at young, more alive than he had ever been, more a man in her age range than some decrepit old geezer squatting in the woods. Would you look at that? He cleaned up rather well when he wanted to. Not bad. Not bad at all. As he was now, she might not mind yet no bad cinder traitorous thoughts treacherous thoughts pleasant thoughts. I see you found Sir Pounce once again. Uh huh, and there went any. In all such thoughts of him, Cinder sputtered and released the kitten with a yelp. And I know the blasted thing found me I had no part in this. Indeed, Naruto's indulgent smile told her he'd led her right into a trap and summarily sprung it. 
Cats often do, don't they? Take care of it while we're away. Would you be petted it in passing before it trotted off around a corner? Em and I have some errands to run. Only then did Cinder notice her minion lurking behind him. No, she corrected herself. Not lurking. Almost shadowing. As if she were guarding him. It sent alarms shrieking in her head. You're going into town with her. Emerald seemed to shrink before her very eyes. Need some supplies? Naruto hummed. You're welcome to join us. I think Emerald would like that. Wouldn't you, Em? Could you, Cinder? She saw Emerald squirm slightly behind him, saw the pleased flush on the girl's face. Her scarlet eyes were redder than usual, red and puffy, as if she'd been crying. Emerald cried, bah. It must have been her imagination just now. She'd taught the girl better than that. Hadn't she? She was sure she had. No, she was more focused on the less than subtle challenge her doctor had just issued. If she refused it now, she would look weak. Was he suggesting she wasn't fit to travel that her injury should keep her her in confinement alone did he think she'd stay here cower in safety? Rage ignited, sparked by pride. Yes, her mouth twitched into a dangerous smile. That sounds grand. Naruto wanted to play that way, did he very well she'd show him. No one bested Cinder fall. Mr. Waste and Lightning, to say the least. It wasn't crowded, but it wasn't pleasant, either. Cinder loathed the press of bodies against her, loathed the hood she wore, loathed the bandages hiding her grim arm, loathed slinking through the alleys like some stray cat even more. Necessary evil, he'd said. Just a precaution, he'd sained. Why blonde bastard had been right and he'd been insufferable ever since. In hindsight, she knew her crimes in Haven hadn't gone unnoticed by the authorities. How could they? They'd allied with the White Fang, tried to blow up the Y Academy, and steal a relic for God's sake. Something like that couldn't be swept under the rug in a month. Not even by Leonardo assuming he was still alive. Something told her he wasn't. Had master or no, Salem wasn't the sort to tolerate failure on that level. And from what she'd been told, Lionheart had bungled things. Badly, very badly indeed. He'd all but fled the fight against Kuro and Ospin. That fool would be lucky to escape with his life. His reputation would be in tatters after this. What does that say about you? Then a small, nasty voice prodded her as she slunk along after Naruto. You're no better than that coward. Somehow, the wanted posters surprised Cinder. She was getting soft. She could still see them now, all of their faces staring back at her from a giant screen as a reporter continued to drone on about their horrific crimes. Herself, Emerald, Hazel, Mercury, there was a sizable bounty on each of their heads. Such a shame she couldn't turn herself in. Remarkably, Raven's face was there, too. Good. She'd gladly got that if she had the chance. She'd cost her everything. Ruby Rose was on her list to be sure, but the Branwen woman was right behind her. Naruto had come to the same conclusion. Thankfully it wasn't a violent one. You're both wanted. Cinder felt her face flush as he palmed his own. Of course you are. Why am I not surprised? You're not going to turn us in, are you? The question came from Emerald before the former maiden could muster a scathing retort. As if I would turn my darling daughter over to the authorities. Naruto clutched to this in feigned dismay. Why, who do you take me for? Daughter. Emerald made a pleased noise and swatted at his head. Best dad ever. Be what Cinder asked eloquently. Had she missed something they weren't like this before? Oh, this it's quite simple. Naruto declared with a finality only someone like him could possibly muster. Poor little M here, she just couldn't bear the thought of choosing between you and me. With one hand the blonde subtle tugged up his own hood, then reached around to do the same with Emerald's green one. So I decided to adopt her, too. Of course, she said I have to marry you. He slung an arm over her shoulder. Yes, that makes us one big happy family now. Anybody you want to invite for the wedding. We are not, nor will we ever be, a family. Cinder bit down on her rage and something else when it bubbled up to the surface and shook herself free. And I'm not marrying you release me. Ah, but think of the children Naruto cried. Yeah, mom, think of me. Emerald did a remarkable job of schooling her face into absolute stoicism when Cinder glowered at her. Anything else and she would have had words for her. Strong words. And fire. Lots of fire. Blast him. What had he done to her never mind. She knew. He'd gone and emboldened her. That was the only explanation for thy thank the gods Mercury wasn't here. He'd be a right scoundrel about this. Speaking of which, Naruto drawled suddenly, capturing her attention once more. Better do something about your faces for the time being. Hold still. He pushed a hand toward Emerald and the girl jolted as a faint plume of smoke subsumed her body whole. She emerged just as quickly, arms flailing. When it cleared, she was much changed, her hair now a vibrant shade of blonde and her skin pallor easily matched that of Naruto's. He'd even given her a faint on either cheek to match. Huh. The whiskered warrior whistled. Not a bad look for you, Em. What you think? Emerald saw the changes and jolted. What did you do? Relax, it's only an illusion. The sage patted her head. Try not to get hit. It won't hold up in a fight. Cinder recoiled when he tried to do the same to her. No. She slapped his hand away with a hiss. Don't you dare. You sure the blonde tilted his head as Emerald gazed over herself. You'd look good as a Yuzumaki. And you need to hide your face. I need no such ruses. She drew herself up as he regarded her. Look at the poster. The woman in them has one eye and short hair. No one will recognize me. It was a flimsy truth and they both knew it. All right. The blonde raised his hands in defeat. Have it your way, your majesty. She brushed past him with a coy smile. I will. He didn't look much bothered by it, but Emerald flashed her a look that was almost challenging. Oh how bold of her. She'd have to step up her game. 
not with force, but affection. Cinder scowled as she slipped through an alley after her ally, Emerald only half a step behind. And if the girl was pleased she pretended not to notice. She wasn't hiding she told herself, just biding her time and waiting for the opportunity to strike. She hadn't failed, either. No, not yet. She would gather information while they were here, track down Ruby Rose, and take her revenge. She would become a maiden again, she would wreak hell and havoc on all those who had laid her low and then she would would. You don't know, do you? The voice of her inner self came back again, needling her relentlessly. Fool, you've gotten soft. Where has your fire gone? What are we looking for remarkably? Emerald's words saved her from her own self-doubt. I, Naruto clarified with the F of his fingers, am here for medical supplies. Bandages, gauze, that sort of thing. I only come into the city once a month, and even then I usually send a clone. Why not this time Emerald quizzed? Because I have my family with me he shrugged carelessly. Cinder saw the opportunity for what it was and seized it, choking down her anger. She knew he'd said those words to rile her. She wouldn't let him. This was her chance. Not to escape she'd never make it but to enact her revenge. She had no idea where Team RWBY had gone. They could be halfway to Atlas by now for all she knew. Or even Vacuo. Nobody cared about Vacuo. It would have been the perfect place to hide. Didn't matter. She'd hunt that girl wherever she'd gone. But she knew Naruto wouldn't let her out of sight for a moment, and Emerald wouldn't either. I need a favor. The smatching orbs of blue and violet narrowed upon her. Cinder, send one of your clones if you don't trust me, then. She sniffed, turning her nose up at him. Surely you can do that much for family. Are we family? The blonde tilted his head. I believe you just said you didn't want anything to do with me. Cinder winced, realizing she'd been outmaneuvered. I didn't say that. Emerald the blonde brow rose. Exact words, please. The disguised girl studied her nails with intense scrutiny. We are not, nor will we ever be, a family. I believe she said that. Traitor. Damn him. Damn her. Damn them both. She couldn't tell if they were playing her or if they were actually upset with her earlier insinuation. Naruto was unreadable as ever, but Emeraldavan in her disguise, there could be no mistaking traitorous twitch of her lower lip. Oh blast, she had hurt the poor girl's feelings. Why did she care she shouldn't? A month ago she would have told the girl off for being such an uppity little thing. She would have to say it, then. She didn't want to say it. Damn, it, Wily, what's that Naruto placed a hand against his ear? Didn't quite catch that. I said where family cinder fall through her head back with a shriek, cowling fluttering away from her face as she howled the words to the heavens and sent passerby running for their lives. Happy now because I swear, if you make me say that again I'll gut you. Emerald couldn't hold the ruse anymore and toppled backward with a mad giggle. You're getting a spanking later, young lady. The thief only laughed harder. Now, now, Naruto soothed, what did you need? Information. Cinder glowered over his shoulder as Emerald writhed on the ground, legs kicking at the air. I want to know. You're looking for the one who took you powers. The blonde cut in as her visible eye widened. Fair enough. I know a gal who can get you that information for a price. I'll ask for your silveried maiden. Just like that Cinder balked. How did you know about Ruby? Just like that. Naruto favored her with a small, sad smile, all traces of his earlier mirth vanishing as she looked on in quiet confusion. Unbidden, she realized the street had grown dark and quiet around them, passerby giving what they no doubt viewed as crazed individuals a wide, wide berth. She ignored them, focusing instead on the smiling shinobi before her. Something in her black, black heart lurched again at the sight of that expression and Cinder stamped it into sullen submission. Naruto knew something. Something he wasn't telling her. But what? These peaceful days won't last much longer, Cinder. His words struck a chord and she winced. Might as well make them memorable. Wait, what do you mean? Rather than answer, he fed a pouch of gold to a freshly summoned clone, one the doppelganger caught nimbly. Go, find little Miss Malachite. He instructed sternly. Tell her I need a favor. Cinder scoffed to hide her guilt. Perhaps you're not so useless after all. A faint shattering of glass was her only warning. Down, Naruto's shout came a heartbeat too late, for though Cinder ducked, Emerald jerked upright and rounded on the sound, semblance flaring. Said semblance did nothing to prevent the brick from sailing into her face with a vicious crack. Aura sparked furiously and she went down with a yelp, eyes spinning in her head. Thus did the carefully crafted illusion sputter and die around Emerald's groaning body. Someone screamed and bystanders fled like doves before nevermore. Naruto swore and dove after the thief's prone form, leaving Cinder to contend with the threat alone as an approaching silhouette emerged from an adjacent alley. She wasn't sure if she, she should be proud or offended by his absence, but she stepped toward it all the same. She needed to kill something to rid herself of this guilt. Now, I don't know who you are, but you've got some nerving picking a fight with. A parasol tilted back, exposing a frightfully familiar face lurking beneath it. She knew that pink-brown hair anywhere, more so the visage it framed. Stiletto heels said harshly against the cobblestones as she strode forth to meet her before pausing well out of reach. The three of us. She trailed off. Confusion dawned, followed shortly thereafter by realization as she beheld the black bowler hat the girl wore, that pointed look of condemnation upon that once impish face. She'd only seen her a handful of times before, but it was enough to cement the memory in her mind. She knew this girl. More aptly, this girl knew her. Neo, Roman Torchwick was undoubtedly dead, and so his little floozy had come seeking revenge. Not that she cared. 
The man had been a pawn to her, a means to an end, nothing more. If by some miracle he'd managed to survive the chaos of Beacon, Cinder would have killed him herself, if only to ensure his silence. Left alone, he would have been a loose end. But it didn't change the fact that she hadn't killed him. That was all Little Red. Neo didn't know that. Neo likely didn't care. Neo was looking for someone to hurt. And Cinder Cinder was a prime target for Neo to vent her fury upon. What had Roman called that umbrella of hers hush Cinder would be hushed if she lowered her guard here. Midnight's twin blades fed out at her sides, coiled and ready to strike. I don't have time for your misplaced guilt, girl. She warned. I didn't kill your boss. Take that up with Ruby. She thought to calm her down with those words, distract her, channel her rage elsewhere while Naruto tended to Emerald in the background. They had the opposite effect. The girl made a sharp gesture across her throat that couldn't possibly be mistaken for anything less than why murder. She didn't bow. She didn't smile. Her eyes shone with furious, unshed tears. Then she flew at her. Cinder met her in a whirl of blades and immediately regretted said decision, because Neo all but turned into a whirling dervish of pink and white beneath her. She fought, but she didn't stand her ground. She fled, but she didn't run away. Hush came perilously close to slitting her throat within the first seven exchanges while she wasn't able to do anything more than score a thin graze on the girl's cheek. Neo no such luck. Every mistimed attack was an opening for her, every mistake a lethal opportunity to get in close and hammer on her. Stop Cinder retreated, rubbing the nape of her neck. Too close, I didn't kill Roman. She may as well have spoken to the wind. Neo's stern visage descended on her with a soundless hiss. No, she fought back, but her leg betrayed her, hampered her movements. Not like this. She refused to die here. She refused she. A large fist closed around the blade and wrenched its owner up and away. Mismatching eyes met mismatching eyes. There you are. Now let's calm down and talk like Karg. The little Terra reared back and kicked him dead in the face with her heels to why his nose. Then she tried to cut open his groin. Naruto spun stepped in and caught the blade on his forearm this time, uncaring of the rent it left in his light armor as he stepped forward to meet her. In the same movement he rammed a clenched fist into Neo's stomach and battered her solar plexus. It was a vicious hit by itself, a debilitating blow created for an ugly purpose. Breaking ribs and everything within, Neo shattered like glass and vanished. Cinder swore. Tricky little. Move he shoved her aside as a sword eviscerated the space she'd just occupied. She's after you, not me. And so she tumbled away as the angry pair engaged in a vicious waltz that would have made Tyree and Kalos weep with envy, bodies bending and twisting at impossible angles to strike at one another with heels and palms and fists alike. There was a graceful beauty to their brawl, a raging cyclone set free yet restrained here in the alley. They fought with visceral tenacity, never pausing for a moment, constantly moving, ever seeking to slay the other. Naruto made use of his longer reach where he could but Neo's deceptively small form made for a slippery opponent and she was in rare form today. Time and time again she wriggled out of his grasp, shattering or dodging back into the fogs whenever Naruto's onslaught proved too pressing. Cinder could see it in her eyes, she knew what she was doing. She couldn't afford to take a single hit, while whatever meager damage Hush inflicted on Naruto was summarily shrugged off. He could have rendered the street glass with his strength, yet he reined himself in. When an angry white heel slammed toward his face he batted it aside, caught her up and flung her into a wall. She bounded right back at him, blade drawn. No, no one fought for her. Cinder stepped in and settled the matter with a wave of napalm that caught the angry girl in mid-leap. Aura crackled and the colorfully clad girl slammed her singed parasol against a wall. Naruto furred her the merest of glances and went right. With a long-suffering sigh, the former maiden surged to the left. Neo tried to track the both and ended up crossed for it. Her mouth set itself in a snarl once more as she danced backwards again, this time away from them both. Faced with a double-pronged assault, the smaller girl went berserk, flinging herself at the two of them with a wordless intake of air. Either unable or unwilling to retreat, she fought on. Neo knew Naruto was stronger than her, knew he could capitalize on the smallest opening to capture or kill her. So she didn't give him one. She targeted Cinder instead actively going for her weak side, seeking what she thought was the weakest link in the chain. She wasn't wrong and it called Cinder, burned her down to her very bones. Time and time again she tried to go for her and that forced Naruto to stop her, take hits he otherwise shouldn't have. She gave as good as she got, but the outcome was never in doubt. Enough of this. Cinder pulled on her semblance hard and pulsed, slapping the girl in the face with a wave of molten glass. She thrust just a touch too high in trying to deflect them and Naruto caught Hush by the handle. Cinder swept in after him with a triumphant roar and disarmed her. Literally, Neo tumbled backwards with a shocked gasp that both actually heard and landed right on her rear. She stumbled quickly, mismatching eyes wide and furring as she gaped at the severed stump of her right hand. She began to twitch. Naruto doved her before she could think to bold and tackled her to the ground. She went wild in his grasp, kicking and snarling soundlessly until finally five fingers scythed into her side and she dropped. Naruto plucked her up with an irritated growl. All right, you little hellspawn. Talk. Neo pantomimed with her remaining hand. She can't. Cinder informed him. Naruto only sighed. Lovely. Was this what it felt like to live? No one to answer to, no one to fear, no one to worry for. Just the simple pleasure of being alive. Cinder found these halcyon days almost pleasant. 
They soon bled into a weak and try as she might rail against it and their new guest she found a small part of herself grudgingly accepting the new order of things. With no recourse left to her but to wait for news from the city, she found new ways to preoccupy herself. There were no plans here, no plots, no schemes of world domination, and certainly no thoughts of betrayal. Her position was secure well, as secure as it could be given the way fate had actively screwed her over recently. And so, in the absence of any such schemes, Cinder began to train. Time passed like so much wind and still Cinder's strength proved slow to return, like a jilted lover it steadfastly avoided her grasp and refused to come crawling back to her no matter what she did. Oh, her semblance was still very much hers to command and fire remained her ally in all things, but her might was a shadow of what it had once been, what it always would be. No matter how hard she trained in the morning, no matter how she focused her rage and threw herself forward, her body simply refused to keep up with her mind. Though she'd lost her limp, she still felt dazed, weak, disconnected from herself. It was galling. If there was a cause for this, a reason, she couldn't find it. Each day she would wake and bathe in a nearby stream, dress, eat, then throw herself headlong into physical exertion until she could no longer move. It didn't matter what or where, so long as she was in motion. Be it running or exerting her semblance, pitting herself against mercury or emeralds, or even that little hellion neo, anything that to bring her body back to its prime. From there she would inevitably exhaust herself and blunder into Naruto or one of his clones who would in turn heal her, leaving her to run herself ragged all over again. Perhaps she'd skipped a few steps here and there. Perhaps this was cheating. Semantics. Didn't matter. In this way, she sought to restore her former strength, no, to exceed it. She'd become overly reliant on the maiden's power, that much was painfully obvious to her now. Her fight against Neo had been stiff, sloppy. She'd forgotten her skill and without it, her movements were sluggish, slow. If not for Naruto, she would have died in that back alley. And now that little Minx was following him around like a lost puppy. Thus was Cinder left fight and train, all the while waiting for new that never came. Where was the girl where was Ruby Rose where? Rorg. A sudden fit of pique lent Cinder's next swing strength. Rather than carve another slice into the tree before her, her blade cut straight through it. Even in her fevered state the former fall maiden still had the good grace to wince as the mighty oak toppled backward into the forest with an almighty crash. Blast it. She scowled at the scorched stump and sheathed her twin swords with a hiss, knowing she had lost control again. She was better than this. Where had her poise gone she was meant to instill fear and anger in the hearts of others, not suck to these base emotions herself. Not bad. A slow, steady clap resounded behind her in the fading evening light, echoing into the void she'd left behind. Keep this up and we'll have more than enough firewood for the winter. Cinder absolutely twitched. It was just a clone. She mustn't kill him. Slicing his head off would serve no purpose. She still turned to face him. Your wit is lacking as ever, I see. The sage sketched a bow. Still made you smile, though. A small smile had touched her mouth. Bastard. Today she was chuffed to find that he'd changed his outfit for once, shedding his tattered robes and leather armor in favor of more casual wear. Little more than dark boots alongside a worn pair of blue jeans and a red shirt over which he'd thrown a black blazer etched with orange flames. He'd even gone so far as to slap an eye patch over his Rinnegan eye. It almost made him look human if you ignored the latticework of scars that crisscrossed his arms and face. A mere plebeian might have fallen for the act. Cinder wasn't fooled. No matter how Naruto might play at normality or wish to be he could never be one. He was something more. It was still there in the way he held himself, poised to spring at the slightest provocations. Even his clones held the same body language. He was a warrior, a lion among sheep. They were the same in the regard, and she took pride in it. See something you like a blonde brow arched as he caught her staring. Cinder met his gaze levelly and crossed both arms beneath her bosom. That remains to be seen. If anything, he seemed to enjoy her cutting witticism, at least the easy grin he granted her seemed to say as much. Did you have something for me she changed the subject instead, knowing he wasn't going to elaborate. He always seemed content let her get the last word in. Why was that pity perhaps something else even after all this time she still didn't wholly understand him. I do. He beamed. Catch. He lobbed a red apple at her and in her hunger Cinder reached without thinking. Until her grim arm spasmed. She caught the twitch immediately and snatched the apple with her true arm instead, but the moment was past and Naruto noticed. Does it still hurt came the question. Your arm, I mean. Cinder sank her teeth into the apple and refused to answer. Even now her arm continued to itch. It had begun slowly at first, little more than a stray spasm that started one morning. Not a normal itch, but rather a tingling sensation that seemed to come and go at odd intervals. Now it felt like spiders crawling in her veins, as though the limb were actively trying to get away from Naruto. Perhaps her false arm sensed what he was and feared him. Perhaps it missed her old power. Perhaps it was simply Salem's way of expressing her displeasure with Cinder from afar. Perhaps her body was simply rejecting it given her mood. Who could say Cinder didn't know and it was this lack of knowledge that terrified her more than anything else. Cinder. What would you have me say she swallowed harshly and glowered at him when he didn't relent. Yes, I'm experiencing some discomfort. There. She flung up her free arm and hurled the half-eaten apple back his way with a vicious twist of her wrist, one he easily dodged. Happy now it's none of your concern. No, Naruto stepped to her, even as she stood her ground. I think it is. Why are you keeping quiet about this I don't like seeing you in pain. When he reached for her hand and she batted it away. 
I said it's none of your concern. She wouldn't have his pity, didn't need it, didn't want it. Pity was poison. Pity was weakness. She'd sworn never to be weak again, no matter how she might feel, no matter what this fool did. Power was her only goal, and with power came the right to rule. Once she had that power back, she'd never be weak again, never lower her guard for anyone else. So what if her arm was being rebellious she was strong? It would not steal her power, and she would master it once again as she had before. There was nothing to be concerned about her so she told herself. You think you want power, Cinder? As if sensing that very thought, Naruto turned away from her. You don't. Power is a curse. You don't use it, it uses you. His eyes traveled the length of her trembling arm. I know my destiny. Is it your destiny? Naruto spun back and rammed a clenched hand against the ruined tree behind her, forcing a flinch from the former maiden as the bark splintered beneath his fist. Or is it some destiny Salem forced on you clone or no? His gaze still bored into her like a dust-powered drill. That arm is killing you even I can see it. Killing her no. Nonsense. She'd felt weak over the last few days, but surely that wasn't the cause. Salem wouldn't give her something what would kill her, surely. Unless it had been feeding on her maiden power. Power that was now lost to her, leaving on Lino she refused to believe it. Her chin jutted out in defiance. It's mine. This power belongs to me. You don't need it. Sparks skittered in her palms. Watch your words. I'm begging you. Cinder Naruto took her by the shoulders, heedless of her burning golden orbs as they seared into him. It's time for you to look inward and begin asking yourself the big questions. Who are you? Amber eyes met blazing cerulean as he shook her. And what do you want answer me? Is it power you have your own skills and semblance I've seen you fight? You're not weak. He pinched her chin and forced her eyes to meet his when she tried to turn away. Is it comfort? Then you have that. So what is it then? What do you want? Her hands had helplessly at her sides. I did you come here to just to harass me. For a moment she thought he'd fight her, but no, Naruto surprised her by holding back. No, he relented at last. That's not why I came here. I know where your little fall maiden is, my contact finally got back to me. Where she is words coursed through her like a searing flood as she jolted upright, but he held her back. Cinder allowed it, uncaring of his scowl. At last vengeance would be hers when do we strike. Now it was Naruto's turn to hold his tongue and the silence between them grew sullen and heavy like a wet blanket. There was in quiet anger in his gaze now, one that hadn't been there before. Belatedly Cinder realized the mistake she'd made, the peril in which she'd placed herself. He was well and truly furious with her as he had every right to be and could just as easily withhold the information he'd received. If he did that, she'd be right back where she started or worse, he could lie to her and send her on a wild goose chase across the kingdoms. While she demanded, in her fists once more tell me, what are you going to do with this information he tilted his head, the falling shadows draping over his right eye. A cold core of dread settled in her gut. Miss Malachite was quite curious, but she's something of an old friend. Naruto continued, ignoring her sullen look. And she told me a great many things. This girl you're looking for is little more than that. When he hung his head Cinder wanted to hang him herself. Her name is Ruby Rose. She's just a girl. And Yao you're going to kill her, aren't you? She stole what was rightfully mine. Did she his brow arched higher still at her rage? Did she actively play a part in killing you and taking your power? No, she hadn't. She'd left her scarred and wounded at Beacon, but she hadn't deliberately snatched the might of the Fall Maiden from her. Chance and her final thoughts at the time had sent the power to the girl. That didn't diminish her dislike of her. Not in the least. She was a danger, one that Cinder couldn't possibly bring herself to abide. For better or worse, Ruby Rose still had to die, if not for her silver eyes, then for the power she now commanded. There could be no avoiding this. She has to die. Cinder said as much. There's no other way. Yes, there is. Naruto retorted, butting his head against hers. You just don't know it. Then by all means, elucidate. She challenged in kind, slamming her head right back into his own. Tell me. Naruto growled, but didn't back down, even as Cinder pushed human hand threateningly against his. At such close proximity his scent wafted over her, bringing with it the faint aroma of charcoal and sweat. It was a strangely heady scent, one that caused something to burrow up in her heart. No bad girl focus if she could charm him into telling her, all the better. If not, then she lost nothing. What was the saying nothing ventured, nothing gained such was the lie she whispered to herself. Tomorrow, he said instead, jolting her in place as he stepped back. I'll give you your answers and we'll deal with this tomorrow. On one condition. His eyes strayed to her grim arm. Cinder clutched it behind her back. No, absolutely not. I refuse. Then you don't need my intel. Maruto bit back. By now the sun had long since begun its descent, there was yet light enough to see, but in another hour that would no longer the be case. Cinder didn't much like the idea of stumbling back to the village in the dark, not with so many grim about. Blast him. He was making this impossible. Damn you. Don't be so dramatic. Twin fingers fed her forehead, eliciting an angry hiss from the master schemer and she swiped at him to no avail as he darted away. I'll gladly give you back your left arm for it. Just let me get rid of that thing. Please. You don't know what it's doing to you. There was a strange earnestness to his words just then that Cinder didn't quite understand, almost as if he were begging her. Why did he want her grim arm gone so badly there was something here that she'd failed to see, but what perhaps it weakened her? Perhaps not. 
What was she missing here? Did it allow Salem to track her or was there some more sinister purpose at work? Did she truly need her grim arm and afforded her the means to surprise her opponent to be sure? But at what cost if it was killing her, draining her very life force? Her arm twitched again and she felt another surge of weakness. Very well. She offered Naruto her twitching limb with a growl. Be quick about it. Of course, his visible eye seemed to burn with blue flame for a moment. Nothing simpler. Compared to the hell she'd gone through regaining her eye, this process was a quick and ugly thing. He gripped her grim arm by the wrist and muttered something in a foreign language she didn't understand. With an angry hiss, the Inkai blackness dissolved under his touch, leaving the ruined stump of her left arm behind. When he stepped forward and gripped that, Cinder knew to brace herself. She told herself it wouldn't hurt, that it would be painless compared to the hell she'd already suffered through. She was wrong. Naruto's hand pulsed green and a full-throated yelp tore out of Cinder's throat as in bone and sinew erupted in ghastly fashion from the ragged stump of her left arm. Her stomach protested violently at the sight and she turned her gaze away just as healthy flesh flowed over her muscle like milk. It was quick, he'd been honest in that much, but he'd neglected to mention the bone-jarring agony that would follow. When he released her arm she toppled backwards to the forest floor, retching violently. She lay there for a few moments, whimpering in pain as she curled into a gasping for breath. Naruto as clone pretended not to see. Cinder willed herself to gaze at her restored arm, forced her trembling fingers into a fist. It was hers, perhaps a bit paler than she would have liked, but some imperfection was to be expected. A glowing green hand alighted on her shoulder, bringing with it a sudden rush of vitality and numbing relief. She sighed almost pleasantly and leaned into it. You feel better, don't you? Naruto hummed somewhere above her as he retracted his palm. I knew you would. Without that parasite gnawing on your life force, you'll be pleasantly surprised by what you can achieve. Though it galled Cinder to admit it, he'd spoken true on that front. In the absence of her false arm, with her stamina now restored, she did feel stronger. Stronger than she'd been before Beacon, certainly. The thought sent a tingle of anticipation through her. If she was this strong now after training, how much stronger would she be when she recovered the other half of herself? Why the weight she gasped out at last? The sun's nearly set. Now would be the perfect time to strike. Because if I tell you now, you're going to run off and try to kill her the moment I fall asleep. He muttered aside, drawing her attention. From what I've been told you'll be running right into a trap. You may have come leaps and bounds above what you once were but, well, a hand rose, idly palming her face and for a moment, just a moment, she leaned into it. I wanted the four of you to be further along than this. For she frowned. Neo, he put in pointedly, helping her stand. Oh, you mean the mute. Her lips pursed into a thin line of displeasure. I was under the impression we were going to kill her. Cinder, I trust you have a use for her, then she challenged. Something like that. He opened his mouth to say more, but a harsh crack in the distance caught his attention. It sounded eerily like gunfire. Oh, a slow blink followed as he craned his neck toward the noise. That was sooner than I expected. There early. That dread she'd felt before it was back now, slithering through her stomach like a snake. What? Listen to me, Cinder. Naruto grabbed her by the arm, eliciting a wince. There's a point where your life begins to tip. There's a point where it breaks, he prodded her shoulder when she swatted at him. There's a point where it bends, now her collarbone, and finally, a point where you just can't take any more. She ducked when he tried to poke her forehead and his slim shoulders rose in a helpless shrug. We've finally reached the ladder, I think. I've done the best I can to prepare you for what's to come, but from here on out, this isn't my story anymore. It's yours. Go back to the village. Quickly now. I'll be right behind you. Damn it. Wait, she snatched at him to no avail, he yielded through her grasp. I don't understand what are you on about. Oh, and keep an eye on the original. The clone went on, he's fond of you, I think. Lucky guy. I almost envy him. I swear by the brother gods if you don't tell me what this is about I will end you. The smile he favored seemed almost sad, somehow. Sorry, we're out of time. With a rush of movement, the clone threw itself into the woods she could ask what he'd meant by that. Toward the noise, concerned and suddenly fearful, the former maiden reluctantly marched off in the opposite direction. Just know it felt like he was saying goodbye. Odd, she'd see the original soon enough. It didn't change the face that fallen into a rut that she just couldn't seem to escape. Tomorrow may well free of it, wouldn't it? How the mighty had fallen. Salem must have realized her failure by now, but still, she'd made no moves against her and she dare no return without the power of the Fall Maiden. She might be able to hide the truth from Watts or Tyrion, but Salem would know. She always knew. And while her mistress might brook failure on occasion, but to lose so spectacularly never. No doubt she was even now scouring Mistral to find her. Would she be replaced with someone younger someone more easily molded had it already happened who knew? Ducking under a low-hanging branch, she found herself forced to summon a small flame to her hand just to see as she stalked into the night. Her semblance should have provided her some small comfort, instead it made the shadows writhe and twist, more monstrous than her own thoughts. Mercury and Emerald had already gone native, while Hazel was yet to return from his journey. Wherever he'd gone, no one spoke of it, but the silent message remained. His loyalty to Salem was clearly compromised now more than ever. It should have relieved Cinder, knowing that there was another turncoat in whom she might trust. It did not, not when her own loyalties lay in question. Salem wouldn't tolerate their absence for much longer. She would send someone or worse, she would come herself. 
When that time came, Ish would have to make a choice. Did she throw her lot in with Naruto, a man capable of reviving the dead, one held the world's end at bay with his body alone? Or did she reaffirm her allegiance to Salem that woman was a terror in her own right? She held all the grim in her sway. She was immortal, eternal, a living goddess in all but name. Regardless of her choice, she would have to make one. Soon, she couldn't stay here forever. Could she? Would it be so bad a small, traitorous voice whispered in her ear as she walked? You could have a life here. Just the thought of it made Cinder hasten her pace that much more. Yes, whatever her cohorts thought of Naruto, she was different. She was not some blushing ex-maiden to be tamed. She was Cinder false. She was fierce. She was death. She was. A soft purr at her heel said otherwise. Oh, blast it. She swore softly. Where did you come from? Somehow that damn kitten had found her once again and belatedly Cinder realized she'd reached the village proper. By now the sun had all but set, leaving only a few furring torches on the walls within. Still the damn cat continued to nuzzle her leg, thereby forcing her to extinguish the flame in her hand pick it up as she made her way through the gates. The guards there gave her a knowing look until she glared them into submission, the insolent fools. She wasn't being weak, she told herself. This creature brought her comfort. She was simply cultivating a resource. An asset. Yes, that was it. Certainly. She had no ulterior motives. Nope. None at all. It had her cheek and something deep inside of Cinder absolutely squealed. Nope. No ulterior motives. She would butcher anyone who dared say otherwise. In the end, she was almost relieved to find the spectacle taking place within what passed for the town square. At first her paranoia deemed it an attack, were it not for the crowd that had gathered to watch. Sure enough she spied Emerald's distinctive hair mingled with that of Naruto and Neo's. A flash of silver locks in the faint lighting heralded Mercury's presence as well right before a boot cracked into him and sent him sprawling down into the dirt. No, no, no a familiar voice beat. You're doing it all wrong control my central line faster destroy my focus. Cinder paused, idly stroking the kitten in her arms as she watched this beautiful disaster unfold. She watched them fight from afar with a keen eye. No, this couldn't be called a fight. Not truly, more a brawl than anything else. There was no choreography on their part, no strategy, nothing. They didn't work together and as such, Naruto picked the three apart time and time again with ease. He fought like an absolute maniac on a drug trip of epic proportions, bending and twisting at impossible angles to catch blades and boots alike before flinging them back in their faces. Her mind howled at the absurdity of it all. Neo she couldn't care less for, but Emerald and Mercury were sloppy. Or perhaps Naruto merely made them seem so. Of the unlikely trio, only Neo managed to land the occasional blow, and even then she was easily dismantled. Naruto didn't so much move among her minions as he did dance, a seamless blur of black and gold that harassed them to no end. Read the nearest saffron light he caught Mercury's right leg when he tried to kick his shin and bodily levered the younger man into emerald. In the same moment he caught Neo's thin blade, clubbed her head with the blunt end, and used its momentum to launch her into the air. Mercury saw his opportunity and bounded upright in a whirl of silver and gray, but his rising roundhouse kick only met a plume of white smoke and slugged his partner instead. Watch it emerald pushed at him. You watch yourself Mercury pushed right back. Now, now, Naruto chided. I told you to come at me with the intent to kill. Neo crashed down on his head like a vengeful missile, only to find her blade inextricably snared in a log. An appreciative whistle granted her. Cinder saw Naruto erupt from her shadow and chose not to warn her. The girl's polexed expression and the soft gasp that followed was sweet, sweet retribution for her. See just like that. He hummed, kicking her away. Neo's got the right of it. Mercury lunged again, with Emerald a heartbeat behind. Naruto claimed to be many things, but first and foremost, he was a shinobi. He could have killed the assassin in that moment. Indeed, Cinder saw his eyes pulse for an instant as he considered it. Instead he drove the heel of his palm against the boy's neck and sent him stumbling into Emerald once more. Neo tried to cut out at his exposed arm and earned a sweep to her legs that slammed her right into Mercury's back. The resultant squawk that followed was strangely satisfying. Was this what it felt like to have pride in someone else such a shame, then, that it was overshadowed by all this unyielding rage? You need to trust one another. He reprimanded them with a shake of the head. Back in my day, this would have gotten you lock killed and... His eyes caught cinders from within the crowd and widened. We'll call it there for the day. He raised his voice to be heard by all present parties. All right, you lot you've had your fun, but the show's over off with you shoe tan hands fed outward in a shooing gesture. And the crown reluctantly began to disperse back from whence they'd came. Not nearly fast enough for cinders liking, but she decided to choose her battle widely and glided to her side. They could all go and get themselves right and properly soused in the bar for all they cared. With that thought her earlier anxiety began to bleed away, replaced by mild annoyance as Mercury climbed to his feet. What was that disaster her voice lacked the bite it always held with a kitten in her arms. You barely put up a fight. Emerald made noise that might have been a scoff. Sorry, Cinder. Perhaps you'd fare better with him. Was that snark? Just now she was almost proud. Almost? What was that? No, Mom. Nothing, Mom. Neo howled with silent laughter. Yeah, boss, he's got a mean kick for an old man. Mercury grinned, massaging his jaw. Oh damn it, I think you knocked a tooth loose. Then spit it out. The blonde granted him a bleak laugh as he helped a bashful emerald rise. Neo snapped up a finger when he didn't give her the same treatment. 
Keep acting like that and I won't bring your boss back. When the injured little minx flounced back onto the ground with a wordless sigh and signed at him anew, his expression darkened. No, you can't go out and kidnap some random mook. Either a bad guy or no one at all. Neo gestured again, her hand movements going considerably more crude with each pass. No, not one of those. Cinder began to wonder when he'd started to adopt all these misfits. She didn't think it would stop anytime soon. Not why likely. A crimson portal opened on Naruto's exposed flank and her world ground to a halt. And Naruto turned, annoyance flashing across his whiskered visage. The kitten wriggled out of Cinder's arms with a hiss. She recognized the portal at once of course, after all, she'd stepped through one such gateway back in Haven. There was only one woman in the world capable of creating those. Raven. Naruto had made mention of her ages ago, so long now that she'd nearly forgotten. Supposedly she visited him for for supplies on occasion. Just the thought of her set Cinder's pulse alight with anger, bringing with it the stinging memory of her defeat. She would kill her, murder her, tear the very flesh from her bones we had and she emerged. As if waiting for that very moment, the spring maiden emerged, sword in hand. Wait, that wasn't her sword. Cinder had seen the woman's blade before in the heat of battle, and this was most assuredly not omen. That weapon in her palm looked older, stranger, stronger. A long weapon with a curved guard, there was an eerie presence about that ancient tool that all but seemed to scratch and claw at the air like a living thing, wild and angry. It seemed to both call to her and rebuke her in the same moment. No, she shook her head. Absurd. A weapon couldn't be alive. That couldn't possibly be what she thought it was. It just couldn't. Hey, Raven. Naruto smiled amicably, but there was an edge to his grin that hadn't been there before as he reached up to remove his eye patch. He saw Raven's new sword and suspected something, because the portal had yet to close. Cinder saw it too and a pit of black dread opened in her stomach. What brings you here at this hour I'm afraid we're a bit low on rum. I'm sorry. Two words. Two simple words damned them. The smatching eyes widened. No, Cinder wasn't prepared for who emerged after Raven. In hindsight, she should have been. Perhaps she'd gone soft. Perhaps she simply hadn't expected this. Who could say as such, when Arthur Watts and Tyrion Callow stepped out of that gaping red portal and back into reality, she could be forgiven for freezing up. Mercury swore softly and Emerald jerked backwards. Neo merely tilted her head in quiet contemplation and shifted her dirty parasol over her right shoulder. Well, well, well. Watts drawled, pausing to brush a bit of dust from his coat. So this is where you were hiding. You made it quite the hassle to find you. Naruto glared wide red daggers at Raven. I knew you were a coward, but this do you have any idea what you've done? The bandit pointedly refused to look at him. Don't be too hurt on the girl. Arthur crooned. She simply saw the benefits of allying herself with us. Is it not better to serve than to die? Quite so Tyrene cried. Our goddess is a most benevolent ruler and forgiving, too. In that singular moment Cinder understood what the clone had said earlier, where it had gone, as well as the sacrifice it must have made, left to run interference and allow her the chance to slip back into the village. It must have sensed them coming and worked to delay them. It had never meant to win at all, not that it could given how little energy it had. Its purpose had been to stall, little more, and it had accomplished that task at least. Somehow, such an ignoble end only angered her. Such a merry band of misfits and what's this oh oh still the madman continued to giggle, dancing from one foot to the other like a mad jester. Oh, my has our dear cinder been tamed he clasped both hands before his like a child clutching at a new toy. I never thought I'd see the day. Quite so, Watts didn't smile, but his mustache twitched at the sight of her restored appearance. Domesticated. How quaint. Domesticated cinder practically spat fire at them. You dare I'll burn you both alive. Tyrion cackled. Without the power of the fall maiden unlikely, dear Cinder. His words struck her like a slap in the face, more powerful than any poison, so too did his retort silence her immediately. They knew. Which meant Salem knew. Dead. They were all dead. There was no way out of this for her now. No. Wait. She told a lie. There was a way out of this. She wasn't going to like it. She knows. Oh, yes by the god she wanted to throttle this twit our queen has known for quite some time now. Poor Ruby Rose, hiding in Haven. Such a foolish girl. Such a simple soul to be snuffed out. Narad absolute hist. Not if I have anything to say about it. My dear fellow, you have absolutely no say in the matter. Whereas Hazel Watts inquired suddenly. The way. Naruto pointedly folded both arms before his. I don't know when he'll return. He's dead, then. Naturally, he made the wrong assumption. Nope. I see. Very well, then. I have been authorized to offer you this one's chance. Grimacing, Watts forced himself to stand at attention, folding both arms behind his back in a manner he no doubt thought to be imposing. It was not. Salem commands the three of you to return to the Gremlins with us at once. And as for you, his gaze drifted to Naruto, considering the blonde for a long, pointed moment. I don't know who you are, but her grace has expressed an interest in your talents as well I don't suppose you'd be willing to come quietly. Oh, that's just precious. Cinder knew his answer before she could defend him. Serve the embodiment of all evil, yeah, I don't think so. Seconded. Mercury was the next to speak. Emerald's head snapped towards him. Idiot, what are you doing? No Watts coughed in surprise. My dear boy, I was not asking. This is a command. You will return with us at once. Nope. The assassin shook his head and nimbly stepped to Naruto's right side to stand with him. Consider this my resignation. I thought you might say that. The scientist extracted a small device from his coat. 
Such a pity. I'll have to tell her grace that you perished. In a single savage movement he depressed a button within and Mercury rather, his legs buckled like rotten driftwood. Watts nimbly pressed the button again and something gave with a horrible crunch as the boy found himself violently electrocuted. Bereft of balance he toppled to the earth with a startled yelp. All eyes rounded on Watts, suddenly wary. Another press ceased the shocks. Mercury absolutely spasmed. What the hell? How many times did I modify those legs for you? Boy Watts sneered, a hint of a smile peeking out behind his mustache. Did you think I wouldn't be prepared for a situation such as this? Greasy little. Naruto made to step forward and the scientist hefted his prize high. I wouldn't do that if I were you. It would be such a shame if something happened to him. Rather than back down the blonde merely frowned. You won't live to press that button again, Watts. I'll offer you one final chance. In turn, the scientist extended his hand to them. Return to her side or die with this fool. Naruto blew out a breath. Leave, both of you. You don't want this fight. Ah, but we do Tyrion cackled. And we brought a surprise. More grim he growled. They'll die like the rest. Tyrion only grinned. I think not. Naruto lunged at Watts in a liquid blur and Raven spun with impossible speed to bring her strange blade crashing down into his. True to form he saw the attack coming and ducked out of its reach, only for a searing wave of heat and angry force to struck him regardless. Mismatched eyes widened in surprise before he was ripped from his feet and sent him crashing into a tree. The Relic of Destruction Watts confirmed Cinder's worst fears with a satisfied smirk. It's quite potent, wouldn't you agree Vacuo was right to hide it? Tyrion, go help her. Neo Naruto's voice boomed across the clearing. You want your boss back. The petite girl perked up like an eager puppy. Kill the scorpion. Say what you would about Neo, but her loyalties were never in question. Cinder had always known that from the start. Neo didn't serve a cause, and Neo certainly didn't care for prestige or power. She served her interests and hers alone. The moment Naruto offered her something she wanted, no, needed in her life well. Cinder witnessed the precise the moment those mismatching eyes turned hooded, narrowing and thinly veiled pleasure as only a murderer's could. Neo gathered her legs beneath her, drew her legs taut as Hush's blade flew free from its scabbard and flew at Tyrion like a missile. The poor Faunus squawked in surprise, suddenly in the fight of his life. Incredibly, he laughed. Oh, sweet treachery another lost soul to dedicate to my goddess. How unfortunate. Watts simply sidestepped the confrontation, uncaring for the combat behind him. It seems they've made their decision. Now make your choice, Cinder. Choice what choice did she have? Power or her life? That was the offer she had been given. What did she desire? The return of her power certainly. She wanted strength and prestige, to be feared and respected by all. If she refused, Salem would surely kill her, or make an attempt at the least. Could she best Watts as she was now Mercury wouldn't be moving with his legs disabled, so she'd find no help there. Emerald well. Emerald followed wherever she went. Wouldn't she what she once taken for granted was suddenly in question. She looked absolutely torn. And yet, she stared at her hands, her human hands, healthy and whole. Only a few hours before her left arm had been grim. She'd felt so weak and thought losing it would make her weaker still. Now she felt complete. Whole, as if in restoring her limb, Naruto had unlocked something deep within her. It sounded foolish, but there could be no denying that she felt stronger. She had all the power she needed. She knew where that blasted little was and more importantly, where she would be going. What need did she have for this place and yet? Don't. All eyes snapped toward the sound. You're better than this Naruto coughed. I know you are. And what do you know what said his tongue? Raven, be a deer and deal with him, would you? Across the clearing Naruto struggled to rise, only for another bolt of lighting to last out at him like a whip. Is he narrowly caught at the last moment, only for Raven to barrel headlong into his. In return the sheer force of her assault drove him through the bark and into the woods beyond. For the first time since she'd known him, she heard the blonde cry out in pain. A golden arm snaked out in the dark to yank Raven off her feet before she could bring the relic to bear again and dragged her away with him. There would be no help for Cinder here. She was on her own, just as she'd always been. This was her decision to make. So why were her hands trembling? Come now, Watts frowned at her, mustache bristling in annoyance. Is it really so difficult a decision to make you owe this fool nothing? Nothing at all. Yes, there was only one answer to be had here. She believed in destiny after all. There had only ever been a single option. No, she murmured, making a fist with her right hand. I suppose it isn't. He turned his back on her. Sensible of you. Shall we go, then? For better or for worse, Cinderfall made her choice. And she drew her blades. Neo wanted to cry. She was a good fighter. One of the best. She butchered countless huntsmen and huntresses, slaughtered any and all who dared oppose Harental Roman. Born and raised on the streets, she had spent years honing her craft. And today today she fought like it. Today she turned into a whirling dervish of white and pink and brown that showed no mercy to her opponent. Twisting, slashing, raging, she flung herself her opponent with singular focus and fury. Hush danced in her hands, her thin-bladed parasol striking at heels, legs and throat alike. Ho 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 aren't you an angry one? Anyone else would have perished a long time ago, Neon, save Tyrene Kalos. Shut up, she wanted to shout the words, would have, if she had a voice. Blondie Naruto had offered to give that back to her as well, but she'd waffled until it was too late. 
Now it didn't matter. No matter how much she might have wanted to rant and rave, screaming would do her no good here. She just didn't have it. Loath as Neo was to admit her failing, Tyrion was better than her. Not by much, but enough to count, and in a fight like this, there was all that mattered. He fought like a man possessed, slipping through her guard, seeing through her illusions, his blades biting through her aura as though it were not but butter. To make matters worse, that tail of his had already nicked her more than once. Rage was a hell of an anesthetic, but she could feel her body growing more and more sluggish with each passing moment. If this didn't end soon, her life would. That damn tail, that ghastly metal abomination was an absolute menace, blocking her blows, deflecting her blade, tripping up her feet had it been flesh, she would have hacked right through it. Seems someone had already done the deed a long time ago, hence the metal prosthetic. If she ever met the party responsible for that, she'd kill him. But for now she fought. Fainting left, she dove right instead, caught one of the Tyrian's blades and swayed under the second, ears ringing as gunfire barked perilously close to her head. Yet again that infuriating tail fed out at her, but this time she managed to chamber a kick into his side before the ghastly appendage could reach her. Hush fed out, carving an angry red trench against the madman's stomach as she rammed it through his kidney. By all rights, it should have dropped him. Like a puppet dancing on its master's strings, the lunatic jerked around and backhanded her to the ground. Such a vicious little thing. He cooed, dancing over her like some fool jester. How would you like to serve my queen Salem would just adore you. Neo hissed out a soundless breath and launched herself at him again. She didn't know who this Salem was, and frankly, she didn't much care. She'd seen what Blondie could do. Blondie had made her a deal, promised to bring Roman back and she knew he could, because he'd kept his promises. She'd seen him do it. She wanted her dum-dum back. She'd do anything to have him back. But that wasn't going to happen, not at this rate. Because she just couldn't kill this idiot. Whenever she scored a hit he only laughed and fought all the harder. She'd carved countless cuts into his body, even blinded him in his right eye, and still he kept coming. The psychopath and that meant something coming from her he cared not for his wounds, nor the tattered state of his clothes, or even his battered weapons. He just kept coming. He dove at her again and again and again, even as his aura faltered and hers began to break. He didn't stop. You couldn't fight someone like this. Not for long. Your only option was to kill them quickly, ambush them, get the drop on them, slit their throat while they were asleep. That wasn't an option here. Tyrion was focused on her with a fierce intensity, one she couldn't escape. How long had she been fighting it felt like hours. Could have been minutes. She didn't know. No one was coming to help her, not with the village on fire. There would be no salvation here, no last minute rescue, no hero to save the day. Metal Legs was already down for the count thanks to the scientist, Little Miss Fire had vanished to gods nowhere, taking Emerald with her, and Neo hadn't seen hide nor hair of the Y woman from the train nor any sign of Blondie since their brawl began. But she could hear them. All the world shook while they fought, blasting great gaping holes in the earth, flinging explosions through the tree, warping reality itself. Even the skies weren't safe anymore, for the once starry night had grown dark with storm clouds, wreathed now by peals of thunder and ghastly lightning as they flung thunderbolts at one another. It felt like the world was ending. Her certainly was. When one such bolt passed perilously close to them, Neo leaped away in a desperate attempt to create some much-needed distance between her and her opponent. Tyrion seized the opportunity like the rabid dog he was and dove through the fire and the flames of the explosion that followed. He cared not for his wounds or the blackened blistered skin it left him. Eyes spinning, ears ringing, Neo saw him too late. He pounced on her, bearing her down with his weight and smashing her to the ground. She realized her peril immediately and kicked out with a pointed heel, to no avail. Strong arms rested hush out of her grasp and sent it sailing away into the chaos. No, no, no the lunatic purred, bending double to press his forehead against hers. You're not getting away this time, little rat. Neo's mismatching eyes blazed with fire and she headbutted him. Hard, Tyrion jerked back with a howl, clutching at his ruined noise. Sluiced between his fingers and Neo grinned at him as she clambered free from his prying grasp. She might have lost her weapon but she was going to make him pay for every inch he gained in this fight. With a slow, sauntering step, she both found and reached down to reclaim her weapon once more. The madman glared at her as she sketched a saucy little bow. He little. This time there was no mercy when Tyrion flew at her. Too fast. Far faster than he should have been. Strong arms tore at her, knocked her down again, carving a deep red gash in her right thigh. She saw the mad glint in his eyes and fought all the harder for it, thrashing and flailing like a wildcat. When that failed she reared back and spat in his face. How rude he merely laughed at her, holding Gur down. Finally, a reaction, albeit not the one she'd wanted. Oh, well a cruel grin splint his face from ear to ear. I suppose I'll just have to teach you some manners then be carving them into you. She flung up her arms and clawed at his face, to no avail. Ripping and tearing, hacking and swearing, he savaged her aura with everything he had, it was all she could do to defend herself. She'd never hated someone so much. Not the fire, not Salem, not even Little Red herself garnered this much spite in her heart. His gun unloaded into her stomach and her aura shattered. Tyrion kept firing, filling her belly with lead. Neo couldn't speak, but she could still gasp as flooded her mouth. She staggered, stumbled, fell to her knees. Sorry, does it hurt the madman cackled as he loomed over her. Looks like it does. Neo gurgled wordlessly, thoughts in disarray. 
No, not like this. She couldn't. Sneering, he arced his tail back. Any last words? I can think of one. A pale hand flew out of the dark, seized Tyrion by the back of his braid, and yanked like a crane, ripping the feral faunus from his feet. Now it was Tyrion's turn to shriek in pain as he found himself hauled through the air, and more importantly, away from Neo. Through shot eyes, the dying girl glimpsed Naruto's wide visage, saw the snarling sapphire orb clenched his off hand. He smashed it against Tyrion's. Die. Borne away by the racing in, he crashed back into the woods and was soon lost from view. Sorry, did that hurt the whiskered warrior croaked into the silence, voice harsh and mocking. Looks like it did. Then he turned to Neo, saw her wounds. You're all right, little bird. The sage muttered the words softly, little more than a whisper as he knelt and laid a hand on her ruined stomach. You're going to be all right. Was she had felt like she was dying. Though you're not going to die. I won't allow it. I refuse to let you die here. As though reading her very thoughts, he snarled and pressed another hand to hers. Just give me a moment. Hold still, now. He coughed, a deep rattling thing that seemed to shake his entire body. You'll be right as rain once I'm done. She frowned back at him and raised a trembling finger. Bad girl. Naruto clucked, shaking his head. Where's your faith? Neo sucked in a sharp breath as a sudden surge of vitality surged through her ruined body, burgeoned by that otherworldly life force. Time seemed to flow in reverse. Her wounds didn't so much close as they did cease to exist altogether. It felt like someone had dumped a bucket of ice water on her and she shivered as she bounded upright. Only then did she truly see her savior. Yikes. Blondie had seen better days. Raven had hacked off one of his left ears and left a deep cut across his. Neither were healing. She assumed that fancy new sword of hers the relic of destruction was likely to blame for both. He was fighting a war on three fronts, one with Raven, another with Tyrion, and a third against the very monster within his very body. He was being burned up by it. Consumed. The more power he used, the worse it became. Like a paper mash flamethrower, so too was he tearing himself apart. Neo poked his arm. I'm fine. He slurred the words drunkenly. Nope. Not fine. Not at all. Mangled laughter rose to meet her thoughts. Fools I am blessed by my goddess you cannot kill me. Naruto blew out a soft, angry breath. Neo pushed herself up under his arm, helped him to his feet, and together, they turned to face Tyrion. For it was Tyrion who staggered forward out of the dark, Tyrion, whose body hunched and twisted at an unnatural angle. Tyrion, looking every bit the madman he was, even scorched and scarred as he was, still he came forward. Neo's stomach revolted at what she saw there. Violently, did he not feel pain those wounds were horrid. He was missing an arm. Yet still he staggered toward them, crazed as ever, unafraid. What kind of faith did he have that made him this determined just what was he something in her shrank away from his demented giggle? Is that so Naruto stepped forward and Neo glimpsed the streaks of white spreading through his blonde mane. Let's test that, shall we? He was losing himself. If that thing got out, everyone was going to have a bad time. When he stepped forward, Raven leaped out of a portal to cut him off. Finally saw through my clone did you. Trickster, if you say so. Naruto grinned. It was a cold, cruel smile that didn't belong to him. Playtime is over, children. Salem sent you to your deaths. Heresy lies tricks Tyrion all but frothed at the mouth. The power of Salem protects me, false god. Salem blue eyes burned white. She's no god. I'll devour her once this is done. Oh, dear. That sounded entirely too much like Kaguya. Never. Unfortunately the insult worked a little too well. Tyrion howled past her and flung himself at Naruto, who turned and drove a crushing boot into the madman's. Even then, Tyrion Kalos didn't die. He simply tumbled with the blow and lashed out, burying his metallic stinger deep in the blonde's ribs. Anyone else would have dropped on the spot. Naruto merely grunted. Heedless of the venom in his veins, the blonde turned and flung the faunus against a tree. Another wide boot crunched against his ribs, ripped an arm free, and sent him slamming through the bark to dig a deep furrow against the earth. In the same moment the Branwen woman dove at him, sword at the ready. Neo launched herself at her in a moment of wild recklessness, knowing she stood no chance. She didn't have to. Raven looked away at her for only a moment, but a moment was all Naruto needed. He tore a wide trench in her face for it and hurled her away, fingers finged through strange motions as she flew. Now to be fair, Neo couldn't rightly understand the language he spoke, nor the shape of his hands just then, but she couldn't deny the result. Because a pillar of earth absolutely erupted under the spring maiden and cannoned into her. Neo grinned at the vicious crack of bone as Raven hurtled away into the darkness. Good. She hoped he'd broken something important. She hoped it hurt. Judging by the shriek that followed, it certainly did. Go. Naruto forced the word out through gritted teeth, drawing an exasperated look from her. They're not going to stop. Get the others out of here. Neo stomped her heels and shook her head. Leave him like this no never he'd die and if he was dead, no one could bring Roman back. She wanted Roman. Needed Roman. Without him. Blue eyes blazed white. Go. Was it just her? Or had the ground vibrated just now self-preservation won over greed? Nope. Nope nope nope. Not dealing with this. Blondie wanted her to get. Neo got. Abruptly she paused, spun back and kissed his cheek, then grabbed his face for good measure. Mismatching eyes bored into furring blue as she pinched his whiskered visage. Though she lacked the words to speak, her glare conveyed all the meaning she needed. She knew a suicidal fool when she saw one. This well his look wasn't that, but it was close. Dangerously so. She didn't like it. She wanted to slap it out of him. 
I'm not going to die. His smile wasn't a lie, but neither could it be called the truth. I'll just be away for a while. Look after them, will you? She flung herself away into the darkness with a huff. Only then did Naruto sink to a knee. In that moment, he let go. Well, I really stepped in this time. Any last requests? False god Tyrene crept in. A slow, shuddering breath greeted his arrogance. I, the faunus tilted his head and leaned closer. I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that. The dead man grinned up at him, but that didn't make any sense. Dead man told no tales. Dead man didn't move. Dead men certainly didn't grin when they were pumped full of poison. A fist shot out and caught the man's stinger before he could strike, and slammed its owner to the ground in a single seamless movement. Raven lunged at him from a nearby portal and the blonde backhanded her through a tree with nary a backward glance. He didn't care for her, he'd chosen his victim and there would be no escape. Pray. A dark shadow loomed over Tyrion as a boot came down on his back. The faunus growled and tried to wriggle loose, tried to flee, tried to scurry away even as it crushed down on his spine, but he couldn't. There was no escape here, because the bastard still had hold of his tail. That's just about the only thing you can do while you're still alive, Tyrion. There was something wrong with his voice, as if another were speaking with him, through him. Odd, concerning at the very least weight. Why were his eyes white? Why was he laughing? Why gek? Twin horns sprouted from his head with a sickening crack as tan flesh turned pale. Ah, and there it is. The fear. I'd almost forgotten what it smelled like. No, 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 don't pray to me. He drawled, at last seeing. His bow loosening terror. I won't be listening. That shaggy blonde hair seemed to burn white as he stepped back into the shadows, dragging the struggling faunus with him. No, I want you to pray to your goddess. Pray to Salem. Call for her. Beg. Plead. Squeal for her to save you. You have ten seconds. The sounds that came forth from the dark after that no creature should have made those sounds. Raven heard them all. And with each passing second, her heart plummeted. What had she done? What had she unleashed? What was this creature she hadn't been told about this? No one had warned her. Then said creature turned on Raven, and her fear bloomed into mind-numbing terror. She couldn't move, couldn't think, couldn't even begin to breathe. A fascinating sword. The being within Naruto's body hummed as it gazed at the weapon clutched white-knuckled in her hand. I think I'll keep it once I've killed you. She blinked, and Raven's right arm ceased to be. It did not fall from her shoulder, it simply ceased to exist altogether. Were it not for the, the pain, or the relic of destruction even now tumbling from her nerveless fingers, she would have thought it never existed at all. She skittered backward and that thing followed after her with slow, gliding steps. I finally understand. The goddess hummed, lifting a hand to her lips to conceal the smile spreading there. Thank you. I made the mistake of treating you people like people. But now I know better. You're not people. She snapped her fingers and Raven fought down a flinch. You're madmen, monsters, animals, criminals and cravens and cowards who want to drag the world under for their own gain. But to understand what the world wants. Raven cried out and tried to crawl away. The goddess merely grabbed her by the hair and pulled her back. This world needs people in charge who are willing to put animals like you down. She continued, holding her aloft. That's right. I finally bought what you've been selling. Isn't that wonderful? You know I didn't mean to. How does it feel? Child of man Kaguya purred, pale fingers trailing over her face. How does it feel to be deconstructed? She tilted her head back, fingers gliding across her throat. To be the victim to watch your dreams wither and die by all means, tell me. Let me savor your final moments. Raven never had a chance to answer. Even as she struggled to form the words, someone struck her. She never had the final blow. Even as Raven stumbled away, she failed to see the shadow descend on her from above. By the time she noticed, it was too late. The sword took Raven from behind, piercing her low in the back to rip through her rips and find her lungs. With an awful wrench, it drove upward to reach the wounded maiden's heart. It was a quick death, a painless one, far better than what Kaguya would have granted her. She couldn't look away, couldn't turn her thoughts away. She could only turn her head back and gaze into the eyes of her killer. You should have watched your back. Cinder fall gazed serenely down at her, a cold smile on her lips. Then she ripped her blade fee and Raven Branwen knew only oblivion. Raven, Ospin jolted awake in the dead of night with a ragged gasp, heart hamming, skin soaked in sweat. A curse leaped from his lips as he fought free from the dream. No, not a dream, nightmare. His mind bleated in fear and anguish and his ached in the worst of ways. When he looked down, there was no wound to be had. But he'd seen it all the same, felt it, lived every moment. He'd seen the blade pierce through her back, hard the gasp that followed. He'd seen vicious glowing eyes like poison honey, burning with flame. And he knew it was no dream. The spring maiden was dead, slain, at the hands of Cinder Fall. What's happening Oscar flailed in his mind. Ospin what was that? Wrapped up in his moment of panic, the immortal ignored Oscar's frantic pleas. Young hands flailed in the dark for an enemy that wasn't there. Sweaty palms scrabbled at thin sheets and flung them away as he lurched out of bed to land nimbly on his feet. Rather, he would have, had Oscar's body not failed him. Not yet accustomed to such rapid movements, he tripped and smashed his skull against an oplaced dresser. Stars burst before his vision as the world burned a ghastly shade of red. Aura flared and pain blazed through his forehead. 
Ironically, this proved just the jolt he needed, for the sudden jolt served to clear head and banish that brief beat of bestial panic. Erg. It also left him stunned on the floor, eyes spinning. Hakiro's bleary voice called in the dark. Was that Azu all right? No, 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 no. He couldn't tell him. Not here. Not now. Everything would fly apart. I'm fine, Kuro. Ospin groaned, clutching his head. Just fell out of bed. Go back to sleep. Ospin waited until he was certain his old friend had done just that. Only then did he dare to drag himself upright. He didn't want to wake the others. Doing so would only panic them, or worse, terrify them. He daren't tell them what he'd seen in his dreams. This was his secret to keep. It was better this way. Revealing the truth would only imperil those under his care. Even telling Kuro brought an inherent risk. The truth would send him howling after Raven's killer. Anyone who could murder a maiden would make short work of him. Worse, if that truly was Cinder he'd seen well. The implications were less than pleasant. Cinder was dead. She had to be, else Ruby wouldn't have inherited her power. Yet he'd clearly seen that vicious woman ram her blade through Raven's back. Impossible as it might seem, the madwoman had defied death. She'd be just as powerful as before, if not more so. Spring had ever been the greatest of the four seasons and somehow, he doubted fate would be so kind as to bestow Raven's powers onto Yong. He knew what was coming. They'd have to up Ruby's training. Grasping for his cane in the dark, the former headmaster of Beacon found it and paced to the window. He flung it open and saw the storm raging in the distance. Scowled. It had been such a peaceful evening, too. Ruby's training had been progressing at a decent pace, and Salem had been silent for some time now. She'd been bested at Haven, her agents routed and forced to their wounds. He dared to think they were safe because of that. He'd been a fool. Now the darkness felt heavy, thick and cloying, like a dense fog, clouding his vision. Ospin this time there could no denying Oscar's worry. He bleated in the back of his head like a frightened animal. Are we? Peace, Oscar. He murmured. We're not in any danger at this time. That was merely a vision. Someone died, didn't they? He couldn't lie to him. Yes, Oscar. Ospin sighed. Yes, someone did. He'd made the maidens. Their magic was his own, a gift he'd granted them in a bygone age, a time when he'd been more than this. So much more. Still, the power that he'd parted with remained a part of him. He could sense when they used their gifts, no matter the distance. He knew when they passed on. Often it would be through old age, but sometimes as sometimes their end was sharper, more sudden. What he'd felt just now what he'd seen was more akin to a knife in his back than anything else. He knew this feeling all too well. In the room adjacent to their own, he heard little Miss Rose sob softly in her sleep. Poor girl. As the fall maiden, she'd sensed it, too. There was nothing he could do for her. Raven was dead. Ruby wept softly in her sleep. Geez, sis, what kind of nightmare are you having? Young sighed and tucked her little sister just a bit closer in bed, curling her body around the smaller girl in a vain attempt to comfort her, or protect her from whatever she was seeing. It had to be something nasty if she wasn't waking up. Poor thing was latched onto her like a limpet and holding on for dear life. Hey, she whispered and ran a hand over her sister's head, doing her best to soothe her fears. You're okay. You're safe. You're here, with us. Ruby whimpered, but slowly, gradually, her cries quieted. Young turned her head and risked another glance outside. She could see the storm in the distance from her window, far enough not to be a threat to Haven, yet still audible and visible all the same. Fingers of forlorn lightning lanced through the dark sky. Great purple bolts split the heavens above. Around them, the clouds seemed to writhe and whirl as she gazed on, twisting and snarling in impossible places. Almost as if someone were actively controlling them, bending the very heavens to their will. A few months ago, she would have dismissed such a sight out of hand. Now she knew better. Only a maiden could do that. Was Raven out there? Somewhere was she fighting someone? A sudden breeze brushed Yang's cheek, invisible fingers caressing her visage as it threaded through her golden hair. She frowned and shook her head, batting the strange feeling away. Stupid window. Why did she leave the damn ting open she felt cold? Why was she so damn cold her thoughts twisted uncomfortably and in a fit of pique she stomped them down? She's coming. Until she heard the voice. Yang looked left. Yang looked right. Yang found nothing. Weiss and Blake were still sound asleep in their cots. Ruby made not a peep against her. So who the devil was talking to her? I'm sorry, Yang. Be better than I was. At first she thought it was just her mind playing tricks on her, or an overactive imagination. These words were little more than a whisper on the wind, so soft that she had to strain her ears just to hear them. But she did hear them. Try though she might to ignore it, a cold, awful feeling tore at her and a pit opened in her stomach. Because this time, she'd recognized those words and the voice behind it. Harsh, bitter tears sprang to her eyes, accompanied by a pang of dread. A lone word leaped to her lips. Mom. This time, the darkness didn't answer her. Arthur Watts preened proudly as he watched the world burn around him. Some might call him cruel for this. Perhaps he was. Salem's plan had been quite inspired, as hers most often were. Her instructions were clear. She told him to divide and conquer today, and so he had. Now there were none left to oppose them. Mercury was a helpless mess at their feet without use of his legs, unable to anything more than glower at him. Emerald stood paralyzed by indecision, dithering helplessly on the sidelines as she waited for her mistress to make her decision. Cinder herself was fixed firmly in his sights, face stony as she watched the village vanished under a tide of grim. 
its leader and purported god utter nonsense was too preoccupied by Raven and the relic of destruction to intervene on their behalf, while that meddling little imp of his was occupied with Tyrion. There was no need for Watts to dirty his hands here. He'd leave that to the coward and the madman. And so he watched everything fall apart. So uncivilized. He sighed, listening to their screams. Wouldn't you agree, Cinder? She didn't respond. A pity, but not unexpected. She'd likely had some aim here, and now that they'd ruined it, she was sulking. Cinder would never fall prey to sentiment, which meant she would never betray Salem. Their queen was eternal, immortal. Why, he dare say she was inevitable. No matter how you sliced it, hers was clearly the winning side in this war. This Naruto fellow had been foolish indeed to poke his nose where matters didn't belong. Now he would pay with his life. Yes, all variables were accounted for. Hazel's absence was to be sure, but if he'd turned traitor they'd deal with him eventually. Watts rather looked forward to it. He'd never gotten on with that brute. Too sentimental. Too soft. Always trying to spare lives, never willing to go the extra mile. His vendetta lay with Ospin and no one else. If he'd lost sight of that, then perhaps it was time they put him out to pasture with the rest. He was still watching Cinder like a hawk when the world shook and the skies darkened overhead. Finally, a voice like thunder rattled the ground, followed by a shrill scream. The flash of light that followed was almost blinding to behold in the night. He found himself forced to raise an arm and guard his gaze against it. Laughter followed, and it was not the laughter of a man, but a woman. It didn't belong to anyone he knew. A cold shiver stole over him, but he mastered himself, shook his head, and turned his gaze back to Cinder. Watts frowned in mild irritation. What the devil was that? Nothing to concern yourself with. Wait, that didn't sound like Cinder. Some sixth sense warned him at the last moment. Or perhaps it was the breeze. What are you? Regardless, he wasn't quick enough. A blade bit through Aura and slammed into his back, causing his eyes to bulge. Cold steel slid through his ribs to a sea bone and a choked breath tore itself past his lips as he arched his back. His mustache twitched as he stared down at the crimson stain even now spreading across his jacket. How when he hadn't even heard them coming twitching, he craned his neck back to gaze upon his attacker. Neo granted him a feral grin. Why you little cretin a snarl leaped from his lips. I'll have your head. Watts tried to turn as she ripped her weapon free, tried to fight back, tried to bring his revolver to bear, but the little devil anticipated him. Even as he drew, Neo danced forward, her blade lancing into his guard to find his wrist. It was a clean cut. He barely felt it at first. Then came the pain. It blinded him to all else, leaving his gun to tumble free from nerveless fingers as he roared in pain. Someone else swept in and hamstrung him from behind, sweeping a naked edge against the back of his ankles to send him stumbling forward. And so did Arthur Watts, great genius that he was, crumpled to the ground with nary a sound. Cinder, you fool he cried control your minions before they kill me. Frantic, he turned his head, searching for aid. There was none to be had. Cinder waved at him and vanished before his very eyes like a desert mirage. She wasn't there. Perhaps she never had been. Ah, so that's how it was. He understood what happened now. He'd been deceived. Emerald hadn't stood there without reason. She'd had him under her semblance the entire time. Was this what defeat felt like to think he'd almost forgotten this bitter taste of it? Someone filched the remote from his coat pocket as he bled out, wasted and gasping for air. Don't mind me. Emerald's voice hummed in his ear. I'll just be borrowing this. Not a moment later, an ominous sea rose in his ears. Oh, dear. The good doctor had a fleeting moment to realize his blunder before a shadow fell over him. Without that device locking down Mercury's metal legs, that mouthy brat would be free to move as he pleased. Sure enough, a heavy heel came down on one of legs, producing a horrible crack. He cried out, and the boot stomped down harder. Don't worry, Watts. Emerald fed her weapon away. We'll keep you alive. We still need a sacrifice for Neo. Don't we? The little hellion nodded sagely. Watts croaked out a gasp. Sacrifice? They didn't deign to answer that question. Mercury sneered down at him all too happily. Nighty night, Doc. An iron boot snapped into Arthur's chin and sent a tooth whistling into the air. Spring. It sang through Cinder's veins like a nameless song she couldn't quite place, surging and swirling in her body with all the force and fame of its name. It was strength. It was power. It stole very her breath away. And what a breath it was she felt complete again. Whole. Oh, as if a missing piece of her soul had slotted back into place. For if fall was death, then spring was rebirth. A rebirth. New life and strength and power Raven's death had granted her wings here and now, and she used them to rise from the ashes of her former self like a great phoenix reborn. A triumphant shout tore from her throat as she cried her victory to the world. Finally, on a whim the new maiden spread her arms on either side of her body and raised them into the sky. Her new powers responded easily, eager to please. A great gale tugged her form into the air and held her aloft as her eyes burned afresh with crimson flames. She could see them in her mind's eye, like tongues of scarlet firing at the edges of her vision. The dark curtain of her hair found itself burgeoned by the storm engulfing her, fanning out over her shoulders in a rich ebony curtain. She gazed down at her hands and grinned, a bright and euphoric smile stretching across her face. Gods, she'd missed this feeling. Fire furred at her fingertips, burning hungrily in her palms. Lightning rippled through dark clouds above her head, echoed by a fresh peal of thunder. An almighty gale came through the air when she waved her hand through the night. Even the very earth trembled beneath her will. This, this was the power of the spring maiden. No wonder she'd lost to Raven. 
maidens grew stronger as they came to realize their powers. And this it wasn't the power of a fully realized maiden, but it was close, very close indeed. Made her fall powers look paltry by comparison. When the first fitful raindrops came, Cinder threw her head back and gloried in them. Here at last, she had control, and so much more. Perhaps she owed some of that to him. Perhaps her training truly had made her stronger, perhaps her time without the maiden powers made her appreciate them all the more. Perhaps she was simply more attuned to the power of spring. Regardless, she felt stronger now than she'd ever been. Vengeance was hers, and soon, very soon, she would have it again. You'll regret this. A familiar, sullen voice whispered in the back of her head. That power is a curse. Aha, uh -huh. and there she was. Raven's aura, or rather the last dregs of it, were fused with the might of the spring maiden, and now her own. Aura was the soul after all, and naturally with those dregs came some portion of the woman's memories and emotions. Some semblance of her very self. Her strength. Her fear. Her arrogance. Her cowardice. Her pride. Team STRQ. A girl with silver eyes. And there, beneath it all, an irritating fondness for a mouthy girl. For her daughter. These treacherous feelings threatened to swallow her victory, to whisper doubts in her ear. Cinder shoved them into the back of her mind before they could take root deep in her heart. Says the dead woman. Cinder scoffed instead, smile shrinking as her joy turned sour. Can't you rest in peace? You know I'm right. You'll be hunted for this. Then I'll reclaim what is mine and become stronger still. The new maiden huffed. Haven is close by, no. A jolt of fear snapped through her, fear that wasn't hers. Stay away from Yang and Ruby. Calm yourself. I have no interest in your daughter. But I will have what is mine. HRMPH. More whispers from a dead woman. Cinder ignored them. They meant nothing. She'd expected as much, even experienced it once before, when she truly became the Fall Maiden. Amber had haunted her for days after the Battle of Beacon. Raven's nattering would prove short-lived. She would fade, in time. All things faded. All things died. All things must die. But here, in this moment, Cinder felt immortal. Invincible. A peal of delighted laughter echoed over her shoulder and stole such thoughts away. With a supreme effort of will, the Spring Maiden lowered herself to the earth. So lost had she been in her shining moment of glory that she'd all but forgotten her surroundings. A dull pang of dread bloomed in her bosom as the laughter redoubled, taking on a wild, almost manic note. It had been freeing to lose herself in her new powers, but now she regretted doing so. Because she'd forgotten about Kaguya. Only in stone's throw to the east, the mad goddess stood tall among the burning trees, gazing at pale, wide hands with rapturous glee. She didn't even seem to notice Raven's corpse at her feet, nor that her kill had clearly stolen her kill. If she did, she certainly didn't show it. Cinder gaze stood among the burning forest, eyes wide and unblinking as wild shadows danced across her face. And the goddess laughed. How wonderful. She purred with the voice of a thousand angels as flexed her fingers. I'd almost forgotten what it felt like to breathe again. To be whole. She fed her gaze to Tyrion's corpsino, not a corpse, Cinder realized with faint horror. Somehow the maimed madman was still moving, frantically trying to crawl away using nothing but his chin. Like some deranged inchworm. Without his arms and two broken legs besides, he wasn't much of a threat. He'd been so proud before. Now he was a shadow of his former self. She almost pitied him. Kaguya did not. My, 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 she sauntered after the faunus with slow steps. Still alive are we. No terror writ itself across Tyrion's face as he redoubled his efforts. Please have mercy. My dear boy, the rabbit goddess shook her head slowly as though lecturing a naughty child. There is no mercy. Cinder turned away before she could witness his final fate. This was the monster Naruto had warned her of she found herself torn, caught between the desire to stand and fight and then the urge Raven's instincts be damned to retreat into the shadows while the goddess was distracted with her victim. In another lifetime, she would have challenged her outright without hesitation. But she'd learned. Appearances could be deceiving. This woman had hijacked his body and used it to pick Tyrion and Raven apart like schoolyard bullies. Still, she didn't look that tough. Odd to be sure, but she almost felt she could take this woman this parasite with her powers. A gleam of metal caught her gaze in the flames. There, before her very eyes, the relic of destruction lay some yards away, forgotten in the chaos as Kaguya preened over herself. Cinder gazed at the sword longingly. In another lifetime she would have wanted it solely for the power it presented her. Now, she gazed at it for another reason. This was a tool of the, the gods, a weapon forged for one purpose and one purpose alone. Surely that would make all the difference. Perhaps she could even use it to destroy Kaguya without risking the body she inhabited. Her heel inched forward. Kaguya was busy tormenting Tyrion, and that meant she wasn't looking her way. She could do this, snatch the relic up, get the drop on her, drive the blade into the beast's blackened heart. She just had to be quick about it. Very quick. She'd seen how agile the woman could be. A mistake might well cost her life. You'll never make it Raven's voice hissed. She'll get you. Quiet, coward. Flames burst from her palms and flung her forward. All the world turned to a blur of burning wood and ruined ground. Cinder ignored it all, her gaze focused on a single point. If she still had her grim arm, this would have been a simple matter of stretching it out to claim the relic from afar. Instead she had to get close and that brought risks of its own. Still, Cinder was certain she'd make it. She closed the distance in an instant. She stretched her hand out, fingertips brushing the hilt. 
Got you. A pale hand closed around her wrist and wrenched it away with a painful crack. Cinder cried out as the bones of her wrist ground together, pinching nearly every nerve in her right arm. Horrible white eyes dominated her vision and despite her best efforts, she found herself recoiling. It was the smile that did it, not Kaguya's sudden proximity. What kind of speed was that she hadn't seen her move? Tyrion wasn't making any more noise, and she could only assume he was dead or dying. That left her alone and far, far too close to an angry goddess. You must be Cinder. Kaguya could. It's so nice to finally meet you, face to face. She didn't sound happy. Not at all. The pleasure is mine. Snarky little thing, aren't you? The grip on her wrist turned agonizing, bones fracturing under the goddess's grip. It was all she could do not to scream. Such a pretty face. I can see why he's so sweet on you. Her eyes drifted to the relic, just out of reach. I am almost tempted to let you take it. Kaguya's dulcet tones purred in her ear as she drew her closer still, if only to see you suffer. Those cold, bleak eyes seemed to break through to her very soul as she spoke, to watch your fear overcome you, destroy Yaosi, corrupt your heart and drive you mad. Pale eyes narrowed. But I think not. She seized the sword by the hilt and cast it away into the burning wood, sending it skittering out of sight. That's better. She hummed. Now, then, slap. Kaguya's head snapped backward as Cinder's palm cracked across her face. Pale eyes narrowed to hooded slits. You dare. Cinder wanted to weep, and not just from the pain. Instead she slapped her again, snapping the woman's head to the one side. Fool. She'd been a fool. She thought she had a chance. What had she been thinking she knew she stood no chance against this creature? Raven had been so much stronger than her, armed with a relic and help, and she'd still lost. She might be able to fight. Perhaps even her one one was to wake Naruto up, snap him out of whatever trance he'd fallen into, and leave this to him. Give him back. I think not. Kaguya caught her wrist and wrenched it down. He's lost to you. Her face twitched, but she mastered it. Pale eyes blazed blue for the merest of moments. Cinder pounced on it like a cat. He's not, is he a cruel smile bloomed upon her lips. You're lying. Kaguya gazed back at her with those milky white orbs and smiled. Then that smile turned cruel. Kneel. Cinder bristled. I beg your pardon. Are you deaf? Child, I am your goddess. I told you to kneel. Compulsion struck the spring maiden like a physical force and her legs buckled beneath her. She nearly bent the knee then and there and it was only through sheer fury that she managed to resist the command at all. This was the creature Naruto had dedicated his life to seal. This, this was a living goddess. Salem was nothing compared to this. And still you resist. Kaguya chided her, striding forward to seize her by the chin. You, who are not but a child compared to my might you dare to strike me. Cinder's arm swung back and Kaguya casually caught it with her free hand. She pulled. Cinder grit her teeth as something popped in her shoulder and her arm fell slack. Her vision went black for a moment. Then came the pain. A soundless shriek tore past her lips, only to find itself muffled against a palm as the rabbit goddess reached down again to grab her by the face one more. I could kill with the F of my wrist. She snarled, wrenching her head aside. And make you a dozen different ways. Rip your very soul from your benighted corpse. Then what's stopping you? She expected another outburst. What she received instead was chilling. What indeed but there are worse things than death. Kaguya took that pale hand away from her mouth and used it to cup her chin instead, pale thumb running over her face. I could strip that precious power from you, you know. Cast you down, and hear her smile turn most vicious indeed, make you the little girl you truly are on the inside. Or perhaps I could break you and turn you into a slave. Would you like that? Cinder twitched, but didn't dignify her with a response. There it is. There's the fear. And still Kaguya continued, peering into the depths of her heart as though she were an open book. You cannot hide from my eyes. I see you for what you are. You're a child, Cinder. A lonely, wretched, miserable little child. One long enough for wealth or prestige as you'd have others think but attention. Ando her grin stretched further still. What's this you don't want power? She tilted her head, seeming to consider her in a new light. Not really. Not anymore. Her eyes lit as they saw into the darkest corner of her being. You want a family. Cinder stiffened. Nonsense. You want to be loved? Kaguya crooned in delighted disbelief, laughing over her denial. Even now you secretly pine for the affection of a man who's forgotten what love even feels like a sneer overtook her fine features, warping them into something hideous. How precious how sweet you, the monster, the murder, actually want to have chill. Silence. Cinder's head snapped up and her eyes burned with fresh flame, the intensity was that her gaze momentarily turned red. That was all the warning Kaguya had before her victim screamed, that, and the faint light burning in the back of her throat. She frowned at it for a moment, not quite comprehending what it was. It was fire. Cinder spat a wave of vicious napalm right in her face and the rabbit goddess toppled backward with nary a sound. Popping her shoulder back into place, the spring maiden stood and leaped back to gain some distance. Then she thrust both hands forward and showered Kaguya's still form with a wave of fresh flame. Her power restored and more, she flung it all at the false goddess with a shriek. You think you know me she howled you know nothing each word brought a fresh volley of fire to bear upon her. Each blast rattled the ground itself, scorching heaven and earth alike. Nothing of what I've seen, what I've been through you have no right to look through my thoughts. My dear, Kaguya walked right through the fire and the flames to stand before her, untouched. Has this ever worked? Cinder felt her jaw see open. A contemptuous backhand cracked across her face and snapped it shut. 
The sheer impact ripped her free from the ground and sent her skidding down the lane like a squirrel in a hurricane. Kaguya loped after her almost lazily. He cares for you, you know. The rabbit goddess mocked as she stumbled upright. Well, and as much as he can care about anything these days. She spoke the words with relish, savoring every second of torment on her face as she drew near. I wonder how he'll react when I bring him your head. Will he break? I wonder will he weep will he wail? The only one crying here is you. Cinder whirled, summoned a pair of blades to her hands, and flung herself at the self-proclaimed deity. Kaguya met her all too happily. They raged back and forth like a pair of demons, whirling and striking, slashing and cutting in a mad melee of hellish proportions. It wasn't enough. She soon realized that her skills with the blade meant nothing to Kaguya, it was like trying to fight a hurricane with sticks. You couldn't. Kaguya didn't need a blade to match her. She used her bare hands and her hair that was just cheating to ward her off time and time again. And that was to say nothing of the woman's offense. Every block left Cinder's bones creaking angrily, and what blows she did land meant next to nothing for her foe, every injury healed nearly instantly. So she drew back and turned a hand to the heavens. Fresh power surged through her and a torrent of lightning fell from the skies to strike Kaguya dead in the... Here at last, the rabbit goddess gasped in surprise. Cinder felt a brief flare of pride deep in her as she watched the woman squirm. Dirty and disheveled she might well be, but at least she'd managed to hit the once. Was that petty of her very much so? Did she care not at all? That is, until Kaguya she laughed and flung it back in her face. Every muscle in Cinder's body clamped down as one and she toppled to a knee or a crackling angrily. Why, my her tormentor laughed softly behind a raised hand as she watched her spasm. That felt quite pleasant to try again, dear girl. It's been ages since I've had a chance to stretch my legs. She jerked her head to the right, then the left, producing an agonizing pop with each motion. I hope you'll forgive me if I prolong this a bit. Now, let's start with your eyes. A knot of dread unfurled in her stomach, but she didn't look away as that manicured hand arced back. By team, Kaguya scoffed at her. Tsk, tsk language, my dear. A boulder crashed into her back and sent her flying over Cinder's head. Cinder blinked through bleary eyes, trying to piece together one moment and the next as she gasped for breath that refused to come. She hadn't been the one to create that rock, much less throw it. Who, then neither Emerald nor Mercury possessed the raw strength to fling something like that around. Who, a large arm wrapped her waist and hoisted her upright as though she weighed no more than a child. Stand, a familiar voice grunted. There's work to be done. Cinder did as she was bade, glowering all the while. Sure enough, she found him looming over her. Hazel, she'd not expected him to return from wherever the devil he'd run off to. Naruto hadn't said, and she'd come to assume he'd simply return to Salem's side. For him to be here now wasn't just to have luck, it was nothing short of divine intervention. Another hit and she would have lost an eye or worse. He pressed a sword into her hands as her aura furred fitfully. Don't lose it. When she looked down, the relic of destruction burned bright in her grasp. Cinder balked at it. Emeralds nearby. A large hand dwarfed her shoulder. Be mindful and don't give her away, or we'll lose our advantage. No wonder he'd been able to sneak up on Kaguya. Doubtless she'd figure out the trick soon enough, but a slim chance was better than none, she supposed. Ah, and now the gentle giant enters the fray. Kaguya rose, dusted herself off, and sketched a curtsy that just reeked of arrogance. But not so gentle, as he she smiled and touched a dainty finger to one cheek. Hazel the dullard, Hazel the murderer, Hazel the betrayer. What if it the stout man frowned? Your words mean nothing to me. Whatever would your sister think of you now regardless of his intent, Kaguya found the chink in his armor with ease. You sold your soul to the devil, and for what revenge against a deathless man hot pearly white teeth flashed out at them in another ghastly grin. A grim killed your sister, and you joined their master. The giant didn't bat an eyelash. I've made peace with who I am and what I've done. You really have, haven't you? Kaguya sighed airily and shook her head. More's the pity. It's no fun when I can't torment my victims. Cinder twitched. She'd been silent for some time now, allowing her aura to slowly trickle back in. For all her claims at being a goddess, Kaguya struck her as a petty creature, a vengeful soul lashing out at everyone and everything near her, someone who cared for naught but themselves. She delighted in causing pain and agony and misery. And for what did she derive some sick pleasure out of it? Everything she did was for a purpose. Kagai was simply cruel for the sake of being cruel. We're not yours to torment. My dear Cinder, Kaguya crooned briefly in Naruto's voice, the words gone jagged and cruel. Everyone is my victim. Everyone is mine to torment. She spread her arms wide to each side, as though to beseech the very heavens themselves. Really, you have no one to blame but yourselves for this. He befriended you, he formed bonds with you, so naturally, you must die. And your deaths will make him suffer. Thunder rumbled overhead and the fitful raindrops began to intensity, but still her smile remained beatific. Everything he has ever made must be undone. Such is the punishment he deserves for delaying me. Hazel slammed a fresh dust cylinder into his arm and started forward. Kaguya tittered softly and moved to meet him. Careful, now. Defy me, and you may destroy any chance of seeing your sister in this lifetime. Hazel did not rise to the bait. No one will die today, save you. Begone, parasite. 
As Cinder looked on the man's muscles began to twist and bulge beneath his coat. Another cylinder followed and the coat tore itself to shreds. He shrugged his shoulders at the lust and stormed onward, footsteps like an avalanche. Then came a third syringe. He grunted and cracked his knuckles as muscles swelled further still, lending him a monstrous appearance. Yet a fourth syringe came and went in the blink of an eye, only to be discarded with its brethren over his rapidly swelling shoulders. Kaguya paused, brow furrowing in concern. You would destroy your body to face me. Hazel didn't answer. Hazel blurred. Even as Kaguya's hair surged in to entrap him, the giant broke through and struck her across the face. It was a good punch all thing considered. Unlike Cinder's earlier slap, Hazel's fist struck with sound and fury, shattering her defenses to send the proud woman sprawling in the dirt. Kaguya got right back up and he smashed her down before she could mount a defense. She reared back and tore a white trench in his in recompense, only to lose the limb as he tore it clean off. He bolt through, grabbed her by the skull, and slammed her body into the dirt. It was his semblance, Cinder realized. Hazel couldn't feel pain, and he fought all the better for it. It pained her to admit it, but in terms of sheer physical prowess he'd always been the better fighter. When the goddess lashed out he caught her remaining arm and reached in to snap off one of her horns atop her head. Even as Kaguya gasped, Hazel reared back with the shar in his grasp, then drove it through her third eye. Kaguya yelped and slammed a hand at his kidney, only to inexplicably miss what should have been a lethal blow. Kaguya whipped around and found Emerald lurking behind a tree. Little, the thief ducked just as a strange ashen spike leaped from the woman's sleeve and jabbed at the space she'd occupied. It struck a tree and left it to crumble like so much ash. When Kaguya lashed out after, Hazel stepped in, and Cinder moved to flank him. Kaguya snarled and struck out with her hair, to no avail. Yet again she failed to find her target once again thanks to Emerald's meddling. Meddling ants just die already. Cinder saw her opening and lunged. In her hands, the relic of destruction burned angry and bright to score an angry line down Kaguya's back. The goddess whirled on her, only for Hazel to yank her back by the hair. And so the dance went. Together, they three of them made progress. Slow, gradual progress. Looking back, Cinder would wonder why they'd fared so well. Perhaps Kaguya didn't quite have control of Naruto's body yet. Maybe she was weakened from being contained for so long. Perhaps they'd just gotten lucky so far. The last one was more likely. Naruto had spoken long and at length of what Kaguya was capable of. If she had the full breadth of her powers at her disposal, they would have been so much dust on the winds. Maybe that was his doing, why he didn't show himself. Regardless, the tide was turning in their favor. Until, quite suddenly, it tipped over. That's enough. White eyes furred into blue without warning, and Kaguya froze. It was an abrupt thing indeed. One moment she'd been ready to skewer them all, the next her lips moved of her own volition and she fell to a knee. Even then, Cinder didn't dare approach. Kaguya had already proven that she was capable of deceit. She'd not get close unless she knew it to be him. Naruto. Kaguya's head snapped up, bearing bright blue eyes. Now they burned an unholy white not a beat later. I will not be denied vengeance will be mine. You don't have a choice. Her body wrenched itself as though struck by a great blow. I've had enough of you. I will destroy everything you've ever loved. And I'll be there to stop you. When the rabbit goddess shrieked everyone flinched against it, wincing before that awful, high-pitched sound. She threw her head back as a crack etched itself across her pallid face. The another. And another. Another still as they looked on. Long nails clutched at her skull, as though trying to hold it together through sheer willpower and failing. Shards of flaky gray fell away from her face, exposing a blue eye and whiskered cheeks lurking beneath. It made for why spectacle as that half and half face gazed at them. This isn't over her lone eye found cinder and locked on with all her might. I'll get out again, and when I do you're dead all of you dead. Her remaining horn receded, pale hair falling out as a shaggy blonde mane emerged from beneath. It's over. You've lost. Now give me back my body. No, her body didn't break. It crumbled. Like peeling back a layer of dead skin to reveal life beneath, so too did the last of her away from Naruto's body. An arm tore free from her wide sleeve, followed by a leg. Pale lips parted in one final wordless cry as the blank canvas that was her visage gained color that had been there before. Everything fractured. She fell forward like a husk, leaving her host behind as she crumbled away to nothing. What remained of her shattered as she struck the ground, leaving naught but ashes behind. Naruto staggered out of the ashen shell on wobbly legs. Well, he croaked softly. That wasn't pleasant. Something in his voice broke Cinder. Perhaps he was being too blasé about his near-death experience. Perhaps she was simply fed up with him. Who could say she wasn't sure what it was that set her off, only that he did and she was having none of it. Even as Naruto stumbled forward she moved to meet him. Her heels set harshly against upturned stones, eyes burning in the rain. With the rabbit goddess gone it finally fell freely upon them, a warm spring rain that soaked her to the bone. Cinder didn't care. Her eyes burned with fresh flame. She'd found her target, and she would not be denied. Not after what she'd been through. Not this time. Imbecile a muscle jumped angrily in her jaw as she walked. Words tumbled from her mouth like wine. Of all the reckless, arrogant, pig-headed. Oh, Naruto saw her coming and raised a hand. Now, wait just a second. I know you're angry. I can explain. Hazel winced at the poor choice of words as Cinder slapped the relic into his hands. Cinder Cinder absolutely twitched. Angry no, no, no. She was beyond anger. Well and truly beyond it. 
Kaguya had aired truths she'd rather not speak of, and worse, Naruto knew them. Oh, he'd keep quiet about them to be sure, but that wasn't what had her boiling in her veins. He'd given up, handed this fight to her, and expected her to make the right decision. She had of course, she always would, but the knowledge burned all the same. She stepped into Naruto, grabbed by the face. Never again. The blonde blinked back at her. It's really not that simple. She pinched his cheeks. Never. Again. For a fleeting instant she thought he might protest. Naruto looked like he wanted to. In the end his shoulders slumped. All right, all right, I give. I'll try not to let that happen a second time. Try. He capitulated with a shrug. Good. Because after this she flung a hand at the chaos around him. You're mine. Objections will not be tolerated. They both knew she was trying to save face. She'd been worried about him, damn it. But she'd never speak the words. Not aloud. Gods above, she could feel Emerald and Hazel gazing at her. There would be a reckoning for this. She knew that. Right now she was too tired to care. She just wanted to bury her head in a pillow and sleep. But first she would have what she was owed. His cheeky grin warmed her in ways it shouldn't have. But did all the same. Wait, does that mean? Cinder yanked his head down with growl and crushed her mouth against his. Oh, uh, he hummed when she pulled away. You do care. Cinder glowered daggers at him. Shut up, fool. She still kissed him again. Salem saw it all. Ensconced within her tower, she reclined upon her throne and observed the spectacle with singular focus. None noticed the tiny nevermore watching them from the bough of a nearby tree. None knew that the Queen of the Grim saw through its eyes as if they were her own. How could they she'd not told them? And so she watched the ambush, saw the chaos that followed, bore witness to Cinder's betrayal, and stood by as her pawns fell one by one. Hazel and Cinder's treachery came as something of a surprise, a novelty even. She hadn't thought them capable of it. Oh, they would suffer for their betrayal, but that was neither here nor now. Raven's death didn't disturb her in the least. The girl had been a pawn, one controlled by fear. Losing the Spring Maiden was an annoyance at best. She'd served her purpose and Haven's vault lay open. The Maidens had ever been a means to an end. Summer was no more, slain after she'd been forced to open the hidden vault in Shade Vault. Who knew where her power had gone fall was watched over by Aspen day and night. Atlas kept winter under lock and key, forfeiting the relic of destruction, however that one actually stung a little. More than Salem would have liked to admit. Any relic lost was one she'd have to reclaim, and with many of her finest pawns gone, she knew she'd have to recruit from other circles. Forcefully, if need be, Tyrion had been little more than a raving madman, but the rest were a genuine loss to her. They would have to replace. Worse, it would take years to train up another maiden candidate. And so she began to dwell on that. Way to take revenge, ways in which she wad could yet reclaim what she had lost. Such thoughts consumed her, drove her, spurred her onward until she saw the precise moment when Naruto brought Tyrion Kalos back to life. And that, well, that changed things. Changed quite a bit. Her traitorous heart flipped in her. A useful skill. Very useful indeed. How many times could he use it? Was there a limit where sacrifices required questions buzzed about in her head like angry rapier wasps? An ability like that shouldn't couldn't be wasted. What was the saying favored by this generation if you can't beat them, join them? Yes, Ice, there was the one. She'd convince him. Draw him out, pull him to her side. Salem leaned forward in her throne, watching with thinly veiled interest as the young man performed an even more spectacular feat. And as she watched, her mind flitted back to four little girls. Her daughters. Her children. Her family. Her world. Her all. It wasn't fair, what happened to them. It was all Ozma's fault. If he hadn't tried to take them away that night, they never would have perished. But this was her chance. It was a slim hope, but hope nonetheless. She would bring this man to her side. She would have them restored. She would regain everything she'd lost. And then then she would see Ozma burn. I'll kill them all, Naruto. And the blonde hummed. I'm sorry, didn't quite catch that. Who are you going to kill this time? Who Kaguya hissed in his head like a scalded cat. Cinder, you fool I'll slaughter her and everything you hold dear. As far as threats went, Naruto didn't consider that to be a particularly good one. Not anymore. Oh, she earned some points for her venom and bile to be sure, but she lacked creativity. You could only threaten someone with the exact same words so many times before said words began to lose their edge. Throughout the ages, the rabbit goddess had whispered the same threat to him time again, ever swearing to rip away everything he came to care for. Once upon a time Naruto had feared such warnings. In the beginning, when he'd first sealed Kaguya inside, he had sought to distance himself from the world, tried to hide away where he would never be a danger to anyone. A cold, lonely, miserable life, one that eventually took him out of his world and into another. Now he didn't even flinch as he dripped his brush into the ink pot, stirred once, and went to work. Is that all you have? He snorted into the silence of the morning. I'll kill them you've made that threat before, old hag. This time will be your last. You think you can stop me a second time? An angry snarl greeted him as he wove fine s of ink upon the earth, all the while careful to leave his slumbering victim untouched. You can't hold me back forever. I don't have to stop you. Another completed a fresh line of runic script around the Suntobe corpse. I've already found a way. You're dead, Kaguya. You just haven't realized it yet. Just need to hold on long enough for someone else to do it. Dead me fool. I am eternal. Your thoughts betray Yano. She tried to read his thoughts, then scowled when he made no effort to hide them from her. Madman what have you done? You already know the answer, don't you Naruto hummed as he continued his work. 
Go ahead, read my mind. I'm an open book to you. Kaguya couldn't resist such temptation. Of course not, she was too greedy to refuse. She thought her victory was already assured and so parsed through his every thought, searching for a lie, only to find truth lurking in its place. They sat the truth sets you free. This truth damned her. A wordless curse greeted him as he locked his thoughts away again, leaving her reeling. Yao used me, she roared me, how dare you, I am a goddess, you are but a mortal, you have no right. Elnai Naruto's grin was just the wrong shade of vicious. All's fair in love and war, and there's something to be said about quality over quantity these days. There it was. For the first time since he'd bound her, he felt her fear. It was a heady thing indeed. Really, I should thank you. I already had Hazel on my side. Mercury and Emerald were wavering too, but your little outburst last night had. When I take control, I shall make your friends scream, Naruto. This world will choke and die, cursing you with its final breath. See, now that was a creative threat. Pity he'd stopped fearing her. Hurts, doesn't it knowing you've been used? He chuckled anew, and her enraged silence warmed him more than words. You're right, I let you out. I could have fought you a bit longer, but I gave God to see just what she was up against, and that did more to earn her loyalty than anything I could have done. And in winning her to my side, Mercury and Emerald came with her. So, yeah, thanks for that. Kaguya withdrew from his mind with one final curse. Cinder and the rest looked on in quiet confusion as he worked, but they didn't interfere. They didn't dare. This might be his final chance to kill that blasted goddess once and for all. She'd not allow him another. It was this, or rip her out of his body and seal her somewhere else. Somewhere no one could find her. But that seal would break in time, unleashing her on the next generation. Unacceptable. Thus, he planned to drown her in bodies. To fling skilled fighters at her over and over until something stuck. And it was working. He'd already begun cultivating strong allies. Hazel could fight without feeling any pain for hours on end. Mercury was a lethal assassin, unmatched in the art of killing. Emerald's semblance was essentially a watered-down version of the sharing in, sans the bullshit. Cinder had already broken her limits and seemed to grow in strength every day. Assuming she got a hold of the remaining maidens, her powers would likely double, then triple, perhaps even quadruple. She was strong enough now already now that she'd claimed the power of the Spring Maiden from Raven. What might she be like with three more under her belt and a relic fragments of a god held in each hand a powerful distraction, if not an outright threat? And if he could resurrect or recruit more skilled fighters well, well, well. Naruto knew there was a bitter irony in his thoughts there. In the beginning Cinder had sought to use him, yet here he was, using her for his own ends. Rather, they were both using each other. Cinder certainly knew that his motives weren't entirely altruistic, nor were hers. That was fine. He didn't mind being used by her so long as she allowed him to use her in turn. That's what partners did, right? He cared for her of course, just as she cared for him, but they both wanted Kaguya dead and gone. She wasn't a good person, but neither was he. Anyone who kept reviving the dead denying them their rest wasn't right in the head. With one final, he finished painting the intricate seal and stepped back to let the ink dry. Brushing down his knees, Naruto climbed to his feet and took a step back. All right, then he declared. Shall we begin? Shall we begin? All eyes turned to Cinder and for once, she didn't bask in the attention. Instead her eyes strayed to her allied lover mentor partner as he finished painting the final seal at her feet and rose to his own, brush still dripping with glossy black ink. She watched him take his victim and deposit them in the center of the array, all the while careful not to disturb his handiwork. I day Neo and Hazel are owed their dues, wouldn't you agree he sounded so damn chipper about it, the bastard. Hazel looked to her. Are all these preparations really necessary? Don't ask me. Cinder fought down a grimace. I've not seen this before. In hindsight it seemed such a silly thing to ask. She stood as living proof that such a thing was indeed possible. Were it not for Naruto she'd be dead in a ditch somewhere. It wasn't a matter of if here, only how. Naruto had conquered death. He'd shackled it, made it his slave, a beast to obey his bidding. And now she'd tied her fate to his. Salem would never forgive this betrayal. Well, they'd just have to deal with her then, wouldn't she Kaguya too? Two goddesses. Ah, a tiny, hysteric giggle echoed in the back of Cinder's head. Idiot. You're all going to die. Raven's tattered soul hissed in her mind. If Kaguya doesn't get you, Salem will you've doomed yourselves. Cinder ignored the fearful woman as her eyes trailed across the intricate seals and glyphs, taking them all in turn. All the while, Tyrion continued to drool mindlessly at her feet, a chilling reminder of Naruto's abilities. The blonde had dragged him back to life and yet he hadn't. His body lived anew that much was true, but his already fractured psyche had been irrevocably shattered by the rabbit goddess before his demise. There was nothing of him to bring back. Only an empty, drooling husk remained. His brain had atrophied. His body just hadn't realized it yet. Like an engine running on fumes, ready to die at any given moment. Then there was the matter of Watts. Another sacrifice Aunt's Mercury finished interrogating him. She shivered slightly. Salem's enemies died once. That was the end of it. Here death wasn't the end for Naruto's adversaries. If you wronged him and tried to escape into that black abyss, he'd drag you back. Keep raising you until you broke. A torment unending. Cinder suddenly found herself grateful that she'd chosen his side all the same. What if Raven Hazel inquired? I noticed you didn't revive her. Yes, what about me? The voice in Cinder's head perked up immediately. 
What about her? Naruto crossed his arms. Even if I could revive her, I won't. Raven clammed up. Cinder took a perverse pleasure in the sudden pang of fear that followed. You mean you can't this from Emerald? Clever girl. Naruto's hand descended to muss her hair. Long story short, her soul's tangled up with the power of the Spring Maiden. His arm pulled away as he held up a lecturing finger. It'll fade given enough time, but even then I likely won't be able to properly return her to life. I had a hell of a time reviving Cinder at all because of it, and she was freshly dead. He shrugged. I had to get inventive to bring her back to life. Wasn't sure my idea would work until it did. Cinder's world went cold as a pit opened in her stomach. What did you do to me? Didn't you find it out a blonde brow rose in mild confusion? You recovered so quickly, gained all your strength back and more. Yet you didn't stop there. His words continued to fracture her resolve. You surpassed your limits time and time again. You managed to stand on equal footing with a goddess, if only for a time. Naruto. The other brow rose. I cut off a tiny piece of my soul and fused it with yours. His honest smile hurt her, if only because he genuinely thought he'd helped her. That's all I did honest he raised his hands when she conjured a fire in her right hand. It weakened me a little, but it was enough to bind you to your body. Don't worry, you're still you. Just better, faster, stronger. Cinder inhaled, feeling her fury rise to a boiling point. Then she exhaled. A fire guttered out in her palm. This mustn't register on an emotional level, she told herself. If she allowed her feelings to have their way, her temper would surely blaze out of control and she'd do or say something she might come to regret. Breathe. This changed nothing. At the end of the day she was still herself. Her emotions were her still own. Her mind was her own. Her strength was her own. She'd pushed herself to regain her power and more. Naruto had simply unlocked her potential. Yes, that was it, and any other foolish thoughts wouldn't be tolerated. Why the word still emerged as a croak. Why do all this for me? Because I knew someone like you, once. His smile became a scowl. I didn't help them, didn't reach out until it was too late. Her hands ate into fists at her sides. What became of that person? They died. But you won't. You're going to be something special, Cinder. There was something odd about those words, something that resonated deep within her. Even I don't know what your limits are anymore. I hope I live long enough to see what you become. Oddly enough, those words warmed Cinder. Well, that simplified things, didn't it? He was hers. No one else could have his broken, benighted soul. Emerald coughed. Ma'am, I hate to ruin the moment, but Neo's getting antsy. The little minx hadn't budged an inch for the last five minutes. She'd been silent as the grave. Cinder risked a glance at her, only to find the girl's mismatching eyes locked on Tyrion's still form. A frightful anger lurked in their depths, shadowed by the tiniest ember of hope. It was almost too painful to see. If something went wrong, if this failed, she'd be shattered. Deeds done, boss. Mercury's voice called from across the clearing. Watts sang like a canary. Cinder, try sucking your face off again. The spring maiden twitched. To his credit, Naruto didn't respond as the assassin sauntered to their side. He knew that would set her off. Mercury noticed it too. Suo, how does this thing work? The assassin ventured quickly before Cinder could eviscerate him for his slip. I'm glad you asked. Naruto clapped his hands, and Cinder did her best to ignore the Y ink still staining his fingers black. This jutsu's a little different from the one I normally like to use, so it requires a good deal of preparation. It's different if someone died recently. For instance, Tyrion died recently, and right in front of me at that. Bringing him back was easy. His soul was nearby, I just had to guide it to his body and force it to stay. His mind was another matter. I can't fix that. The faunus continued to drool at their feet. Not sure if I want to. Naruto turned aside and spat. For those who died ages ago, it's not a simple matter of finding their souls and bringing them back. He paused for effect, raising his arms. Roman doesn't even have a body to house his soul anymore. Which means I need to construct a container for it. And how do we house a soul, children? With a sacrifice. Hazel echoed, eyes widening. Precisely. Blue eyes flashed. That's why I hate this jutsu. Enough grandstanding. Cinder wrinkled her nose. Begin the ritual, would you? Hold your horses, hothead. The sage chided gently. First, I require a bit of DNA. Neo. She skipped forward and presented him with an old bowler hat, battered and worn. Black. Filthy thing. Thanks. Naruto dipped a hand inside it respectfully, then handed it back to her. Got a few strands of hair. It'll have to do. Stand back now, would you don't want anyone caught up in this. Mercury. Cinder snapped. Make certain no one from the village observes us. It wouldn't do for this to be seen. Perhaps it was a little petty of her to send him away, but she wasn't in the mood for his snark. If he wanted to act like a child, then he would be treated like one. Damn, mum. Of course, he didn't go quietly. Why you gotta be such a party pooper? A black brow arched at him. What was that? Not a thing going now by. The assassin scampered. Naruto didn't chuckle at their little fiasco. He simply opened his hands, pressed them together. What followed could only be called a blur. Cinder watched him twist his fingers into strange shapes and felt something stir in the air. His mismatching eyes seemed to burn with faint flames, blue and violet seething impossibly bright. Beside her, she felt Neo stiffen. Mercury muttered a curse as the ink around Tyrion pulsed a blinding white and Emerald shrank behind her as though to seek shelter from whatever was about to emerge. Hazel remained stoic as ever until Naruto spoke. Ido Tensei he declared soundly. By the gods. Hazel sucked in a sharp breath through his teeth as strands of ashen paper erupted from the earth to entangle Tyrion from head to toe. 
countless hands, grasping and snatching, dragging him down. In his final moments, the Faunus must have realized what was happening, because his eyes widened and he managed an awful gurgle. Then he was gone, suffocated to death once more, mummified by ash. All that remained was a shriveled up corpse. Cinder shivered again despite herself. That looked like a bad way to go. What now Emerald spoke into the silence that followed. Now I create a new body for Roman, using Tyrion as a catalyst. Naruto informed them. The blonde slammed his hands together and sure enough, the ash began to peel like bad wallpaper. Slowly at first, then with increasing speed, the strands of ghastly paper unwove themselves, crumbling from Tyrion's body to fall onto the floor. Cinder half expected to see his face beneath, but no, a familiar visage stood in its place. As the Jetsu pulled back from the man's battered head, she beheld a miracle. Roman Torchwick snarled. Oh, what the hell is this narrow eyes leered back at them, framed by orange hair and a furious scowl. Were you I was having a nice nap, too. Neo gasped soundlessly and tried to pounce on her partner. Naruto snagged the tiny girl by the scruff of her neck and reeled her back in like a fish, uncaring of her scowl. Calm down, would you he hummed and drew a strange ceiling tag from his jacket pocket instead. I haven't finished the jutsu. He'd be right as a rain in a moment. Just hold still now. Roman choked out an angry breath as the blonde rammed it into the back of his neck and buried it deep within his unnatural body. Roman's pallid visage regained some color and those dead eyes began to glow with some semblance of life, burning now with a burning yet unnatural pallor. With a ponderous creak, he began to move his limbs, forcing himself up from his knees into a stumbling stagger. Even then he glared wide daggers at them all. The moment he saw her, he absolutely hissed. Why couldn't you let me stay dead? You awful a finger jabbed against her skull, seeking her gray matter. I wanted to rest. And so you did. Cinder couldn't quite keep the smile from her face as she batted his hand away. Now we have need of you again. You should be grateful. Grateful. Well, there went the last of her doubts. This was undoubtedly Roman. Right down to the mascara. She didn't pity him. He'd served his purpose and perished for it. Even if he'd survived the assault on Beacon, she would have killed him to ensure his silence. It wasn't anything personal. Just business. He'd ever been a pawn, and sometimes pawns must be sacrificed in the game that was life. For a moment she thought Roman was actually going to attack her, until Naruto stepped aside and Neo slammed into him like a heat-seeking missile. Umph just like that, all the heat in the man's eyes died as she collided with him. Neo, what the hell what are you doing here? Neo didn't answer. Instead, she offered him his hat and cane. A rare, almost sentimental look flitted across the thief's pallid face as he accepted them. After a moment's consideration Roman dusted the dirty bowler hat off and donned it once more. Balancing himself on his favored weapon, the gentleman thief seemed to stand just a little bit taller than before. Anybody got a smoke he asked. Naruto offered him one and granted him a light. Ah, that's the stuff. Roman inhaled deeply and exhaled in a hearty plume of smoke. He seemed more himself for it, Cinder noted. I needed that. Taking another moment to compose himself that, or satisfy his tobacco fix the master thief took a wary step backward, careful to keep Neo between him and the rest of the world. So who's this mook he sneered at her? Did you recruit him, too he get the same retirement package as me? Cinder hissed. Her face was on fire, she just knew it. Not quite. Naruto put in glibly. Our partnership is a little more personal than that. Wait, wait. Roman guffawed. You're kidding, right Noo? Oh, my gods. He snickered, laughed, then outright cackled, slapping his knee as he outright hooted at her. I can't believe it someone actually did it. You tamed her. I didn't think it was possible ha his grin turned downright vicious. What she like must be a real firebrand under the sheets, eh? Cinder felt her mouth twist. My, my. Aren't we mouthy today flames furred at her fingertips, longing to lash out and consume him whole. I don't recall you having this much of a death wish the last time we spoke, Roman. I'm already dead, sweetheart. He leered back at her. What are you gonna do kill me again think I fancy my chances this time? Neo's expression put paid to that and fresh fire bloomed in Cinder's eyes. I can certainly try. You sure you don't want me to leave him like this Naruto spoke again, but this time his words were directed to Neo, rather than herself. He's not properly reincarnated yet, but as he is now, he's basically indestructible and immortal. When her eyes lit up, he was just as quick to dash her hopes. He can't feel anything, Neo. Food will have no taste. Pain means nothing to him, no, less than nothing. His words drew a grimace from her as he barreled on. It's nothing something he'd enjoy. From here, I can make him flesh and again, but that's up to you. What, don't I get a say in this Roman groused? Cinder rolled her eyes. This from the man who was eaten by a griffin. Yeah, no. Emerald seconded. That's not happening. You're lucky to be alive. No. Hazel put in quickly. No, you do not. I hate you all so much right now. Cinder would have said yet more if someone hadn't come crashing through the undergrowth like an angry berserker. She bristled and nearly summoned her blades on the spot. It was only a flash of silver hair that stilled her raging reflexes. Even then she couldn't quite quell the fleeting sense of dread brought on by his arrival. Mercury I told you to watch the perimeter she hissed. Yeah, about that, the assassin drawled with a grin, trailing one hand behind him. I did, found a little rat skulking about. His grin grew, just an inch. He had a prisoner, too said something about making an exchange with us you know anything about that, boss. Oh, Naruto muttered less than eloquently. I might. Yup, thought so. 
Chuckling softly, Mercury turned and hauled someone out of the bush behind him. It did little to ease Cinder's paranoia. This so-called rat he spoke of was little more than a young man, blonde hair and blue eyes all. Clad in odd armor with a sword at his side, battered blue jeans, and was that a hoodie dear gods? It was. Who even wore such a thing ridiculous? Utterly ridiculous. To make matters worse, Stranger took one look at her and all but snarled. You why are you here I'll kill you. I'm sorry, Cinder blinked in genuine confusion. Did she know this boy have we met before? She was sure they had. Didn't his name start with a J or some such? Yeah you monster murderer how could you? Roman hissed. Oh, what the hell? It was the wrong thing to say, because it set the teen into a frothing frenzy. Blue eyes flashed wildly as he howled and raged against Mercury, to no avail. For all his fire and fury, the assassin held him fast. When he tried to break free the older boy swept the blonde's legs, stomped down onto his and pinned him to the floor with an iron boot. When he went for his sword, Emerald swept in to kick it out of his hand. Mercury stepped back and quite suddenly Hazel was there plucking him off the ground to ram him against a tree. I remember this one. He growled. He's from Beacon. Sir Emerald asked. What should we do with him? Cinder turned a questioning eye on Naruto. Yes, what indeed. They had to kill him, of course. If he was here, then that meant Ospin and the others couldn't be far behind. And if they let him go, he was sure to run squealing back to that parasite. He had to die. She could have killed him easily enough. She was almost tempted to, if only out of principle. One did not leave an enemy at your back. And yet a pang of curiosity stayed her hand. Naruto clearly knew this fool, somehow. But when were how she wanted answers, answers a corpse could not provide. In the end, Naruto surprised her. He always did. Really, he should have known better by now, the sentimental fool. Let him up. He released a long-suffering sigh. I made him a promise. And I keep my promises. Are you prepared? John Ark was about to make a deal with the devil. There could be no redemption for what he was about to do tonight. No explanation given to his comrades would ever wipe away this singular sin. There would be no way to defend himself. No path back from this atrocity. This line once crossed could never be taken back. Some might call him S for this. Selfish, even. Perhaps he was. Regardless, it would mark him forever. Eye for an eye. Tooth for a tooth. Evil for evil. And a life for a life. John looked Naruto dead in the eye and nodded as he shook his hand. He handed him the prisoner, a wanted rapist taken from the dungeons of Haven, and let the blonde begin his work with the man. He did not attempt to kill any of the men and women surrounding him, though he longed to do so. Vengeance. Justice. Redemption. He took these emotions and buried them deep within himself, refusing to rise to the bait placed before him, no matter how tempting it might be. For her. For Pirha. Yet, all the while, she. Watched. Him. Cinder Fall Murderer loomed over him with that infuriating smile of hers. He could feel her eyes why did she have both of them again scorching a hole into his back even now. Her very presence threatened to send him spinning into paroxysms of rage all over again. How he longed to strike her down. To skewer her with his blade. It was only the knowledge that he was outmatched that kept John from drawing his sword. That, and greed. Also greed. Lots of greed. After all, he couldn't save Pira if he died here. Something told him Naruto wouldn't be so kind as to revive him a second time. And what in blazes was Torchwick doing over here Ruby said he was dead. He didn't look dead. What's wrong, John Gods? He almost wished Cinder hadn't remember his name. You look frightened. Ignore her. He chanted the word like a mantra. Don't rise to her bait. She wants you to lash out. She can't attack if you don't give her an excuse. He grit his teeth and refused to look at the fire witch, knowing what he'd find there. Someone had healed Cinder since he'd seen her last. Gone was the grisly black eye patch and the hideous twisted arm she'd shown them back in Haven. She was entirely human once more. That just made it worse. She was just as he remembered her back in Beacon. Just before she'd killed. A shuddering gasp fled from him and he bit his lip until he tasted in his mouth. It brought him back. Just was well too, because Cinder was merciless in her verbal assault. You want to kill me, don't you? She circled around him until she was facing him. I can see it in your eyes. You don't just hate me, John. You loathe me. Her hand came up under his chin, lifting it just so. You want to take that sword of yours and ram it through my... Good. She patted his cheek. Hold on to that hate. It will make you strong. John wrenched his chin away and shivered, not with fear, but rage. Control it. Suppress it. Don't let her win. In the end, his tongue betrayed him. You shouldn't be alive. Technically speaking, I'm not. Golden eyes narrowed as she leaned away. I was bested by a greater foe. She slew me. I died. I was revived. Those poisonous honeyed orbs drifted toward Naruto as he continued to work on the ceiling array. Just as your precious little maiden is about to be. But you're not a maiden anymore, are you? John's mouth twitched. You lost your power. That is correct. Cinder scowled and he fought down a blaze of triumph. Death stripped the might of the fall maiden from me. A bitter laugh burst from him. Good. Weakness suits you. I hope it hurts. Her scowl deepened. Oh, how he wanted to mock her further, jab her with the very words she'd use against him. For all her arrogance, Cinder had still lost her power. A power Ruby was even now beginning to master. She was a quick study. But he didn't dare tell Cinder that. Cinder didn't know Ruby was the new fall maiden. If she learned the truth tried not think of it. The thought consumed him anyway. Puro might be able to take her. Ospin the way he was now, maybe. But but Ruby. If they fought, Ruby would die. As if sensing that very thought, Fall smiled. 
Weak, am I? Is that what you truly believe? John, she dragged his name out slowly, purring the last syllable like a cat stalking a wounded mouse. To his horror, those molten orbs began to burn with golden flames once more. Such a pity. You have been misinformed. No, he muttered, shaking his head. It couldn't be. Ruby was the maiden now. Not her. That's not possible. What was lost can be reclaimed. With the spring maiden dead in my hand, I have power once again. To reinforce that very statement, she summoned a breeze of scalding air between them. Power beyond anything your so-called invincible girl could have ever dreamed of. Her hand clenched in the fire and her gaze guttered out harmlessly, taking the storm with it. She's little more than a gnat to me. John barely heard her, his thoughts already whirling away from him. No, no, no. The others didn't know. He had to tell them. Fighting a depowered cinder was one thing. But a cinder wielding the might of the spring maiden with allies at her back it would take all of them working together to even stand a chance, and victory wouldn't be a guarantee. If someone like Naruto sided with them, they had to be told, you can try to kill me if you like. The spring maiden spread her hands wide, capturing his attention once more. Look, I'm unarmed. A lie, of course. Maidens were never truly unarmed. He'd learned that lesson the hard way. Ruby had already developed some nasty tricks. Cinder likely possessed many more. She knew how to use the power. And yet, a faint ember of hope stirred to life. Roman and the others were hanging back for some reason. Naruto was busy with the ritual. He was close, very close. He'd been training hard. He wasn't the same boy he'd been back in that last battle. He was stronger, faster. Go on. Cinder cooed at him, sensing his hate. This is your moment. You can be a hero, John. With one swing of your sword, you can save everyone. His hand snapped to the hilt of Crocia Morse. Cinder, Naruto called stop trying to bait the poor boy into attacking you. That's an order. I already told you, we're not killing him. Her brow furrowed, but to John's dismay, she backed down. As you wish. John, in the same breath he turned and leveled a flat stare at his fellow blonde. Touch her and you don't get Pyrrha back. Just like that, the tension evaporated. Arc sagged as a cold sweat came over him. His hand flew from his sword as if he'd been scalded. Cinder sauntered away with a wink and a smile that. The absolute. She wanted him to attack her. Rather, she'd been looking for an excuse to end him. She would have, too. If he struck first, she could claim herself justified in defending herself. He would have died for nothing. Just like Pyrrha. All right, it's finished. Naruto stood up, stowed his tools and drew him aside. I'll perform the jutsu in a moment, but first, let's have a little chat. John flinched. Can can we just get this over with? I'm ready to leave. Blue eyes narrowed. Yeah, that's what I'd like to talk about. His shoulders went tense. John never though he'd like to see the day Cinder obeyed someone, least of all an unassuming sort like Naruto. This man was evil. He had to be. Anyone who commanded Cinder fall couldn't be anything else. He refused to even consider the alternative. Whatever he might pretend to be, he clearly wasn't a good person. He was probably working for Salem too. His mind latched onto that belief, false though it was. He wouldn't fall for this ruse he wouldn't be deceived. I'd apologize for her, but that's just the way she is. Naruto began. She's a work in progress. John bridled. She's killed people. As I said, a work in progress. She destroyed Beacon. What do you want me to do? Go to Vale and clear it out the blonde barked back at him. No. His shoulders sagged. I'm not condoning her actions by any means. She died for them. That's enough. She's only killed one person under my watch. The Spring Maiden, you mean? John set his jaw. Yes, the Spring Maiden. The dangerous gleam burned in those mismatching orbs. The Spring Maiden who worked with Salem to ambush us. She made her bed, we didn't start that fight. Are you saying you don't work for Salem? Of course I don't work for her. Naruto flung up his arms, and behind him, the campfire inexplicably flared. I'm trying to avoid her a high, almost wild note flared in his words. I'm trying to avoid us but I'm trying not to hurt anyone but you people have made that impossible. I've got enough problems without some crazy magician and a madwoman making trouble for me and now you. John recoiled, resolve hardening in his. I don't believe you. You're lying. Fool of a boy for a moment, he thought the man might argue. He certainly looked like he wanted to. In the end, he shook his head. If that's what you want to believe, then fine. He shrugged. No skin off my back. Believe what you want. We're getting off topic here. The boy leaped on it. Cinder's a monster. John. It wasn't the word that turned John's spine to ice. Oh no, it was the look that followed. For in that brief moment, Naruto let the mask slip. His once friendly smile vanished, replaced not by a scowl, nor a growl, or even a howl. Just nothing. A look so terrifying that the poor boy nearly soiled himself where he stood. Exhaustion. Here was a man who'd seen too much, done too much, and been hollowed out by it. A dying warrior holding back a beast, even as it devoured him. I do not answer to Salem. Naruto intoned, every word radiating an awful power. I do not answer to Ospin. And I certainly don't answer to the likes of a boy so green he pisses grass. Make no mistake, I'm only doing this as a courtesy, nothing more. I don't have to revive your friend. Cinder's right about that. He tilted his head and a pit of black dread opened in John's gut. The smart thing would be to kill you here and now, then leave your corpse for the maggots. His hand moved, settling on the boy's shoulder. A crushing weight followed it. Count yourself lucky that I haven't thrown my humanity away yet. And fell away as the whiskered warrior stepped back. If anything, I'm taking a very great risk by doing this. Naruto continued, still looking right through him. 
The moment your friend's able to walk, you'll drag her back to Haven. To your friends. To Ospin. John wanted to deny it, but his tongue betrayed him. Yes. Oh, and there will be such a celebration the blonde's voice turns sickly sweet, his smile brittle as glass. But then the questions will come. How did you do this? How is she alive who raised her? His finger switched directions, stabbing himself in the... That will attract attention to me and mine, which means we will have to leave. Because of you. He paused, letting the words sink in. If we don't, there will be a fight. Ospin will seek me out. People will die. There's a reason I've been avoiding him. The huntsman bridled. We'd never kill in cold. You're right. Naruto nodded. You won't. You're good kids. Guess who ain't. John's gaze drifted around the camp as the blonde jerked a thumb over his shoulder, warily taking stock of the criminals within. Cinder. Emerald. Mercury. Roman. Neo. Hazel. They were all watching him. All six of them. Seven. If one counted Naruto as an enemy, and that was a can of worms he didn't want to open. He did the math in his head, grimacing at the others. With Kuro and Ospin and perhaps even Pira they would outnumber them but there was certainly something to be said for quality over quantity. The very second I finish this ritual, we're leaving. Naruto informed him, crossing both arms before his. I'll not say where. Better that way. Ethan explain this miracle to your friends. There will not be another. I shouldn't have made that promise to you. But, John, shut up. I won't tell. He babbled. Oh a blonde brow rose. You'll keep it a secret. Two will figure something out. His confidence wilted even as he said it. Naruto shook his head. Naive. Hard to believe I was ever that bad back in my day. John jumped. What? You're naive. The older blonde spat the words aside with a wad of spittle. You honestly think this is all going to work out, don't you? I don't know why I'm surprised. Just look at you. He gestured to his armor. So Sally's forth the brave knight good will triumph over evil the hero will ride in and save the day ridiculous. He shook his head again. Let me tell you something, the world doesn't exist in shades of black and white like you think it does. A finger jabbed him in the nose. The world is gray. You don't know what to do with gray. So here's what you're going to do for me. John gulped. Tell them we went to Vale. His fellow blonde demanded. Send your friends on a wild goose chase, it will give me and mine a head start. That's all I ask of you. You mean you don't want the lamp the words tumbled out before he could hold them back. No bad tongue traitorous tongue. The smatching eyes of Azure and Violet locked onto him like a heat-seeking missile. Lampy blinked, frowned, then shook his head. You mean the relic of knowledge a dangerous gleam shone in his eyes for all of a moment before he suppressed it. Tempting but no. I can only think of one thing to ask it, but I don't know how to use it. I was never told. Do as I've asked, and we'll call it even. This man knew too much, the casual way he spoke of Ospin suggested unpleasant things. Had they met before been allies once upon a time? Maybe. Unlikely. But what were they now he didn't know what to believe, and so the truth eluded him once more. A tiny grain of sand turned to glass in his heart. I can't just lie to them. I'm bringing a dead woman back to life for you the words thundered out at him. You owe me. John's pride crumpled like a wet paper bag and his head drooped. I'll, I'll do it just bring her back. Naruto sighed. Getting too damn old for this, John. An arm locked around his wrist and dragged him back to the clearing. John couldn't have broken away even if he wanted to. In short order he found himself dragged away to face the music. Or Pirha, as it were. His heart twitched painfully at the thought. That's right. He'd made a deal with the devil. They could curse him all they liked for this. He came back to find them squabbling. Whatever it was, they clammed up the moment they saw him. Done with your little bonding session Mercury quipped, wearing a saccharine grin. Naruto twitched. Emerald, sweetie could you do me a favor? The illusionist perked up like an eager. Yeah, dad. Slap your brother. Slap him hard. Red eyes narrowed. Happily, John nearly choked on his own spit. Dad no, that was absurd. Naruto couldn't have fathered these two. They didn't look a damn thing like him. And yet know that he saw it, everyone in the camp clearly deferred to him for reasons he couldn't understand. Even the normally stoic Hazel and Cinder looked on with fond smiles. It almost made them look humano. His mind clamped down on that thought and tried to throttle it to death even as it took root in his heart. No, not human. Monsters. Murderers. Mercury choked for a different reason as Emerald advanced on him. Now wait just a second, him. Let's not do anything rash. Why slap him when you can just throw him in one of your illusions Cinder pointed out and for a moment, just a moment, she looked like a mother. It would be good practice for you. Traitor the assassin cried. Favoritism some mother you Aragak. Children, the lot of them. Naruto sighed. We've stalled long enough. Cinder, take the others and pull back. She's going to react poorly to this. Very well. We'll stay close, however. Once again, John looked on helplessly as she and the others retreated into the trees. Naruto barely spared them a glance. Here goes. His hands blurred away from John and slapped into a series of signs and symbols the younger blonde couldn't even begin to comprehend. The Jetsu's victim woke just in time to realize what was happening. It availed him not. Wide eyes bulged as he thrashed in his restraints. Too little. Too late. Strands of ashen paper wove themselves around the body of the killer and swallowed him whole. Step one, complete. Naruto hummed, clapping his hands. Just like that, the ash fell away, revealing a familiar face. Dull emerald eyes blinked back at John, framed by a pale face and startling red hair. But it was all wrong. Her face was fractured and cracked, her smile distant and vacant. Lifeless. Like an empty doll without a soul. 
Here at last, Hark felt regret. No, no, this wasn't right. Her mouth opened, but no words came. What did you do? Hush, Naruto reprimanded him. Now comes the second step. Even as John sputtered and spat, his erstwhile ally stepped around the invincible girl and pushed a tag into the back of her neck. Her flesh opened easily for him as his arm dove into the wrist. With a small shudder, she fell forward, catching herself. Her skin regained a healthier hue, and while it still wasn't natural, there could be no denying the light in her eyes when she raised her gaze. There was warmth there, but it was tempered by a second emotion, one he knew to be guilt. Oh, John. She shook her head at him, ponytail swaying behind her. What have you done I didn't want to come back like this. Emotion choked down his voice. Tirha, none of that. Naruto fed the girl's forehead, eliciting a glower from her. I didn't bring you back for a pity party. This young man sacrificed someone to bring you back to life. He traded another soul for yours. Criminal or not, that action has weight. The least you can do is thank him. He'll live with the guilt of this for the rest of his days. Here his mouth opened and closed wordlessly for another moment. Who are you? Someone who wants to get this over with. Now for step three. Before anyone could think to stop him, Naruto swiftly circled the redhead and reached down for her, cupping her head in his hand. The motion was so reminiscent to what Cinder had done back in Beacon that John nearly pounced on him for it. Yet no flame came. Instead, mismatching eyes of cold blue and rimmed violet pulsed with unholy light. Tira Nikos cried out, not in pain, but surprise. Rin Tensei. All the world shifted. There could be no other word for when Naruto spoke. With a smoldering hiss, the earthen cracks in Pira's face began to close as. Her eyes burned just a little brighter, a dull creature of clay and ash no longer, but now flesh and once more. It was the work of moments. He pulled his hand away and this time, when she fell, John darted in to catch her. Naruto allowed it. Now it was his turn to be mute. Words betrayed him, leaving his tongue dead and still in his mouth. There was so much he wanted to tell her, so much he longed to say, but emotion overwhelmed him. In the end, all he managed was a ragged sob. Bitter tears stung in his eyes, bitter yet sweet all the same. He felt a small, shaky smile bloomed on lips as her face pressed into his shoulder. I'm home, she murmured. But I don't understand. Where am I what happened? He'll tell you later. I've upheld my end of the bargain. Naruto slashed a hand through the air. Leave. Get out. You'll have to hurry. Before, John Ark a harsh voice boomed into the clearing. What have you done? Kaguya's jailer blew out a sigh. Before that happens, what have you done? Naruto wasn't caught off guard when Ospin burst from the trees to confront them. He knew it wasn't an ambush indeed, he would have sent such but an intrusion. He'd been aware of his approach for quite some time now, to that effect, he tried to hasten the ritual and send John on his way to prevent this very event. He'd even ordered Cinder away for that very reason. A small part of him wanted to hope it would be enough that the meddling man would know better. That hadn't been enough. He'd feared as much. Really, he should have known better. Destiny was rarely so kind. Damn it, John. What have you done? Ospin repeated. In his last host, the great and mighty Ozma might have proven intimidating. Right now the form of Oscar Pine didn't much suit him and it was terribly difficult to be frightened by a prepubescent boy even if Ospin could turn said boy into a deadly instrument of destruction. He looked absolutely furious and had every right to be. One of his students had just committed the blackest of heresies. After all, the dead were meant to stay dead, and John Ark had willingly traded one soul for another to break that most sacred of edicts. He made a fair exchange with me. Naruto couldn't resist twisting the knife while he could, if only to make his adversary squirm. He gave me a soul and I brought back his beloved in exchange. Oh, how Pira flushed at that. But she didn't deny it. Sweet girl. John was lucky to have her. They'd be good toaster assuming they survived the next five minutes. John wilted. Sir, I. No. Ospin silenced him with a snarl. Not a word from either of you. We will speak of this when we return to Haven. Tira set her jaw. Headmaster, that's not fair. Why not let them have their say Naruto offered? Their opinion might surprise you. Here at last, Ozma rounded on him. Silence, abomination I should slay you where you stand. If you can kill me, by all means, try. An ember of curiosity of hope burned in his as he spread his arms, leaving himself defenseless. Go ahead, strike me down now, and I'll become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. There was no hesitation. Three strikes slammed into his face. One shattered his jaw. The second took his eye. The third killed him. Ospin's cane slammed into his throat at an angle and broke his neck, sending the blonde's head lolling dangerously to the right. It was a good hit. Vicious. Efficient. Clean. Even, and as clean as killing could be. Anyone else would have perished on the spot. Naruto remained standing, calmly reached up, and reset his head with an audible crack. You can't kill me either. Hope died a withering death as the rest of his injuries healed. How sad. I thought you were a wizard. Demon. So we've fallen back on insults again, have we a blonde brow rose in abject scorn. This coming from the old man possessing a boy's body. You remind me of Orochimaru. At least I'm honest about what I am. You just parade around snatching bodies every time you die. Irrelevant. I'm not the one perverting the cycle of life and death. Kaguya cackled in the back of his head, pleased by the pain the words brought. True. Naruto sighed. And unlike you, I'm not alone. He snapped his fingers. You shouldn't have come. For what it's worth, I didn't want things to go this way, but you forced my hand. He heard the brush rustle behind him, watched the immortal's gaze widen. 
all part of the plan. Cinder knew better than to retreat too far. She'd come running the moment he sent out a pulse of chakra. Ospin's eyes grew wider still as Hazel stepped up to flank him. By the time Neo and Rest emerged, he looked almost resigned. I see. His shoulders slumped. You're working for her after all. This was foolish of me. Foolish indeed, Cinder purred, moving to Naruto's right. You must have gone senile in your old age. You. At the sight of her, Pierre had jolted upright and thrashed out of John's arms. Roman found her even as she reached for her sword, slamming into her back. Her sword bore through his and he accepted it with a laugh, bearing her to the dirt with his bare hands alone. The invincible girl balked, unable to understand why her blade failed to kill him. John slammed into the ground a moment later as Neo found him. He put up even less of a fight. What devilry is this? Oh, for the love of me, Naruto twitched. No, I'm not working with that witch, and I'll thank you not to compare me to her. And yet the company you keep says otherwise. Osman's gaze found the relic of destruction at Cinder's waist. Uh, so Shade has fallen, then unfortunate. It will take decades to undo the damage you've done. His gaze switched to Roman a moment later, taking in his unnatural eyes and his even now healing body. And you, Roman, I expected better of you. Ospin sighed. You held such promise. Now you've made yourself a monster. Spit slammed into his face. Two words for you, Professor Mountain Glen. The sage flinched. Fair enough. He has the relic. Cinder whispered in Naruto's ear and his gaze settled on the lamp at his waist. We should take it. The rest will not be gathered up after this by any means. Naruto leveled a harsh glare at her, eyes immediately strained to the sword still bound at her hip. It's bad enough that we have destruction while they've apparently found knowledge. All we need now is creation and choice, then we'll have a regular godly jamboree down here on Remnant he flung up his arms with a bitter laugh. Sure, let the brother gods come. Why not I'm already trying to commit dayside with one goddess and possibly another. The more the merrier. You sound angry. Emerald hedged. What gave it away? Ospin blinked. A strange, almost bitter expression settled across his visage. Perhaps he'd been foolish. Perhaps he'd made a mistake. Perhaps he was simply getting old who could say. Regardless, he'd made a foolish decision in coming here. Doubtless he'd expected to face John and maybe one other person. Not Cinder. Not Hazel. Certainly not the rest of their allies. He hadn't even known they were here. Now that he did, however, well, that complicated things. A fighting retreat wouldn't be enough. Surely he knew that. Even with the three of them. Worse, John and Pierre were all but incapacitated. Naruto's gaze stayed back to the lamp. That was what the relic of knowledge looked like it seemed smaller than he expected. Such a little thing. It might hold the answers to destroying Kaguya once and for all. If not, then it could surely provide insight on how to rid himself of her once and for all. He'd never been able to get into the vault before, but now with it dangling here before him how many questions did it have left one, two, three it had to have at least one, else Ospin wouldn't keep it on his person at all times. He'd been a fool to bring it here. It was just too tempting. He couldn't resist. Oscar's face twisted in confusion and fear. Naruto stamped down the pity he felt. He knew he could use John and Pira as hostages. Reason dictated he should. They were no good to them dead, and he had no reason to kill them. But would Ospin trade the lamp for them? No. He would never give up the relic. Not even for them. Here was a man who would make any sacrifice, no matter how terrible, so long as it ensured victory. He'd sooner die than hand over the lamp. And so they would serve another purpose. Not as sacrifices, but as bargaining chips in another sense. Still, Naruto felt he owed it to himself to at least try and be sensible about this. I'm sorry. Slowly, he shook his head and held out his right hand. But seeing as you've all but brought it to me I'm gonna have to ask you to surrender that lamp. When the immortal made no move to relinquish it, his fingers cured into a claws. I have questions for your little friend. Ospin drew back. You shall not of her. A blonde brow rose in mild irritation. I wasn't asking. Cinder. The spring maiden scoffed and advanced upon him. Ospin fought hard. It wasn't enough. 